Yeah, yeah. Marshall. So what you know about teamwork? Cause I've been in the clouds trying to make the dream work. Always done it on my own, that's why I seem hurt. Cause I ain't met no one that ever put me first. So what I know about teamwork? Cause I've only ever done it on my lonesome. I got a deal through it out, yeah, I grown some. Don't expect love if you've never shown none. I spent last year in a hay, so many records got made I kept that shit to myself, they only wanted my pay I took some time off the stage, got in the bed with the snakes They wasn't doing their job, I let them slither away I wanna build me a team, so I can get to my fans I need someone on my side, that's gonna give me a chance But shit just ain't what it seems, don't let them in on your plans I hope they know what I mean, I hope that you understand So never land, never pan out Wings talk, think I better let them spare out Was too chill, think I better let the man out Grew up with hand me down, now I'm never taking hand out Man, if you I knew all the things I'm watching when I'm planned out But I need help to do it, so can I get a fan count? Can I get a fan count? Never understood me, now it's funny how I stand out Me, myself and I, homie, welcome to the man. So what you know about teamwork? Cause I've been in the clouds trying to make the dream work Always done it on my own, that's why I seem hurt Cause I ain't met no one that ever put me first So what I know about teamwork? Cause I've only ever done it on my lonesome I got a deal through and out, yeah, I grown some I know my girl on my side, I'm trying to build us a life Thank all my family alive, and I just want to provide They say it's gonna take time, but I've been losing my mind She helps me grow in a bowl, my family ready to ride So why am I feeling low, when life is giving me highs I put my value in sales, instead of who's by my side But I can see it's the front, that's why I'm not coming back Yeah, I was slow to react don't give a damn what they thought of it Yeah, I'm feeling glorious Got flash from the audience, man Should've recorded it I took a color pill Used my computer skills Now I got agents after me Word up to Morpheus The future I saw today Do this till I'm bored with it Invest in myself in debits Hope I don't get audited My body is a temple But I fucked up the ornaments I'm so gassed up The you is probably at war with it It's a message to the earthlings Join the team round here We put the work in It ain't teamwork If only one of us is working the Only thing I'm signing Is when fans bring the merchants I ain't got the thing yet that I wasn't deserving And I ain't famous yet, but that bitch be flirting I'll make it rain, start a wave and go surfing I'll make it rain, start a wave and go surfing So what you know about teamwork? Mm. And what I know about teamwork? Hello, hello how is everyone on this beautiful Saturday evening? If it's still Saturday where you are. Hey, Nanya, Kathy, Queen Bella. How are you doing? Hey, SoFlo Mama. I listened to the first part of your guys' live. You had me cracking up. Hey, Lindsay, you got to work at seven. Don't worry, it won't be a long one. I hope not. I'm just like, y'all, do you like the gold post on the Roomba on the thumbnail? What did you think of that? Um... I just named it free for all because it's like, whatever, you know, I pinned the link if anybody wants to hop up and chat. If not, we can talk about whatever. I just feel it. So I'm scrolling through my timeline, y'all, and it's nothing but Sebastian stuff. And a lot of it, it just it has been infuriating me. And I don't know if it's that, if it's the day of the week or what it is, but I'm just like, I can't, I can't take any more of it. So I'm like, oh, let's just go live and talk about anything but that. Hey, Christy A. Hakob, Hakob, under review. <laughs> How's it going? Hey, time out. Perfectly. Hey, sexy wild thing, McLovin freaking Papa Elvis Claus. She gets one every time. Just one. Then it's Claus. <laughs> the rest of the stream. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hey, Anonymous. Hey, Nicole B. I know I was like, Jenny wanted me to, or asked me, she didn't want me. She was like, hey, when are we going to go live and finish the Sebastian interviews? And I want to, but man, it's like that case is just spiraling. And I just, I don't think I had the mental energy for it. Hey, Miss Leah, Papa Jones. I'm so over it all. Ugh, what are we over? <laughs> We're over everything. People might be over different things. Right now I'm over true crime and the true crime nonsense. I'm going to call it that true crime nonsense. What are you over? Everybody's over something. Hey, headstones. Happy Easter. Yes, tomorrow's Easter. That's another reason it won't be a late one. It's Crouton's first Easter. So we're excited about that. 
Let me see. You brought bump pops, AMAC. I loved so so Flo and AMAC have um the real housewives of YouTube. You guys need to drop that. And the video that I saw them playing was the hot dog stripper. <laughs> and I died laughing. I was like, holy cow, that is hilarious. And her accent, you can't beat that lady's accent. It was the best. I am pretty much, I'm over pretty much everything in my real life and on here. Well, except my kids <laughs> and cats. Oh, not the kids and the cats. Everything else, she's like, screw it. Hey, Lana K, hope you're well. What else are you guys over? Shambles. Bunny has been here and I'm tired, Bunny. Oh, my goodness. We couldn't see the Roomba, but I did. You didn't see the Roomba? It's underneath the goalpost. You watch my dear. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good one. I was, someone was, one of my friends was sending a bunch of info about JLR. I'm like, you know, I do have this compiled into a very uh, neat and organized video. <laughs> She's like, shut up. <laughs> Turtle madness. Hey, it is gross. It's gross. There's someone live. I don't know if they're still live. I don't know. They were showing every last detail of Sebastian's home. The inside, the outside, like walking through it on Zillow or whatnot. And this isn't about sides on whether you support the father, the stepfather, the mother, none of that. It's about the fact that I know you support the father and they are hoping that Sebastian comes home. So what if there is the chance that the step parent, stepdad and mom are not involved and Sebastian goes back home, okay? So he goes and lives full time at Seth. Will he not still go to his mother's house? And you are showing his home to 2000 people. I just I felt like I'm losing I'm losing my damn mind around here. I'm losing my mind. I swear. Hey Scott H, how's it going? Burden's in the house. Hey, Bob. Bob, Bob. Yep, it's over it. Same, girl. Same. Yeah. I'm very torn right now. Are we really doing any good with... That's what I, That's where I am, Nanya. Who else is like me? Like, just torn on this. Like, I, I want to finish the interviews because I've thoroughly enjoyed going through them and having the facts out there, or the facts of what they've said, at least out there and whatnot. But at this point, it's like, am I harming? Am I causing harm just by sh talking about it? If I go missing, oh man, I'm just going to put this like in something. Like don't put me on YouTube. I'm over the pitchforks, the torches, and the bullhorns. Both concealed and open carry. Anna Morris, exactly. Exactly. It's just Kathy's over housework. Amen, sister. Amen. The Roomba Gulpa. You know what? Eight, six. Thank you. Now I know. So I used to, Tracy turned me on to Leonardo AI. She got obsessed with it and taught me how to use it. And I was spelling wrong. So that might be why, <laughs> that might be why I couldn't get the best <laughs> picture. Is that you, Burden? Yes, it is. No, oh, hello. We have Hi. a action screen up. Good evening. Okay. You doing good? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing. Yeah. I'm doing. I'm the same as you. Um, but you okay. know, I told you, every every swipe of my phone through YouTube, it's Sebastian, Sebastian, Sebastian. But it's not good. It's all negative, all gross, negative. all digging way too deep into people that just shouldn't even be involved in this whatsoever. Oh, my gosh. I agree, Burton. I agree wholeheartedly, like super deep. And and I went on Granny's panel a few days ago. I was so stressed. People will troll me for my accent. Everyone was nice. No one's going to troll you. And it, it just becomes exhausting, doesn't it? It just like, like, that's what I was telling the girls before I went. I was like, hey, anybody up? Because I'm not going to go live if nobody's up at 10 o'clock at night. And I should have known they were. But um, I'm like, it's just even just scrolling through my timeline. And I've got a lot of other random stuff on my timeline. You know, I've got 
knitting, uh, knitting, crochet, yarn stuff. I've got lawn care community stuff. But it just seems like right now you click on the live, all the freaking lives are the same thing. And it's just, it just seems like heartbreaking. I don't even know how to describe it. I don't even, uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't even know how to put it into words how I'm feeling. We all need a if I go missing envelope. That's right, Amac. Just leave me missing. Just leave me missing. Don't find me. Welcome to the streets, Bendy. I think you'll like it over here. We got some cool emojis. I'm going to work on a Mr. Pib emoji. But Well, that's where I'm at too now. And I've even said it in chats that if I go missing, I would want nobody to bring it to any social media. I would rather stay lost forever mm -hmm. than have people profit and dig into my family members and uh, no i i would rather i don't even care if it's the most horrific situation and i'm being tortured like it that's that's how torturous what is taking place online has been for me watching it it is it really I would is never, i would never want my family to go through what all of these different families time and time again we've watched it happen it's the same thing it's rinse and repeat and no matter no matter the call outs, they have no shame. None. It's a, they aren't shamed into stopping. And for me, like it comes to their their ethics. If they don't have an ethical compass or a um, moral compass, yeah. if they don't have it, they don't have it. And it just doesn't matter what is said, what is shown. And and it feels almost like my hands are tied, but now I'm actually going to a place of Outrage. looking. Well, the, I'm going into a place now where I'm looking into contacting, seeing what I can do legally. Like, are there any ways we can get anything passed, whether it be with mm. the plat? Because I know into the the line is that's having freedom of speech. Yeah, and that's it. So there's got to be something question. between where we're at now and freedom of speech. There's got to be something in there that can be done. You would think that there would be a something for families of missing individuals, but especially missing children, um, some form of protection. And I think that I, I'm with you, Burden. Like, what is the answer? That's my question. What What is the answer? Because like I've told people before, you kind of get to this place when you draw attention to the negative things and you correct the misinformation or you debunk things. What you end up doing is you give the other side the attention that they're they're actually seeking whether they want it or not they're going to get it and it drives more people to them and i completely understand that and i think the hope is always just that one person hears the truth and knows the truth and it will help spread that around but what can we actually do is there actually a an answer to this problem because i think it's a problem i truly do and, uh, I think things need to be changed. I, I don't think that there's anything that, that we're going to do because where it gets done would be the creators. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, the subs, and if they choose to continue to keep clicking and the numbers show that that's what they want, that's what they want. Well, I don't think it should be about what the subs want. I don't think it should be about what creators want. I think it should be about what would the families want. Mm hmm and ironically, it's I, I'm a little thrown off actually by Sebastian's dad a little bit. To be honest said, with you. Yeah, he's he said I heard listened to a little bit of an interview because I've been trying to wait and not listen to him, but I, I peeked in and heard a little bit of him on Pascal and he's like, I don't care. I I'll be on every show, I'll be everywhere. I just want to get my son's name out there. And part of me is like, Yes, you go, dad. That's what we want for you. You know, that's that's what we want to hear out of it. But then another part of me is like how long before this mob who is holding him up so high kicked that pedestal out from underneath of him? That's my question. And I'm not, I hope it doesn't happen. I hope I'm wrong. But that's what I feel like is is coming. Yeah. And him saying that um, he knows their past. He knows what mm -hmm. they did. And he's okay. Like, he doesn't mm -hmm. care as long as somebody's helping. And, and it's like, well, they're not helping. But perhaps their audiences i don't know is it bringing more people 
I, I don't know. It just spiraled. The people that were there to search it happened so quickly. Now involved, right? Yeah. It's it's just a lot. And I was describing it the other day that it's like a like a snowball. Mm-hmm. It's rolling and it's just getting bigger and bigger and growing into a larger monster. And I don't know what I don't think that it's anything I can do here yeah. online. I think it's got to be taken offline. Yeah. Like higher. It's but and then, and then you're talking like a huge a huge and it's a lot. That's my mm-hmm. that's my concern is I can look into that and I could see what I could get started but without multiple of us joining together with it it's not going to be a thing. It's so it would just fail anyway. So no, I get it's exhausting. It sure is. Yeah. Yeah. I'll show you guys. Uh, Terry Dean said, let me see if I can do it this way. Here we go. I, she says, defamation is real. Just ask Alex Jones. I was going to do a live yesterday uh, of this, <laughs> the next Alex Jones with Upchurch on it. <laughs> But I got I got so busy with other things it just didn't end up happening, and uh, because I watched the new uh, I watched the new uh, what's that show called? Uh, it was an Alex Jones documentary on Cinemax, and as I was watching it and just watching Alex Jones, it I had just watched all the Upchurch stuff the night previously. I'm watching this documentary and I'm like, this man is doing exact, you know, Upchurch is doing exactly what Alex Jones did by saying Kylie Rodney's not real. She's not dead. It's a big conspiracy. Like it's the exact same thing. It's so wild. And I just feel like we're on this train that doesn't end. It's or or a perpetual groundhog's day over and over and over. And, you know, you have really great people that are putting out great content to try to uh, you know, kind of headed off at the past, but it's not always working. Like Tragedy Pimps Exposed, she's just pumping out video after video. But I know there are a lot of people talking on it, but I don't know if it's doing any good. And I don't mean that to, um, you know, downplay what they're doing. I'm just curious. Like, do you, and maybe I'm alone. Maybe I just kind of hit the slump where it's like you just see negative thing after negative thing after negative thing about. Sebastian and his family, or not so much him, but about his a little bit about him and, and his family. And it's just like it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Post mom uh, regarding the UCN post. No, I did not. Um, but it was it a was it about the one where they called out Jonathan? We've seen it before. Look at how people turned on Gypsy. Right. It is a double. That's what I'm saying, Bendy. Like people were just like, they had. Gypsy lifted high on that pedestal, and now it's like complete 180. And so, my question is: Do you think that's going to happen to Seth? Like he's out here working hard and saying all the right things now. What about if he says something they don't like? Will the crowd flip on a dime? I don't know. It's online stalking for their victimizing. Hey, nonsense. How's it going? Nonsense. You've had some great. I, I listened to that one stream you did. It was really great. And I've got you in my watch later for tonight. Hey, Nanya, is that you? It's me. She's been pumping out and trying to head off the bad actors or I can't remember what she called them in the first stream, but just like, I think she just said overall shitheads. They're shitheads trying to cover true crime. <laughs> I don't know if that's what she said. I feel like she's been saying, like, my mm-hmm. mentality is is on the same track as hers. And mm-hmm. what's acceptable and what's not. It just, it's way too far. Uh, well, tonight, uh, sorry, sorry, Bob, I cut you off. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Tonight, I, I saw that same thing that you're talking about, nonsense. I, I mentioned it earlier in the stream. I saw that same thing. And I'm like, what if he goes back home? What if he goes back home and you're showing his bedroom? And then I listened to another stream where there was supposed to be an interview with um, someone from the United Cajun Navy, but they the chat was just decimating uh, the creator because she was 
debunking and and accurately so debunking JLR and the chat just just decimating her because she was debunking JLR and then um so she decided to just go ahead and put out a little bit of the audio like she had like a two-hour phone call with him I think she said so she put out a little bit of the audio and I know that's going to spread but like wildfire by morning because it was some salacious gossip and I'm just like why why are we doing this I, I don't understand it I'm so... <sighs> the one question I keep thinking of is how does it help yeah you know like a lot of what we're seeing right now is like how does it help like there's there's so many different things that are being put out and all of that kind of stuff. And it's not just like one case, right? It's multiple cases, it's multiple people. And it's like, but how does it help? I think at the end of the day, though, it really does go back to like that moral compass kind of a thing. Like yours, mm -hmm. is mine is mine. Some of these creators are completely okay with just making the money off of it. Yeah. Like they don't care about the family. They claim to care about a missing child or or a, a victim of a, a violent crime, but they really don't. No, I don't think they do. Tony is backstage showing me his puppies. Do you want your puppies on screen, Tony? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi, Dates. Hi, Poppy. Do you Hi. want everybody to see your puppies? Yeah, why not? Show them okay. my puppies. Look how cute they are. How have you been, Tony? I'm good, Boppy. I'm so honored to be on the same platform as you. We're glad uh, you're here. It's so great to see you again. I, I, I just tuned in. Um, I, I think, Deets, you were, you were sounding a little bit despondent before. But yeah. I do believe a new wave is coming. I do believe that more people are becoming more aware of what's going on in the true crime community with the grifting and the the uh, extorting of victims and victims' families. And mm -hmm. there's a new wave coming, so don't be despondent. You're on the you right think? side of, of it. Of, you're on the right side of everything. Boy, I hope that's <laughs> accurate. I really do, because this is just starting to get really discourag discouraging. And I don't know if it's this case in particular. There are just some no. particular cases where... It just blows up and goes insane. Melissa, this this live is about anything. Whatever you guys want to talk about, if you guys want to change the subject, talk about something else, I'm just like, let's just have a free-for-all, whatever we want to discuss. So, Nanya, um, what, what you were just saying, that's where my mindset has been to the, over the past year and me questioning what good am I doing and mm -hmm. what good are, like, for me personally – because I'm seeing the attempts by people to call them out. I've seen them a gentle call out. I've seen rougher call outs and things in the middle. I've seen the few good creators that do stick to facts. And and then I see the numbers of people going over to those that are grifting or sensationalizing it. And I just keep weighing it out for the past year to the point that like it, I care so much. So it does break my heart. But I really got to the question of, am I contributing to the problem by even bringing new cases and showing these little ones? And yeah. everything you said, I felt that about questioning my position since I am putting out that info. But overall, true crime collectively, yes, I've had the same questions. And, and that's why I made my decision that I, I had to pull back because mm -hmm. something has to change and I'm not making the change by what I was doing. I, I think we had a, we were having a conversation earlier today about just like, for me, I'm very like that double edged sword about bringing awareness to what these people are doing, whether yeah. it be misinformation or speculation or just when it goes too far. Right. And you take the time as a creator to like call that out or debunk what they've said or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think the unfortunate part about it is, is a, a, somebody who may not know, right? They're watching what you're saying. They're watching that stream. And then they're like, okay, well, let me go watch that person. They'll go to that next live stream and they don't hear that kind of stuff in that live stream. So they stay. And then they're there and then they're there yeah. and then they're there. And then eventually they leave, but there's this new wave that constantly comes through and it just refresh and it's just this wash, rinse, repeat, 
kind of cycle that goes over and over. And I do agree with you. I feel like there's a lot of laws that haven't caught up to what the internet can do when it, when it comes to freedom of speech, which I don't believe mm-hmm. in quashing anybody's, but like the limitations to that when it comes to these types of cases, I don't think those limits have been put in place yet because we yeah. just haven't caught up to what can be done online. There has to be protection. Like, so it, it wouldn't even be so much an attack on the freedom of speech as much as it would be protection for victims, protection of those that are missing or even murdered. I There's got to be protection for, for that. And like I said, the, the line I run into is that freedom of speech line. But there's <laughs> there's a huge gap between where we're at and that. And there's got to be something in there we can do. Um, I agree. I agree. Tony better not expose himself on my panel like he did on Detective John's, I hear. <laughs> Tony. But, oh, goodness. Um, I'll just I'll respond to that. That is a complete <laughs> lie. And that is brought about by the trolls who, who uh, they're in the, the Brian Koberger is innocent clan. Oh, gotcha, um, gotcha. The conspiracy people, they're, they're, the conspiracists, they're like the BK cult. And because I, because I was on jo- Dr. John's uh, two or three times, um, someone came out with a malicious lie and rumor. Mm-hmm. And it, that's all I can say. I mean, all I can do that's is. That's fine. All we've ever seen of you. Lie. Yeah, you showed your face last time, and then now we get to see these cute sleeping doggies. So I ain't mad at it. <laughs> hey, Tony. Um, Cereal, I, I saw your other comments, but your question is what I'd like to know. What is going too far? What is going too far? I mean, I, I think that looks differently for every individual, but I think yeah. that there are just some set standards that we should all encompass. But I, I like to think that. What is too far? If you wouldn't like it done to you, if your child was legitimately missing, that is too far. And well, the other yeah. thing too, Deets, is when you have, and again, I get it, like the families, they want to speak, they want to get, you know, their their yeah. their person's, you know, picture out there and name out there, and they want their voices to be heard. And they go, I think that originally, I think they start off going to social media, news channels, things like that, in an attempt to be heard. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's originally to start with, I don't think it's them that twist things and, and make things go awry. It's the audience. But where do you even draw the line there of like, okay, well, they can talk to this person, but not talk to that person. Because when they get on that person's panel, it'll be all bad. Like there's... And that's where it's like, okay, well, we're in it. But if you, if you, if the, if I think it's well known, like the people who just do it for the exploitation purposes or the money purposes, things like that. So, you know, we've seen it this time around. I, I think it was actually Chris who had said, like, I will not be interviewed by this specific person because I've looked him up and yeah. I've seen his history, you know, and hearing that as somebody who was like, oh, thank goodness, like, Maybe it worked kind of a thing, you know, like I felt yeah, like good on them. Yeah. yeah, like I felt like that was a win for those who do take the time to do those call outs and bring that awareness. Mm-hmm. But then you have these other people who they may be smaller, they may not be as well known. And they just slide in there and they do like last night was super duper gross to me, in my opinion. And they do those things and you're like, yes. oh, here we go. And yeah, it's I lost it. It felt like a spiral from there is all, all I'm going to say on that because that was just, um, I think that civ- civil cases like that, like divorce, custody hearings, things like that are very messy and muddy and shouldn't be brought. But that's all I'm going to say about that. Go ahead, Bart Burton, whatever you were going to say. No, I was just going to say that um, poor Deet's got an earful for me. Because because of last night, and I I ended up over there finally, because uh, I've been pretty distant from a lot of people, but yeah, that that last night brought me. You know, she said she wanted to hear, she wanted to better understand my way of thinking. And um, anyway, last night I was just like, this is what I mean. Like, what is going on? How and no? And this is to me, it just 
broke my it just looked like a a display of a, of a broken woman that sure she she may have something to say and want to tell her story but right now she's in the middle of some legal things like this wouldn't be the time nor should it be a connected to the case and it is obviously um what other case would it be connected to so i i had a really hard time with that last night as well and i'm like there is no limit mm. when i think i've seen the worst they just keep showing more and i don't it just yeah. I, I get infuriated and i get sad mm -hmm. my heart is broken and my brain is angry <laughs> I, I i agree it's a lot I agree. Um, uh, they were asking for a recap earlier. I just kind of mentioned that like when I hopped on, what was the point of this live? It's a free for all, whatever you guys want to talk about, because I got discouraged just kind of scrolling through my timeline tonight, you know, and one live where there's 2000 people they're they're literally going through picture by picture of, uh, Sebastian's home. And I was like, wait, what if he returns there? What if he returns there? And then in another live, um, a creator was supposed to have an interview and she started the live by debunking the misinformation that JLR put out on the United uh, Cajun Navy and, and accurately so, but the chat was just clobbering her and, and the, each other with, because of, because she was debunking JLR and the person that was supposed to hop up, I guess was from the Cajun Navy and he decided, no, I'm not coming in. The chat's too messy. I'm, I'm not doing the interview. So then afterwards she decided to just play audio like that she had recorded of her conversation with him. And it was very salacious stuff that she played. And I'm like, that's going to be everywhere now too. And is that helping the case? And I just, I just felt like, Oh, let's just go live and just have a free for all and whatever we want to talk about. We can talk about, um, I agree. Tragedy pimps. If a family member came to me, I would say, please stay off of YouTube. And then I started yeah. a couple of comments as I was scrolling and nonsense. You're absolutely right. If this was a creator fight and someone's home was being shown, this would be considered going real life, right? Yep. So how is a victim's family having this happen? And it's okay to the family of the victim. That's yeah. so true. Uh, that's I didn't what think I've of been, it like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been saying like, wow. if, if us creators don't want to be doxxed, what in the world makes people think that victims of some type of tragedy would want their entire life doxxed, their neighbors are getting doxxed, everybody? Like, why are we able to and think it's okay to dig in and expose all of their personal life when as a creator, we don't we don't want ours put out? Which um, Serial said, but wait, no, hang on. Well, we just talked about some real solutions a minute ago, actually. Uh, wait, I'm okay. So they've been talking a lot. Let me go find the one that I just saw a minute ago. Hang on. I so handle you. potential suspects with kid gloves. We don't know who the potential suspects are. We're not we law are enforcement. Not law enforcement to know who the potential suspects yeah. are. So yeah. the, the other thing is they said, where's the boundaries, right? For me, if I'm watching a live stream and every other minute I'm asking myself, how does this help Sebastian? Mm -hmm. Odds are that's past a boundary for me personally. Yeah. Like if it's not about him, him, it's not about him. I feel like that you're, you're over a boundary yeah. showing his house, which does not protect him. If he returns home, Exactly. that's not about him talking about a separate situation or a separate legal situation while very potentially tragic and hurtful. It's not about him. Because there's just things that we shouldn't be privy, to, like we don't need to be privy to when it pertains to cases, especially those involving minors. And Eliza, I I think that it's very important that we don't discredit a uh, anyone's story because it's hard to disprove it. Uh, some things you can because they're out there in the courts, but... For the most part, I like to stay clean away from that. But I agree with you. It, it's not for us. It's for TBI. And the thing is, in these cases, we know that everyone surrounding Sebastian is going to be dug into by law enforcement. So all of that should have been handled by law enforcement, not YouTubers. And I just felt like, it, oh, unfortunately, what it does is twofold. It could, you know, 
now they're going to, I'm sure they're going to get more and more. Actually, I know they are. I saw in chats where people were like talking about driving to harm this individual. We don't even know if, if what she said was true or not. And I seen a lot of threats towards them in their home. And I'm like, no wonder they had to leave if this is, and this was just in one chat that I saw it in. But then I also think about them. What about those crazies that don't believe her story and then go after her? And I just felt like, oh, that's just, I could just see a lot of bad scenarios and it worried well, me. Well, and I think that's even in general, like there's so many cases that you see that happen in. Mm -hmm. That's not just one case. That is so many different cases that this very similar, you know, situations happen in it. It like that's where the boundary is crossed. Like you've you've absolutely lost the focus. And and that's not just in one case. That's multiple cases. Yeah. So, time and time again. Time and time again. I do I do well, think well, that she deserves to have a voice. I'm I don't mean it to come off that way. I just I can see how it's gonna go how how it could go wrong for so many. And that's why I say it muddies the water. I'm sick to death of hearing the most outrageous speculation and misinformation discussed with fake shock and concern as though serious, as though serious while creators hide behind an entertainment only disclaimer. Yeah. I, saw I will say, go ahead, baby. I, I will say um, that I don't think that we should all be completely silent on the side of it, of showing what they do because for example what you put together over jlr that is something that can be found when people are looking if if these families or relatives or neighbors decide to look into the people the creators online that it is a place that they can find out the truth of the things from their past or even current that they may not be aware of so i don't i don't think that we should all stop like tragedy pimp exposed and and all of those that are putting out stuff i i don't think that should stop either um, but i just think that there there's got to we got to do something else also because that alone it they're still going further and further yeah, it's getting more and more intense, and and the outrage. Could you could you imagine? My question is, and and this is just a question. It's a hypothetical question here. If JLR and Dolly had rolled up on Tech Texas EquiSearch, and they said the exact same things to them that the United Cajun Navy said to them. No, get out of here. Quit live streaming. Would they have been as outraged towards Texas EquiSearch as they are now to this other group? And I'm genuinely curious about that because I wonder how people would have received that. And I think when you have this over here in this sector, we're all very familiar with who Texas EquiSearch is. So we're not as familiar with who the United Cajun Navy is. And then there's this, you know, salacious gossip surrounding them and whatnot. Would this have all spun so crazily out of control if it was um, a search and rescue team that is well-known and well-liked? Mm. Well, they're not tagged in, no one's tagged in this stream. And so nobody's coming here to search for Sebastian information. And we're just kind of chatting and venting. So it's not like someone who's out searching for Sebastian Rogers information is going to pull up this stream. <laughs> hey, Gavel. That's another thing, Terry. What if somebody does have have him, you know? And and now they're watching it. I don't know. That that to me is a touchy subject of of somebody having him um, based off of a past case. And I I don't know if I've mentioned it to you or not, but mm -mm. can can I just say something? Absolutely. <laughs> so serial offender is very um, confused as to why this discussion is even happening. So I thought that maybe I could maybe like break it down a little bit. It's happening because there are gross people out there that some of us are frustrated, discouraged by, and disappointed in that continue to put their hands in a pot, put their hands in a 
uh, case, and it's not just one case. You're making it all about one case. This conversation is about multiple cases, multiple creators, multiple mm -hmm. subscribers who continue to put their hands in places, who continue to interview people who have nothing to do with cases, who continue to lose the actual focus on the victim of a crime and focus on everybody else around them. Mm -hmm. That's what the conversation about. And there's some people who are sick of that. That's one of the greatest things I've ever heard on YouTube, true crime. It is. It really is. And and honestly, like Burden was saying earlier in this stream, until more of us get outraged and and seek to do something for victims' rights or victim protection, I don't know if we're going to see a change because I did a stream a while back about how TikTok true crime is like the Wild West. It's like anything goes. It's, it truly is a free for all on TikTok. And uh, Twitter's getting just as bad. And I think that now we're seeing that leak over into YouTube. And it's just conspiracy after conspiracy after conspiracy. And I just always think, you know, go back to like Mal's talking here about what Maura Mori's families ha they've spoken on and they have the whole engage with empathy campaign. You know, they want you to talk about their loved ones. They want you to get that information out there. Just be empathetic when you do so, because I'm just always go back and think about what if it was me? What if it was my loved one? And they're so, you know, how would I feel if there was all these crazy wild conspiracies around their case and how would I react to that? And, but I don't think much will change until enough are outraged. Yeah. I think with that though, I'm, I'm just having this thought right now, perhaps, <laughs> <laughs> having, perhaps having a reach out of, and I don't know what platform I would do this on, um, for loved ones that have experienced these kind of situations, they've had a missing loved one or a murdered loved one. And they themselves have been a victim of a true crime creator on any platform and what it's done to their personal life and see if there's any of, of the families that would want to come in and be a part of mm -hmm. the attempt to get something passed outside of, of platforms, whether mm -hmm. it's a restriction on these platforms where the companies themselves have to do the restricting or um, something just collective overall. Uh, but perhaps that might help a little bit more um, having the actual victims themselves have their voice and be able to really give a full understanding to us because we see our perspective. I'm interested in hearing their perspective of how it's affected their lives personally by what's happening online. And I know some of them. Mm -hmm. I, I do know some that I would love to hear a stream like that up and you'd be the perfect one to interview them and talk with them too, because I think it's important for us to remember that and it, it, who better to hear it from than those. I just wouldn't want them further attacked. That would be my I only know, that's the thing, right? So but again, it, I don't know that I would do it live. If I did it, it would, it would be, recorded and if there's anything I feel would need to be protected um, I the last thing I want to do is have them further victimized they they would have already been through enough so that's that that line but I do think it is important to hear their voices and their stories it is yeah. it truly Ava that's what I have uh, several friends down in Texas and they all told me the same thing like uh, when I talked to a couple of them about what was happening online and they're like, wait, the United Cajun Navy is legit. Why are people, you know, doing that? And I think that they just come from a, you know, those creators come from a section of the country where they aren't aware of them. And so that made it easy for them to attack. So um, Shambles had a question further up. I don't know if you can go to it, but she said she had a question. She wanted to know how many parents do you know how many parents have come and done interviews on social media and been found guilty? That's a great question, Shambles. Uh, oh, there. Hey, I hadn't even gotten to it yet. Oh, <laughs> you know. I'm sorry. I'm, a, I'm ahead. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. I don't know of any. Has anybody answered? No, um, not so far. 
But I mean, if you really look at it, I, I just like it made me think like how many parents have we seen interviewed a lot? And I don't know if there are any parent. I mean, you guys would be much more knowledgeable in that in that arena, but I don't know of any off the top of my head, at least. Well, I mean, like Scott uh, Peterson, I guess if you, you know, people like that, that he was interviewed by mainstream media. Um, I mean, you do, um, uh, Leilani's mom. Leilani, she yeah, I Billy Jean. I don't it. think did she. She might have talked. She a did a little. media interview. Remember? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. But she's Leticia. not guilty yet. Not guilty yet. But yeah, we. I do believe she is guilty. Leticia. Oh yeah, Leticia was. She did uh, Leticia Stauk and the. She was speaking on Facebook and sending people messages and stuff. I don't. Did she do? Yeah. She did a YouTube interview, didn't she? I agree with Chambles. We should uh, try to try to think of just ones on social media. If we can, um, I mean, they could have done media as well, but at least have done social media. Mm. You're right, Aries girl. Let's be real though; it's a free for all in the actual court system too, though. So that is, I mean, that's true. Many people get away. Do we have? We need a list of issues. Make a list and check it for you. We'll get out our chalkboards later. I mean, I do think that there are. Uh, you can turn your camera off, T. Yeah. There you go. I do think there are, you know, some things that people complain about on here that shouldn't. They're not complaint worthy. I get that. But then some, I just, I don't know. How's it going, T? What's up, everybody? Hey. Hello. So my, I had a question in chat, but I know you're like way behind in chat. So I figured, oh, you know, it, it's always better to get a hold of you just, just straight I'm up. <laughs> so my question is, is, Whose line is the right line, though? Like, I know. We, we critique everybody else on how far they go, mm -hmm. but other people are, are okay with how far these people take it. So whose line is the right line? That's a valid question. I think that it should be the families and the, the victims on the receiving end of it. Because that's what I was saying. Rather than it just being what we think as creators or what the subs like and click on and watch for entertainment – I think it, it should be focused on victims, just like I think the coverage of true crime should be on the victims. But that's just I struggle not. With that. I struggle with that because of cases like Leilani or Chris Watts or mm -hmm. Letitia Stout and how much people were talking about them. And if we took into consideration what they wanted versus considering ourselves a voice for the people who they ultimately killed, do we care about their line? But did it? But did it help at all? I, I'm wondering: is is any of the coverage and the the turtle what mask? It you think it could? What is What did it hurt in those in those cases? Hurt? What did it hurt? Is my question. And I'm asking these questions not because I disagree with you. I'm asking these yeah. questions as a true crime creator. I think. What um, is yeah. the What is the line? Because I'll tell you, there's people That's who think I cross a line because yeah. I laugh when I read certain things on documents and people get mad about it. Yep. So I'm just wondering, like, really, where is the line? I mean, it's a valid question. It's one I've been struggling with for probably yeah. part of a year. Where is the There's line? I, if we had a set standard, it would be a lot easier to follow. But yeah, like, la you know, because you laugh at something while you're reading. I, I think that's a bit ridiculous. But I get what you're saying. Like, you know, But if I laugh because I'm talking about... A, a case where two people were killed or two girls mm -hmm. were killed or a child was killed. It's like, how dare you laugh at that? Like you don't care about the victims. Yeah. Um, or when it can, you know, and I'll backtrack when it came to like the Letitia Stout case and everything happened with like Zav girl who, you know, had the, the photos, you know, she yep. was crucified on social media. She for, was because, because it passed the line for certain people, but not for others. I mean, there's literally mm -hmm. Facebook groups that are created to go over crime scenes. Mm -hmm. And there's pictures of all kinds of people, children, adults, animals. I mean, it's like, there's, so like, I'm just wondering, like, how do we know? You can only go to the line that your viewers are looking for. And that's kind of where I'm, I struggle with it because and I don't know if somebody else's line is my line. And if I cross that person's line, then like I'm, 
I'm I'm worse than they are. But now you're this, labeled a tragedy pimp. Yeah, I've never I've never had that label yet. I mean, no, I, I, I get what you're saying. That's that a bit. Extreme. You know what I mean? Like far. Mm -hmm. You know how far can you go before it becomes like an issue? And like I yeah. said, I mean, when you talk about cases like where these people are out on social media and they're pretending like they didn't do anything wrong, then I, are they actually the victims of anything? Or what about the families who do go on and they become like the, the mm -hmm. center? We talk about Summer Wells and you have Candace and Dawn who literally just bounce you know, from panel with, to panel. With, with chaos and they did it intentionally. They mm -hmm. purposely put out false recordings so that the public would they could laugh at like at yeah. social media and so are they victims because their daughter's missing or are they contributing so by that by that set of logic though right so to me i do agree with you if the family is engaging in it and there's an audience for it then i mean i just won't watch like that's just oh you can only police yourself truly but i don't think that um I don't think that necessarily, I mean, again, I don't know the laughing situation, but I don't think that necessarily if you're doing true crime, going over some of those details, yes, it is necessary. So I do understand that part of it. But to me, that'd be like, like, for example, in this particular situation that we're talking about here right now um, is like law enforcement, a searching agency has asked, okay, please stop and don't come and live stream, right? That a law enforcement, like, okay, a, a law enforcement agency or a searching agency? The searching agency and law so enforcement, law enforcement. removed okay. them. Yeah. Right. But even with Summers, yeah. TBI asked for, for social media to stop. And I mean, it's there were so many tips that were being put in that they had to go and look into that I don't think it was necessary. I think it was social media. And I, I think that it becomes irresponsible when maybe the true crime creator isn't saying don't go and report this as a tip. I mean, I don't know if, if it's got to be more guidelines per creator. I don't know. But when you've got law enforcement that's really trying to find a little girl and then they're having to go in all these crazy directions because some per medium person um, or tarot reader said that they saw on their cards X, Y, and Z, that is really distracting law enforcement from doing what they need to do to find the the, or these even, children. even like the Idaho four where they had to create the whole rumors page yeah. every yeah. day, updating it with new rumors that social media was put like to me, that's where like, I think the boundary should lie is like when, when what you're doing impedes that line, then maybe you shouldn't do it. And, and I get what you guys are saying, but I feel how what Sleuthy's saying here, like it's a hard, it's hard. And in my opinion, it doesn't make much of a difference. Think about the folks most folks talk about. They keep getting talked about, but it doesn't make a ding in their behavior, right? Exactly. It, they continue to grow. They can continue to get bigger because that's what kind of like what T was saying earlier. That's what their audience wants. And so their audience keeps coming back time and time and time and time again for it. So who... Like, well, that's, what, what, I, that's what I said. They, they have like no shame. Profession. Take another profession, like a, like a, let's just talk about like a comedian. So a comedian goes on stage and they tell mm -hmm. like their jokes and they're like the, you know, the good old dad jokes and their mm -hmm. audience is like, you know, 10 people deep and they make, you know, 15 bucks off of each one. And now you have, you know, a, a big comedian who goes out there and pushes the line and says completely inappropriate jokes, but you know, it's comedy. So it is what it is. And their audience is now, you know, tens of thousands of people deep and they're making 15 bucks off of each one of them. What do you think that comedian's going to go do? Are they going to go tell dad jokes or are they going to go tell, exactly. you know, jokes that, that push the, the that, that push the, push that comfort zone? And it's, I mean, if it's a, I think that's another thing is when, depend why you're here, there's people who are here because they're absolutely empathic advocates of victims who can really care and are trying to spread the word of these missing and lost and their that's their that's what their their person is that's their you know that's their core that's part of their soul right. there's other people and i use like for me i'm interested in the details i'm interested in the in the in the the investigations i'm interested in the path that is the taken forensics I'm not, and all not, that 
feel like I am, uh, I'm not advocating. My channel is not about advocating. Mm -hmm. So I feel like for somebody who is, who is an advocate or, or, or pushes that more on their channel, my channel would not be appropriate, right. you know? And then there's the creators that take it like to the next level and they're, you know, out there quote unquote boots on the ground. And that's not for me. That's not where I'm at. So like, is that's a little past in my line, if that makes sense. Well, and that's, yeah, that's why yeah. there's, there's two parts. There's the wanting to see a car wreck. Everybody will slow down and take a look. So some of these that become just a complete shit show mess and people want to see it out of the entertainment portion of it. Then there's also the curiosity portion and the wanting to understand the behavior because as humans, it's, it's natural that when something's done and we don't understand it, we want to understand it. We want to figure it out. I think that there, there, for me, there is a line with the curiosity. If it's, and I don't mind how curious you are in private, in discords, in smaller groups, but putting too much of the curiosity and digging too deep into some of these things that perhaps law enforcement really isn't wanting the public knowing uh, because are they going to, is anybody going to step in and possibly mess up the investigation? Uh, I have to throw it opposite to you because we also know from following true crime cases that law enforcement agencies sometimes will let things kind of slide or get put under, you yeah. know, under the leaves so mm -hmm. that nobody is paying attention. And with the, the push of true crime creators in social media at the all time high that it is right now, they know that they're not able to do that because somebody is paying attention and somebody will uncover the dirt that they're trying to hide. The world so, is watching. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a, it's a tough place. I, I think if I'm if I'm hearing what you're saying correctly and correct me if I'm wrong is having those two separate groups of people or kinds of people you've got the empathic I care about the family ones and then you have the more like this is just a case to me kind of a people and that's not I'm not saying it in either way is right or wrong but I think that that's where maybe the empathic ones are crossing over and saying hey the you know, I'm just covering a case and, and sticking with it that the empathic ones are trying to impose their empathic ways and vice versa, potentially. That's yes. And that's a great way to put it. That's mm -hmm. kind of how I feel. But I mean, I think there's instead of two, I think there's really three well, because I think that you, you do have the, the line that goes over into the tragedy pimping where it comes to like harassment and people are out on the streets getting arrested. Right. Which, I mean, for me, that's that's why I'm like, where's everybody else's line? Because that's kind of my line. I don't want to be out there harassing people either. I just want to tell the story. I just want to talk about the details. I want to see what other people's opinions are on those details and where everything kind of falls. I'm not, I'm not not empathic, but I'm not overly empathic. I have no problem looking at crime scene photos. I have no problem right. like going over. For, for you, it, 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 it sucks, it, but. That. I, I think of it as a mom and my own children, but I don't, I can do it. And it's not somebody putting out a crime scene photo. Isn't the end all be all. Mm -hmm. um, but I understand that as a, as, like I said, as a mom that I wouldn't want that out of my child. So it's like, I have, I am empathic, but I'm not, that's not my purpose. I don't think I like to tell the story. Uh, see, and that makes sense with how you, run your channel and how you interact. And I think you nailed it earlier when you're presenting yourself as an advocate versus maybe a researcher or a storyteller or something of the sort. Those are completely different. You're not putting yourself out there as an advocate. And I think that is a big, a, a huge distinction. I love to sleuth. I'm, I'm like sleuthy. I love digging into the facts. I like looking at all the things and uh, like I can get lost in research for days. I went MIA for like 36 hours the other day. I love to dig in and do the research, but does that mean I should put all of that out there? Exactly. And, you I know. Am. I, I'm curious yeah. as to, is Sleuthy, is that you? Yeah, you're safe. Okay. I'm curious as to like, I don't know about safe, but it's I know, sleuthy. right? <laughs> it's it's <laughs> sleuthy. We might not be safe, but it's sleuthy. Like how much of that information that we gather should we put out there, even if we're not presenting ourselves as advocates? 
I can, I can say something about that. Uh, I want to say, and like, so I, I have my own personal line, I guess. And I just, with my line, I just make sure that I don't cross it. You might not like that line. Mm -hmm. Teresa might not like that line, but it's, it's my line that I set. So like, for instance, when something happens and folks go and they comment under like a name gets mentioned and they go to that Facebook profile right away and they start calling people a murderer and they um, mm -hmm. send them message after message. And they're like, when are you going to turn yourself in? Like literally five minutes after they've heard their name. Uh, I don't agree with any of that. I wouldn't do it. In fact, it's infuriating when I try to go in to gather information. I can't tell what's old, what's new. If you yeah. know that person uh, and then they usually shut everything down. So that I feel like, it is harassment and I get that um that people aren't it, it my line is that people shouldn't do that but like as for the digging up of information like I can dig and dig and dig and dig and I I can say mm -hmm. personally that like 90% of the stuff that I do find just doesn't make it public I don't think everything's for yep. everyone I agree I agree but it's but it's your line like Teresa said like how do you know whose line is right and I think that I think it's a very touchy subject and I think that the line can shift from person to person so so Dietz your line could be this but if it's you know Teresa that's that crosses the line a little bit it can shift you know and what I mean I do and that line changes from community to community as well on YouTube I have noticed because I do like to bounce yeah. around in different communities and so going back to your example earlier of Teresa of the Zab girl and those autopsies uh, you didn't see that national outrage like over in Delphi with the sharing of those like to where it makes it on News Nation and they're calling out people for it and so exactly. it shifts from community to community and people to people and I think that maybe that's where part of the frustration I'm having comes from is like what are we doing and I and I don't know because like you guys said it is your it's our own personal lines and our own personal morals but can we be outraged when others I mean they're not breaking the law they're not if their line doesn't mesh with ours can we be outraged if their line doesn't mesh with ours I I do like I said I do like what you said T about like if they're presenting themselves as an advocate I think we can because if you are out there advocating for missing children and then you're doing things that are harming them that I, that's too far in anybody's book. But what if you are a true crime creator and you just are a true crime content person? So then, I mean, is it okay that your line is different? And then you have, you know, the, I'm not going to go through who they are, but I think everybody yeah. in the, every, we all know who they are, the ones that take it and they're, you know, getting the money and they're going out to these places and camping out for days. And is it, is that too far? I mean, is that just a different community? So are like, do we just say, hey, we have three different communities here of people and either you're part of this one or you're part of this one and you're part of this one? I think that the danger comes, I guess when the line is crossed, which where is the line? I get that part. But like to me, when you're, when you're talking about it and you're saying, I'll go over all the details in the case, right? So if you're pulling up court documents or you're pulling up crime scene photos during a, a stream or a video and you're going over that, those are the facts of the case. I Just for me, I don't see an issue with that personally. Me but either. what happens is if you're like, oh, look, I found something in this crime scene photo that the police didn't even catch and I'm going to go out there and look for myself. Oh, wow, look, I found evidence and picked it up with my hand. I'm so great and amazing. Guys, send me money. Like, that's where it's like, come on now. Like, you are literally, you're impacting the potential justice for somebody. I would say also, I think that there's a responsibility because at the end of the day, we can't control the people that listen to us and what they decide to do with the information you put out. So sleuthing is fine. But I don't think it all needs to be put public or done publicly because certain things being seen by other people in the family or other people at the college or roommates or et cetera, et cetera, and finding these little, these little things, we don't know what 
any of the audience is going to go to. Are they, again, going to go to the Facebook pages of the people that are named and then start attacking and accusing? Are they going to show up at any location? Are they going to try to go and do their own search and then pick up some evidence? And so I think that... Contaminator crimes, are you? Yeah. yeah I, I think but... that the what what uh, Nanya was saying, I agree with that, that if it's if it's factual, if it's by the court or law enforcement, that all can be put out, discussed, talked about. But other things that you're sleuthing, I think there's a line that runs dangerous to the fact we can't control what others do. Sure, we're not taking that third step into going out there and filming and, and boots on the ground stuff, but we can't control all the audience that they won't take that third step that could then possibly affect the investigation. I, I don't does even does mind. that become our responsibility? If I have 600 people watching a live stream and only I, I only know you know 20 of them are in there chatting, is it is it my responsibility as the creator to pay attention to what those 600 people are going to go do? Not to pay attention to what they're going to go do, but I think that since the 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 risk and potential is there, I mean I guess it comes down to do you care about the justice, it, it, possible risk of justice moving forward. Doesn't mean it's a guarantee, but it. I guess is it worth it? Is the, is putting out that information, weighing it out of the risk of of potential? I mean, I guess that's a question only that the creators could answer. For me, well, I I wouldn't want to risk I it, think, but I'm in the bottom tier of of the three that you put. I'm at the bottom. So well, you're you're an empath for sure, and I absolutely. Oh, yeah. that's that's who you are and I, I love you for it. I really do. And that's why mm -hmm. I watch your channel because that's who you are. Yeah. So I mean, I can, I, I mean, I can see the appreciation there. I just don't know if being on one of the other tiers, like does that push it? So like somebody like you doesn't want to watch somebody like me. Somebody like me. <laughs> do you see what I mean? Though? I mean, there's somebody I, I do that what you're saying. like me yes. for this exact reason. And it's, and I, I think that just, before we get too off on what Burden was saying, like, how do you know everybody's threshold is different in terms of your viewers? So like Teresa said, if she's got 600 people watching, mm -hmm. you know, something that she says that she's reviewing about um, something that maybe isn't necessarily in a court document because it might still be. So like Delphi over the course of five years talking about these various people, um, something that she says might send one person to go do yeah. to go do something and say something but then 599 other people are like huh you got that from that do you know what i mean it's hard yeah, to gauge how people are going to react to what you're saying hi you guys yeah, I, I don't think you can control that all oh sorry tia yeah hi, tia. no no i just wanted to say mm -hmm. hi really quick because i hi. actually had a couple questions with such a great topic by the way <laughs> Um, but I, I, when Teresa came up, I, she, of course, Teresa always gets my wheels turning. And by the way, let me mm -hmm. just say, if Decipher has 600 people watching, check and make sure there's not something wrong. One of us better be breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just start there. But, um, I think that I have some questions because I think I fall in the middle of a bunch of things that we're talking about. And I'm going to take creator off of the table because when I came up, you were talking about like, um, you know, people that are boots on the ground. I think there's certain cases for us personally that make us want I, one case in particular that we're working on currently. We are so very boots on the ground. Uh -huh. We're so with advocating the family. It's not a secret. <clears throat> And, and, and to be fair, I found evidence and I turned it in, um, you know, uh, I don't, I, me personally wouldn't consider that, that third tier, the third tier is like the, the, the dollies, the JLRs. is, I, I think agree. that you're, you're talking the actual, which is what I would do boots on the ground searching to mm -hmm. actually really help a family. I would not put that on that third tier. Me, I would Okay. Okay, yeah. and I, because the other side of the coin is also, I love a good trial, because watching Murdoch, I had zero problem 
And maybe this is where the tragedy pump line, this is where my line, our line, LFT's line and mine gets blurred is, I'm just, I'm being honest and maybe this is the wrong thing to say, but I didn't mind having our memberships on during Murdoch. I didn't mind. You shouldn't have. You shouldn't have. I don't think there's any issue whatsoever with you having your um, membership during Murdoch. Why would that be a weird thing? Um, Well, and I agree with that, but I would not be surprised if you said that some people had a problem with that. That's what I mean about. They did. Yeah. So, but it's your line, you know, it's. It's so subjective that it would be impossible to please everyone. Like, we would just not be talking. You couldn't give any opinions. You couldn't talk about anything that you found. Like, there is, it seems really simple, but it's really not. Well, I think that's why I came up because it, it just, for me, I, I, I got to thinking and it was just so, uh, my line got very blurred when Teresa started talking because I, I love, first of all, I love listening to Teresa and Teresa at bedtime, like she doesn't even know how many times we've slept together. It's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it is just not wrong. <laughs> um, but, and I love her clinical direct, like that is my jam. I love that. And I love digging for those facts. But I also love the fact that you, if there's a possibility and only if there's a possibility of doing it the right way, I love that you can help someone too. That makes that, that gets me going. So I think that, that's like an added thing. That's like an added thing for me. That's not my core. But if I, I mean, if, if I'm able to, if like there's somebody that wants to come on and tell the story about their missing loved one and you can help them or like, you know, I had like Zachariah Anderson's brother on for him to come and tell the story about what happened with his brother and how he believes he's wrongfully convicted. That's like, an, it's like telling the story, but it's like also giving them the ability to kind of tell like their side of things. I'm all for that. This is also, but it doesn't, I, that's not my, that's not, like I said, that's not my core being. My core being is I want to tell the story. Right. I, like I said earlier about families being understandably, their emotions are like all over the, like, like with Candace. So like Nerdy ran into Candace at church. She invited mm-hmm. him over. When he showed up, she screamed she was going to shoot him. Then Don, who also invited him over, was going all over his Twitter page saying, don't come to my house or we're going to kill you or. Yeah, I remember that. You. And then. An hour later, I'm like, I can't get a hold of him. I can't get a hold of him. Well, here they invited him in. Very back and forth. So depending at what moment you would have talked to them, they might have given you a different opinion about him. Or for instance, uh, there was an active missing persons case, which I don't talk about. Like anything that I've had real true involvement in to a very high degree, I don't like talking about it. But that particular person's parents were willing to talk with us, but they weren't willing to really speak publicly. And when mm-hmm. I tell you, she sat down for hours and told me everything, bad things. She had no shame whatsoever about the things that she was telling me about what this girl had been through um, and just wanted the whole story out in case somebody heard something or remembered talking to a girl by a different name, telling them a story that was similar to what her mom had told me. Now, if you didn't know that I got that information from her mother, you you would gasp and right. be like, I can't believe she's saying that stuff. And 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 I would be this family basher, right? So I guess it just really depends. And I and I don't feel like I personally should have to say, well, I already talked to her her mom is the one that said said to say it. Mm-hmm. Like I don't, I shouldn't have to defend I guess I just wish everybody would take accountability for their own line and just not cross it. Now, if you're going to talk about people with backgrounds in child abusing and domestic violence <laughs> out searching for children, then I think the police are the ones that are in charge of making sure those people don't do that. I don't think they should be doing that at all. Okay. So as we're talking about true crime, I think that one thing that we all agree on, and I think others in the chat will as well, is the you know the spread of lies and misinformation. And I, I feel like 
no matter where your moral compass is on that, like if it's a flat out lie or it's not a fact, then it, it it's too far to go. But you said earlier there, it's like everybody should take care of their own line. And I think that's the problem. Like there are people out there whose line is so much farther away than mine. And so therefore, like, what do we do with that? If their line is, you know, a mile ahead and they're okay with, you know, a thousand other things that could potentially harm a case or damage, uh, you know, a witness or a victim, things like that. Well, That's there, is, there is no line deep. There is no line for these people. I mean, there's there's a proliferation of people who have nothing else to do in their life. They think they'll make a YouTube channel. What do they know about? They know about crime because they're criminals. And they say a YouTube channel, they have no morals. And they will say anything. They don't care if they're impacting victims or victims' families. They go after people who are deceased and make all, all sorts of lies up about them because that's their grift. That's their thing. And there are some very clever ones. There's some very clever con men out there, con men and con women. But more, more the con men, I notice, really. Um, but that's how I feel about it. I don't want to be too controversial. Well, I wonder if, if everybody could agree. Like, I'm curious. I don't know if you can do a poll or not. But, like, would <laughs> everybody agree that spreading misinformation is over a line? Or is that an okay line? Ah, well, so I'm, I'm going to, I'll put this out there for you then. Okay. Is, Debunking is, me already? Is, <laughs> I'm is, good with it. Is misinformation considered something that is um, just absolutely incorrect? Like we all know it's incorrect and yet we're still saying it. Or is yeah. misinformation considered something like, hey, we're going over things that people on Facebook are talking about or reading people's Reddit comments on something and we're talking about it as, you know, part of the story. Is it considered misinformation? Cause we have no, we have no way to back it up. No, I'm mean, what, what I mean by, I do get that. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, no, no. What I mean by misinformation is blatant misinformation. Law enforcement yeah. has put out that this is the information and I, as a creator, turn around and I put out something completely different than that as fact. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So like, you know, we, we pulled up and went through a TBI newsroom and it tells uh, on Sebastian's case specifically, and it tells you so much information right there. So those that are continuing to, you know, spread things that contradict those facts that law enforcement have given us, in what my are opinion- those facts? Are they that doing way. it for clicks and views, though? Are they doing it because what? What do you think the why? I guess a better question is why would you put out misinformation? Because it's salacious. It's well, salacious. I, I hate that's that. More the money. Yeah, I think that's more disinformation. I think that's much more true um, disinformation. Yeah, okay. it's like very purposeful. So, like mm -hmm. misinformation. There's a difference between the two. Misinformation is false or inaccurate information. Just getting the facts wrong. So, for instance, with Idaho. Mm -hmm. uh, there were several pieces of information that we were told along that whole timeline um, that were completely incorrect. Now, whether mm -hmm. they gave it to us incorrect on purpose or they uh, eventually found out that it wasn't true, but we were all sharing that same information. I had to make a whole new timeline because a lot of it was was wrong. Mm -hmm. um, that's right. And then information. and it was later. Yeah. they And it took them a while to correct it. I get that. Yeah. Yes. But the disinformation is when it's when the information is just false and you're deliberately um, intending to mislead people and tell them that. So, you know, that it's false. It is truly false. Mm -hmm. So it's even different from speculation. You know, it's also I mean? hard though, when you have law enforcement who has the I mean, they're allowed to lie. Yeah. They're allowed to lie to the public. They're allowed to lie to their, the people that they're talking to. They're allowed to lie. So to say, well, law enforcement said this, so it has to be fact is that's all. I mean, that's a struggle because we don't, we know that it doesn't always have to be fact. I have a perfect example of that. What, Probably from what are you saying? Well, so, uh, well, okay. Sorry. Go ahead, Nanya. Then I want to touch on that a little bit. Yeah. Are you, so you're saying that, um, for example, they do a, uh, news conference and they say this is a suspect that we're looking for let's just say and I'm just this is just an example this mm -hmm. is a suspect that we were that we're looking for or a person of interest that we're looking for right and they put a picture up of you know a random neighbor for a case right 
And then it turns around and they, they do end up finding the neighbor. But in the meantime, you have a creator that is like, they, they put out, I don't know if everybody's seen it today, but they put out a picture of the dad. The dad's on the run. They're looking for the dad of this person. Mm-hmm. Right? When that's not what law enforcement showed at all during the press conference. Right? Right. So are you saying <clears throat> that maybe, just maybe, they have some type of inside source that told them they're looking for the dad and what law enforcement had put out during that press conference could potentially have been a lie? I don't like no inside sources. No unnamed inside sources. I don't like any of them. You I can't bet them. I don't can't either. Bet them at all. There's it, no I, way to prove that. Yeah, but like, but like she said, is it possible? It's absolutely possible. Is it probable? No. So I'll yes, they can. They, I mean, like if my dad's a cop and my dad tells me something about the investigation, and then I, you know, I go tell Sleuthy, and Sleuthy puts it out. You know, mm-hmm. she's got a source, right? Yeah. But so she she knows that the, the cops are looking for, you know, maybe they're looking for both people, but they only want to put out one. So, yes, it is possible. But I yeah, I don't I don't really like the, the sources. I don't I don't I don't really follow any of that on almost any case now. And I think that's just from years of doing this. Like inside sources is bullshit. Mm-hmm. 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 So then where uh, because we have a situation where we know more in a case and we purposely haven't put a timeline out because if because we can't because it's not because we actually have more information than the general public and but you're not yeah, putting it out and i think this is the difference no you're not putting it out that was my question so where's it could be completely it, inaccurate it could be completely wrong and your inside source could be completely inaccurate uh-huh. but you're not putting it out and i think you're that's where spreading. that's the yeah. difference for me uh, do I have people who send me information? My my email overflows with information. Oh my I, goodness! There's yes. no way to vet all of it by myself, and there's no way for me to go. Okay, well, your source told you, but now if I go out and just start telling people all of that, that's a problem. Yeah. So yeah. where it's do true. morals and ethics come in? Well. When- I- well, everybody's got a different, different. That's what I was just, them. that's what I was getting. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, I just, I, I came up because I wanted to say that nobody on this panel have I ever thought crossed the line. And I, I haven't seen everybody's everything, but I, I know that it, like, I know that feeling where it's like, was that wrong mm-hmm. kind of thing? And no, in my opinion, none of you should feel this way. Well, I think that's very kind of you. I appreciate that very much. <laughs> um, I I do too. I it, it, I'm just like soaking it in though, but it's like, uh, but I I think more so, not that we have. It's just the fear of doing so, yeah. and also of yes. you know my iron sharpening iron. Like, how should we e- be holding each other accountable? And if so, what are we holding each other accountable for if we're all operating off of our own moral compass and our own set of standards and our own placement of the line? And that's why it becomes confusing. I I don't think that you can dictate. I mean, I don't think anybody Mm -hmm. can dictate that, right? Mm -hmm. And to, to me, there are things I see that are just so grossly over the line that I I don't understand it, right? Like. But I'll to worry about, about getting memberships during the Murdoch trial, don't freaking worry about that. Yeah. That's you're you're discussing a case with people. They they come there to talk about it and discuss it. It's publicly aired. It, it, there's no reason to feel bad about that, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a weird one. I'm trying to figure out why they would have a problem, but I'm again, I'm not surprised. Well, Sleuthy, uh, there's a, quite a few people in the chat that wanted to know what your example was. Oh, yes. well, we're Sorry. talking about misinformation stuff. I was thinking of, um, yeah, long yeah, I was thinking of Keegan Klein's transcript. So that interrogation mm-hmm. that got put, first of all, people are, people are going to listen to others review the transcript and also read it themselves and not be aware of that, what you said about how law enforcement can lie. And they can lie to you in an interrogation to try to get more information from you. Mm -hmm. So one of the particular things that stands out to me for that was 
when they confronted Keegan Klein about saying that he was the last person to speak to Libby, right? Could that be true? Sure, it could. But Keegan was like, I didn't. I could have swore it was somebody else that I talked to. I don't remember talking to her and blah, 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 blah. And I don't know that it was that time. Well, if we're then going forward and saying, well, it was said in that transcript. So it's a fact that Keegan Klein was the last person to talk to Libby. That doesn't really mean that it's an actual fact. It's It still could be misinformation. But then it's read to right. the public, and then the public thinks that it's thinks fact it's true. because the cops say it. Come from law enforcement. The cops, exactly. the cops said it. That's, yeah, the cops said that he was the last one to talk to her. So, so wait, would, so would, immediate, that be, would that be misinformation, disinformation, or would that be more of like, oh, oh I just lost the word. Um, interpretation. Interpretation. Yeah, that, you know, the person reading the document, it was open for their interpretation, and they spread it, at, you know, Shared out well, how they interpreted it instead of just like a flat but out see, lie. I think that's why it's important to review those documents that are publicly available specifically because people do misinterpret, right? It, it, reading something, how many times have, have we gone and went gone over a document or looked at a document or watched somebody go over one and went, oh, okay, that makes sense now. Mm -hmm. I personally don't think that that document had any business in the public. It did literally no. nothing except maybe yeah. get the families excited that somebody was about to be arrested and he wasn't not for this. Yeah. Yeah. If anything, it, it added extra grief because now they have read this horrendous transcript or heard about bits and pieces of it that may or may not even be true. True. So but yeah. Why was that out in the public? I, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go we're going down a whole nother path there oh okay yeah. sorry i don't know it's okay uh -oh. <laughs> it was it was it was leaked to uh, a certain podcast who said that they just happened to get it through the system like through the court document system it was accidentally posted to the court documents which doesn't make sense because n there's never transcripts that are posted to court docs of interrogation like it's an interrogation no. it was an interrogation transcript and they're like oh it just mm -hmm. accidentally got posted there and we accidentally grabbed it and, and then it you know, disappeared. Oh. And then it disappeared from the docket. And then, you know, but we know. still had it, so we still put it out. That's all yeah. yeah, there's that's a whole nother um, you know, Ball of conspiracy yeah. of whether they actually how that actually went down. Well, and, oh, and above and beyond that, they got it, they disseminated it, and then led watermarked it first. The world down a I think <gasps> so did led the world down a path of he's guilty and he's a pedophile, and so is his dad and so is his neighbor and so you know what i mean like it sent everyone in a spiral that like oh wasn't gosh. even relevant really uh, as far as we know right now in terms of their deaths i'm well, telling you dad, dad was never is, actually arrested for anything so it's so yeah. messy over there in that world i i just really observe is. over there it is. It is but let me tell you it's interesting because it these what you're saying that it's so messy over there remember how what a breath of fresh air it was coming from summer's community over there yeah. <laughs> at first it yeah. was it was yeah it was because i had i followed delphi the whole time but i was kind of delphi light but when this stuff happened with the courts with uh, um oh with, the, with Richard Allen, yeah, yeah, all of that stuff. It was like then I want now I'm I, I want to, I'm interested in this part. Like I need to understand this because it was just I mean that's what I can't. I, Gavel geese is because of the trials, court, court documents, criminal law. Like those are the things mm -hmm. that I get excited about, and somehow get have let myself get into a couple of open cases, and they are a mess. Yeah, this a mess, mess. This in particular, I, I think, especially where it gets muddy, is that a lot of the opposition to like what's actually going on is coming from folks with inside sources. Yeah. <laughs> well, so they're it's like, funny I you know say that because <laughs> I just came from another panel where we were talking about some uh, foundational misinformation um, that was put out in 2021 that people still refer to. Um, from a channel that absolutely does not vet anything and says, okay, well, I'm talking Thank to you. a person that you can't know their name. They're, yeah. uh, but I, I promise you they are very close to the case or they are, you know, they know this. And, and then all this misinformation is put out. And 
you know, at least half of the people listening believe it with no proof. It's not vetted at all. We we can't vet it because we don't know who it was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, the struggle with that as an as another YouTube personality is the people who come in to your chats and say, "Did you hear this happened?" or "Do you know that this is true?" or mm-hmm. they start spreading it like it is absolute fact, yep. and yep. you're like, "That's no, it's not true." And now you become. This is actually why I ended up leaving the whole Watts case to begin with was because of this. Because you end up being the person who's now just going in and correcting bad info, and you're yeah, just that, yeah. like a, it's a full time job. It, yeah, it, and I don't is. like that. I don't want. I don't want to spend my life correcting other people's bad info because of things like that. And when I'm like, okay, let me go show you on page 15. Here's the real, you know, here's the real story of how it happened, and here's the right document, and so on and so forth. I don't. It, it's exhausting. Well, I don't want to do that. I've seen that happen to you. Um, in your lives and it, it derails what you're trying to do with the live. Like it mm-hmm. then becomes for some amount of time about this rumor that never should have occurred. Right. That you have to stop and straighten out. Yes. That also happens with, with, so I think that there should, we should be positive that if there is something being read off of Facebook, off of a Reddit, something like that, that it is very clearly stated that it isn't a fact We are just looking. This is what this person said, but there's nothing indicating that this is factual and a certain thing. Please don't go spread because that's what I deal with are people coming in saying, did you hear that? And I'm like, where where did you hear that from? Oh, well, I was over at a creator's and they were looking through the Reddit. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That has not been stated as a fact. Nobody, no. And so I have to do a lot of clearing up of that. And Mm -hmm. I don't think that's, a hard thing to do if people do like I know that um if they're open to hearing the truth though that that becomes the problem is a lot of times people are so adamant that the misinformation that they carry around is correct yeah. and it, beca- it becomes extremely salty when you correct yeah. it and mm-hmm. a, a lot of times it's because it comes from a creator that they trust right mm-hmm. and we just mm-hmm. I, I mean we, we're seeing it right now with um the jlr stuff is that people who trust him and support him are just Mm. you can't go against it no and that's what we saw in that other life i was talking about earlier um Mm -hmm. lft has a great question for the panel how do y'all approach and what do you consider speculation especially when covering active cases can i say one thing on that because i i'm not a creator of true crime but Mm-hmm. I follow a creator and I love, love, love it because they do an hour stream where it's just all speculation, but like it's stated multiple times through that stream. That's their dedicated stream for speculation, theories, conspiracies, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. So it's very clear when you're right then and there that like this is all speculation. None of this being spoken about is facts. I I do enjoy like I go in there and I watch because I want to see what other people are thinking and think outside of the box, you know, so I don't mind that part of it. I mean, they don't get crazy with it or either, but, you know, it's not like, well, never mind. I'm not going to say that on here, but they don't get crazy with it. But I do enjoy that because I like to see what other people are thinking and other people's thoughts when it comes to, you know, what you what are you thinking about what you've seen so far? So Right. And I, I enjoy speculating and even going down, you know, conspiracy rabbit holes. I think that it has to be distinguished, though. I've never done a, a stream like that. I do. I think I would find it, you know, really enjoyable because it kind of, you know, opens your mind up to other possibilities and plausibilities. But mm-hmm. I, I do think you have to be with open cases in particular particular you have to be extremely careful with that mm-hmm. i agree yes yeah. just my opinion. very much yes based on facts and yep there's the well, whole like for for entertainment purposes only mm-mm. lives um that come in and go okay well i've got this secret source now this is for entertainment purposes only but this source they're really close and mm. i'm going to tell you what they told me and then spew out a bunch of stuff oh yeah. no yeah, yeah. And, I think looking at like, say you're looking at a timeline, you're looking at a map, um, you're looking at people's last movements, whoever's missing's last movements, 
uh, who's who was around, what people have said to try to like if you're speculating to um, just gossip, I feel like that's one thing. If you're speculating mm-hmm. to try to gain more information, mm-hmm. to try to right find yeah, someone right. that's different, and I see a lot of people uh, like like Deets, like I know she. I know she lurks, mm-hmm. um, but there's some hesi- <laughs> there's some hesitation because, like Nanya said, she loves sitting in those lives. But even though you make it clear that that's what you're doing, mm-hmm. someone's still gonna someone that's not interested in that is still gonna listen, and yeah. then like berate you for having speculated instead that's of so just true. leaving because you don't want to hear it. Yeah, speculation's okay when you speculate over something like the moon landing or. With with your neighbor Kevin an affair with your sister, but when when you're when you're speculating over <laughs> wait wait wait, 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 wait. That was very specific that was a very specific what example. was in the field with your what? sister what did he say if your neighbor's having an affair with your sister oh so I was like that's a very specific example I think we Sorry. should I think we should explore that a little bit. Sorry, Tony. Let's unpack that. <laughs> Let's unpack that real quick. When you're speculating about something like, um, say, the father of a deceased victim is is the murderer, and you really have nothing to go on, that's when it's distasteful. Um, yeah. Those sorts of things. I mean, it's it's pre- it should be pretty obvious to most people where where it's distasteful, but then- um, it doesn't seem to be. I guess then there's a difference between someone that's alive and can be found and kind of bouncing ideas around and time matters versus like, quote, trying to solve a murder. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if anybody followed when Noah and Amber Claire went, not missing, but missing. They went missing. Yep. Yes. Yeah. I talk about that case all the time. Dude, that was the only time I've ever, I've, who was it? It was um Josh Benson on yep. his space, and I cried. I had like boogers coming out of my nose. I was so it was so good. I cried. I don't even know for how it was so hard because I just I couldn't believe it. But mm-hmm. right prior to that, because we were all talking and speculating and trying to figure Actively out throwing sleuthing, ideas around, like in real started, time. Yeah, yeah. We started calling. Um, we like started pinpointing all the. What are they the called? Camp, the campgrounds the, and stuff. Tolls. Oh, that one like, first. Yep. The campground. Like we were like a we were like a mile away. We're like how far from his broke down car? Because mm-hmm. there's still clothes in there. There's diapers and food in there. So like, they have to be somewhat close. He has to be coming back to the car. Yeah. Um. So all that was speculation. It wasn't. It wasn't factual. But it was se. actually speculation based on a fact. His that's the yeah, fact was his car was in that parking lot. And we're like, you know, if his belongings were there, it has to be close. And so, you know, we're searching every live cam available out there yeah. and, and all of that looking around. Um a lot of us took to social media to get you know, California influencers to share that out. And that yeah. is eventually what led to him being found was because that woman happened to see it on a influencer's Instagram who doesn't even cover true crime, but she shared out the the flyer and she spotted him on the way to school. It's just, but that's, spe- that's speculation based on fact, in my opinion. Yeah, it's different. So like, if you take the, the interview that was done last night, right? Um, none of that information is vetted. I'm not saying it's not true. I don't mm-hmm. know. But it's a, a, a human being and a human being, right? That are to have two different stories. One is a male and one is a female. Why do we have to believe one or the other? Off the Off the bat, right? But none of that is vetted. And it, today... And last night, immediately, there were lives stating those things that were said in that interview as fact. Mm-hmm. Are we talking when about what is, the ex? Yeah. The ex interview? Okay. And by the okay. way, just so you guys know, I, I like Trevor a lot. And I believe that he did this. With great he had intention. a different train yeah. of thought mm-hmm. with this. So I, I, I don't want anybody to think that I think anything negative about him. I just want to say that. <laughs> so 
I would like to hear what, what T thinks about that because you do have a different, I don't want to say different viewpoint, but, but it is, it's a different viewpoint on things. Well, so, I haven't watched it. I okay. listened to it. So I don't have, I don't have an opinion on the, the, the like the content itself. The just, content. Yeah. Yeah. Like an opinion on just having an interview with the ex-wife. Yeah. The ex-wife. And basically it was a, so it's the stepdad's ex-wife and right. they're in the, they are in, currently in the midst of a very lengthy custody battle for their right. biological child. And it was a, so that part of, I know, I just don't know the content yeah. that was actually talked about in the interview. If it, if, so unless there's something particular in the interview that somebody thinks shouldn't have been talked about. Otherwise, I think the interview is fine. That's, I think that's she was really, opinion. she was really raw and emotional. Um, whether it was everyone believed all of the emotion or not, I, I to me, she was raw with what has happened. Um, I, if I guess the question is, is if she had gone on and if, if she had done an interview with Brian Enton or you know, Justin Lum, would anybody care? I mean, we've done, they, these people have I, done- I it. love the creator she did the interview with. It's not about the creator that yeah, she did that's the why interview with. Is it about the fact that she even spoke in general? It's like, you don't, like nobody thinks no, she should have actually spoke? I think mm -hmm. the timing is suspect. I think they um, even moved a hearing that they were supposed to have on the custody case because Sebastian went missing. Mm-hmm. Right. And so this was like an opportunity to jump in. The other side of that story is different. And as she sat there, people are saying that he beat his wife and all this kind of stuff. She never said he ever touched her. Mm -hmm. It was the children, which is horrible if that's true. But we have nothing to say that that's true. Is it in court and docs? I She's in an active no. custody battle. None of, no. well, some of it is in court docs, but none of the stuff, sh there are court docs. I should, let me eh, rewind. There yeah. are. We don't have access docs. to them. Yeah. We don't have full access to them, but we can see some, like we can see what they like filed when it was continued. Motion. Yeah. When the motion was filed, you can't see anything else. So you can, you know, kind of match up some of the timeline based on that. But basically it's a, in my opinion, it's a sloppy, he said, she said, and I don't know. Well, while I have empathy for her, and yeah, my heart goes out to her, her. I don't know how it helps Sebastian. Okay, so yeah. I, and here's my question: Does she stay? And I'm going to listen to it probably, probably mm -hmm. tomorrow. I, you know, <laughs> now you want to hear it? Yeah, we're, we're at my. Listen, no, I wanted to hear it anyway, but we're we're, we're going to be in, in listen with tomorrow, your so real probably, listen with your real ears. Does she? Does and, she and try say not to get or caught. Ins insinuate that she believes that he has something to do with it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So is that, is that an issue for people? I, I think the issue is, is the intentions. Um, in, in my opinion, you can definitely tell that she just wants to be heard. Mm -hmm. She wants her story about her mm -hmm. custody case and her daughter to be heard, which is not wrong. In my opinion, she should absolutely be heard, but to be heard or forced to be heard or welcome to be heard, during a time and the, it does like literally I, I think I'm going to estimate let's say the interview is two hours long there's maybe five to ten minutes out of that that speaks about Sebastian mm -hmm. yeah so it like I think that's where again she should absolutely mm -hmm. be heard I have no problem with her having a voice but taking this this moment right now to speak on it like that's where I think a lot of people are rubbed the wrong way at her interview because it wasn't really about him or what could connect to him it was strictly this is my experience with this person yeah. none of which is you know again it could all be true but not not factually based um, it's just one side of a story and people are absolutely running with it today like it is fact Right. And it, it connects that, because it connects to Chris, it connects to the case, but it actually shouldn't connect to the case. And then they're not, not publicly. Why? Right. The, right. Uh, as long as law enforcement knows that information. 100%. I, I think that's good. Uh, the, the, the prop, there were some issues with the telling with the, with the story and she did nothing wrong. And so I always have, to question things like that when one person is acting like they've done nothing wrong 
Same with Chris. Like I question because he acts like he's done nothing wrong. But it's right? always going to be. It's so I guess my question is, if you, does anybody on the panel, and you guys can just tell me you don't want to answer this question. Does anybody on the panel have suspicions that Chris actually has something to do with Sebastian missing? No, I don't. I, I don't do know. Yeah, I have no idea because I'll I, tell you, I don't follow it. But if I was following it, I would not be forming an opinion just simply because of who he is that he wouldn't have anything to do with it. I, w I would like right. to answer that question. I would say someone from New Zealand answering that question would be absolutely absurd. Well, I, I can't ever <laughs> say that I think somebody did something like that. Well, I mean, I think because I don't have all the information. I can't. It's not fair. To me right. To right. Well, I mean, you can kind of go with how you what which way you're leaning. You can either think that it's a it's a good yeah. possibility, or you think that it's not possible at all. I mean, I think that that's what your your own life experience and what you've heard about the case kind of tells us one way or the other where right. we lean. Now, for me, for me, I truly don't know one way or another. I but I don't think that just because if he's done bad things, bad behavior, been any kind of way with the exes had many divorces. I don't think any of that stuff would make you a murderer or a, a person that would, I don't know, send the, the child to stay with someone and hide or traffic or whatever the possibilities are. I don't think him having bad qualities or making mistakes in his life equal. He's guilty of having done something to Sebastian. Right. So here, saying like he's that he's absolutely guilty. I don't think I don't, we don't know right. that. I don't, there's well, no way right. you have a way that you lean. Like okay, I'm gonna you know. Yeah, we, follow I, him, we kind of look towards you, like this I, is like, the person you, we're thinking sus a little bit. What people have done to this couple? Like, okay, so how, I, that's a great question because somebody asked that in chat horrible. earlier. If these people had nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. and I think Blair, I don't know if he's still here or not, but he actually said like the apologies wouldn't matter. But would people actually feel remorse for calling them out and saying that they did have something to do with it if they didn't? No, I they would say they, they would. would just say, well, he's an abuser. So, well, yeah. well, so my opposite side yeah. of that too is if if they actually end up having something to do with it, mm -hmm. all the people who have fiercely defended them mm -hmm. are, are, that makes are, me are, Ill. are they, like who's gonna who 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 do you apologize to? Is kind of where I'm at. Not you, not you in right. particular. But who do those well, people apologize to? Well, I think that's why we have to be careful with what we're spreading yeah. from either side, either point. Like that's why you know right. we've done the long deep dives into listening to all the interviews and try not to form an opinion and to yeah. stick with what they have said, which is why I don't feel like he's involved. First of all, TBI tells us that they you know they vetted it. They're everybody's locations. He was in Memphis. That doesn't mean, you know, there couldn't be some other conspiratorial thing happening on the side. You know, he was in Memphis, but then you have Seth, the dad who everybody does love and does believe saying just what yesterday, you know, we met with TBI and we're not suspects, but they can't come out and say we're not suspects. And we know how that goes. And it's like, well, if there, and there's a, a slew of other things that lead me to believe that they did that he was not involved but that doesn't mean my opinion like, of it is correct just because i can and, take in all these facts and stuff you and know I, yeah like, and my opinion of it just like with summer's case is i don't know and like so what then, makes a murderer did the like did the, well you, did the interview hurt the case mm, no uh, publicly, no just the, just the public perception of of that man yeah. okay i don't think it hurt the case at all mm -mm. But so I, I, I know Melissa Jade in chat said like it's about like her daughter. Her daughter's a minor, and she made the decision to go and just blast all of her daughters. Right, and I was gonna <laughs> highlight that too because I felt like, oh, what about yeah, what that about stuck out Faye? to me because it but was here's so. The, here's hard. the issue: is that's the I mean, as the mom, is mm -hmm. that her right to do it? I mean, then we kind of run into territories where I mean, there's people out there who talk about family vlogging and all that, like how much right. how far yeah. you yeah. are yeah. talking about your kids. We yeah. got a whole other line when it comes to parenting on social media. I so know, I, I, know. I, I look yeah, at that absolutely. lady. What who, for me, who, I wouldn't do that? that. But yes, yeah. Who is that lady with the with the the kid who I just see? She was a YouTuber, and the kid I Ruby literally Frank. just saw. Like, or Ruby? Who? Why did I say Judy? Ruby. Ruby. Frank. Yeah, all those people yeah. thought she was a great parent. Yep, mm -hmm. at first. Yep. They were literally taking advice from her. Well, so there are, I guess my question is, is how do you, like, one could say, well, maybe they 
and I'm not just saying it for this specific, these people that we're talking about right now, because I'm not following, but let's say they have a history of domestic violence or child abuse in the past. Like, does that mean that, okay, well, they were capable of that, but that doesn't make them a murderer because at the same time, it's like, and first of all, in a missing, in a missing child's case, I, Child abuse, part of the reason I step back, but I assume they're alive. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't automatically. Yeah. And we should, we should Yeah, jump yeah. to like, Oh, they've been gone for 24 hours. Like mm -hmm. I, there was a one little boy, I forget. And he just up and walked away from the babysitter's house and some older man found him like stuck in between like one was in the lawnmower yeah oh my gosh yeah yeah that one and then there was he was uh, in the woods and he was in like oh, thorns and he couldn't Rawlings. get out because it was hurt. jj rawlings it was that's exactly oh, what it was. Yes, i cried on that Something one like I, that one yeah yeah i was just being attacked just prior because i was covering it and they had a live stream up and somebody was coming in they were like attacking me about profiting off of it i'm like i'm not modest I, I make it zero money I'm not profiting off anything. And it like really yeah. started to bother me. So I got emotional about it, muted myself out. And then they said they were doing a press conference on the spot right then, announced it. And I was just hit with emotion because so many people were being so negative. And mm -hmm. it's like, why? There are There is hope. There was another little one recently where the mother was staying out back in a camper. If any of you recall this one. Um, and the little one went missing and they were again questioning the boyfriend or ex boyfriend partnerish of the mother that was supposedly there mm -hmm. and he ended up being found as well and um so there's like multiple of these these little ones that walk anywhere from a half mile to two miles away and are still alive well, so it you're right i i can't stand when people just jump to the automatic or i mean kaylee jones i i can't she there were so many people chalking up so many awful things about her mm -hmm. and she was found alive five months that's actually later. a good example though yeah, i'm glad is. you brought that up because that was actually that was the case where nancy grace blocked me and <laughs> you couldn't remember the other day <laughs> why she blocked. Yeah. yeah well it was because nerdy went to listen nerdy goes wherever he can go and he flies the drone all where are you that it's sunny Look at that kitty. I think he said New Zealand. Oh my gosh. It's like, what are you what are y'all talking about? <laughs> um squirrel. You know, he goes and <laughs> he, he goes and flies the drone. Like we have um and I don't even think we've ever put it out, but we did send it, but like really excellent um drone footage from where summer was swimming before she went missing um it just gives See, a I've... different perspective not everybody can get a drone so mm -hmm. um with kaylee he went several places and the horse the family, place. yeah the family asked him to stop when he flew the drone over their property and then 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 People accuse that they, well, why not? Why wouldn't you want us to help? And I get the, well, the drone over was, summers. It Go was ahead. only one one side, though. Like, she never did reach out to, to him or me or anybody that I'm aware of and say, stop flying the drone. Like, if that were a thing, then it would have been something else. But just going and saying, you know, we've told them to stop and they're harassing us but never having a conversation and she could have messaged me. I would have told him mm -hmm. um, and she was messaging me, uh, but everything kind of turned like super quick. And I don't know, like they didn't have no people back there. Um, the drone wasn't like looking at their house. It was, or looking in their windows. It was to look in that big, big expanse of woods behind the house. Cause we really thought she was, I really thought she was in that deer. There was like a deer stand sort of thing. Um, but like, I, I don't know. It, it just I, got very I twisted. Believed, and it, yeah, I believed what they thought, which was that she had been lured by somebody online, that her playing the games, and they had already seen. 
like that that's what i'm saying like with deets too that it's got to be off of facts with the theories of the speculation because the parents had said how she had been caught on um, uh, using her computer and talking with people and to the point that they had restricted her being able to use it and she was supposed to only be doing her schoolwork on the computer and they at when she ended up the leaving disappearing um they ended up finding that there was a tab that she was pushing that was her talking like where tab. she wasn't supposed to right and then mm -hmm. and yeah. push of a button it showed the screen of her doing her work and so she is extremely intelligent and was tricky and um and so the fact that the parents discussed that to me i fully believed what what they believed which yeah. was that somebody had lured her and but then you also had the mom, the biological mom, who was in contact with her as well and had spoken to her within days of her disappearing, um, who was saying something different. So, like, just because it's coming from family members doesn't necessarily mean that that's the truth. Exactly. Like, could she have been hiding that she was talking to someone? Sure. But from the dynamic that, that was explained... She could have been hiding, talking to the bio mom. But, I'm not know, saying she was. I'm just what, saying. What, she... what exactly made the parents seem sketchy, though, or suspicious? Well, I didn't say. That. I didn't see. I didn't see that. But I know that there was a lot of people saying sh that the, they didn't really believe them, and that their interviews weren't adding up. And I didn't. Well, but I didn't right see off that. the bat, the first people that are always suspects are the parents no matter oh, what like they so Madeline Madeline Madeline. Soto. yeah that's mm -hmm. just statistically how it's gonna go it's always somebody that's close to the family like that's yeah. just yeah. it and so those are the first ones that anybody on social media because we all know statistically they're typically the perpetrator so we're all going to look at everything they've done and anything they possibly could have done to this child before we move on to anything on the outside that that's i don't for me, that's how it always is. Like I'm looking right at the person that's closest to him going, okay, do I, how do I feel about this person? Uh, you know, like my gut, like, how do I feel? And then I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm going to move on to the, you know, these other people, or I'm going to move on to, you know, it's probably a, a stranger, but I mean, that's because I'm going with my own gut on it. But again, it then leads to the, what happened? We should be viewing this, that they're alive, that all of these disappearance are still alive. And people have already brought up what happens when Sebastian comes home and he sees the coverage that's happened or all of the things. So at what, who, who is actually stopping when they're looking at the parents because the parents are the first to be looked at? Where is too far when you're putting out speculation or assumptions that you think that they are responsible in some way at, and that information being shown? Say it again. But they are responsible no matter what. When it comes to anybody, when it comes to a child, the parent is responsible. So whatever happened to Sebastian, whether he ended up wandering off or whether he is with somebody else, whether he is alive or unfortunately not alive, it is still her responsibility. So I mean, to look at it and say that it's not her responsibility, I think is, is kind of, it's kind of naive because I mean, it is her responsibility. She's the parent. If something happens to one of my kids, you don't think that's my fault. I mean, not if like they're out just, you know, I'm not well, saying that I, mean, I can wander out of my house in the middle of the night. Like that's my fault. You're going into some dangerous territory there. That's why I like I have steered clear away from the crumbly case and stuff because I feel like we are seeing um, winds of change with how we will be handled um, in the court with responsibility as parents. And I'm not saying yeah. it's a, a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just saying. Well, it, and again, that's like Teresa's. Right. Trying, I don't mean that. Like I don't mean that she again. killed him or didn't care. No, I know what you're like, saying. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to be misconstrued. But I'm just saying. Ultimately, I think that that's the first thing that we will look at because it, we're it, responsible it, for our children. We're responsible for those little people. Mm -hmm. A 15 like, year old, like my 15 year old that's in the house right now, something happens to him. It's my. I'm responsible for him. Mm -hmm. It's kind of my job I signed on for. Mm -hmm. so, so, for instance, my my six year old the other day, come randomly came to me in the living room and said, mommy, how do I open my bedroom window? And I said, you don't need to know how to open it. What do you need to know how to open your bedroom window for? And he said, if there's a fire, okay. So now he hit me with something reasonable. So I'm like, 
I don't, I don't, I really don't know. I'm going to have to, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out and then I'll let you know. Cause at that moment I did not want to show him how to open a window and I get that he needs to know. But I, I basically said to him, like, the house is small enough, dude. If there's, if there's some reason, if there's a fire and we need to get out, like I'm coming for you, I'll get us out the window. Um, but now I know that he's curious. So now I feel like it's my responsibility to take some type of measures to make sure that he doesn't try to get out the window. Open in the window. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's just how I said that, like, I have a line, like that's, that's my line. And and, and as for Kaylee Jones's parents, you know, that got again, turned into something else than what it was flying a drone over the woods to see if when police and dogs and four wheelers are not running through the woods, that maybe there might be some type of, now I feel safe to like come out if I, if that's what I'm doing. Um, because I think no one's watching me in terms of her, not them. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think that that's blaming them or saying that they're sketchy. It's that kids are, kids can be that way. And she was a teenager. Right. Yeah. So, you know, flying, flying a drone over the woods where you can get a bird's eye view of everything. And, and just in the, in the case that maybe she'll feel safe to pop her head out if that's the case. And she's out there somewhere. Uh, I think is, I don't, I personally don't see anything wrong with it, but then when they felt some type of way, because again, I think it's normal for their emotions to be all over the place to then go and tell others that it was something that it wasn't is what caused a huge, well, they're saying that we're responsible and we did something and it wasn't like, that was like, I didn't even say that. You know what I mean? But if you tell other people that I said that, they think that you're telling the truth. And that right, that might be what you feel. Like you might really think that's the truth as as someone whose emotions are all over the place. But I personally, I saw um, Tragedy Pimps said, I wish families would just stay like off of YouTube and out of the media. And I think it's unreasonable for me to tell them to because like I'm nobody if they could do whatever they want but I also wish that they would do that I wish that they would talk to actual not trying to take away from anybody um advocates that are on social media but I wish they would speak to advocates like their local advocates like through Mm -hmm. the police department talk to them instead of confiding in well how many times have we heard um that they have turned down even speaking with the advocate. And and that blows my mind a little bit because it's like, you are entering into a territory that like, I, 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 you know, delve into that territory and even I can't comprehend some of the stuff that happens. You need to speak with your advocate and be informed. My question is, and there's no way for any of us to know this are the advocates that are um, available to them. Are they even aware of, what social media like the double-edged sword that is social media and what it can and can't you know how it could harm your missing loved one's case most aren't i i think and i think that they just are thinking there's this community of support that wants to support me and i get that i get Mm -hmm. wanting to get outside of the people that are directly around you um and and looking for support outwardly uh but at the same time, like, like me personally, and I, I'm not like an advocate for like my advocacy sits with whoever the person is that's missing, that, that isn't found and, and has no voice at all. That's who I'm concerned about in that moment. And some people don't like that. Um, a lot of people don't like that. But in that role that I have for myself in a line that I don't cross, one example would be if, 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 I'm, if I'm going to talk to a family member and they give me information, I'm also not going to assume that police know that information. And so I'm not involving to myself in in. case to get the info. I, if yeah. I'm getting the info, I'm giving it to the police. I think that's very important. 
because you might tell me something totally different than what you told them. Maybe not even on purpose. Maybe, maybe what you told me is right. And what you told them was, you know, you were startled and you didn't know it was happening. And so now they're better able to help you. You know what I mean? Cause I've given them the information you gave me. Maybe something they weren't aware of. Yeah. I agree. So here's Nanya's question. Um, what about parents like Kylie Rodney who asked social media to stop to keep going? Is that crossing the line or is it okay? What are your guys' thoughts on that? I think it should be respected, but others have said like, you know, what if they're the ones that are responsible? Why would you, you know, go ahead. It's hard to tell all of social media to stop. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's also hard to to take one case and try to make it the same as all the others. I think that's also very different. Like, so for like Kylie Rodney, like for me, the, when the case was finished, you know, and and she's found, and I mean, they even essentially release like the autopsy and what happens to her. I, I think the story is done. But like I said, there's a story to be told with missing people, and that's where I, that's that's my personality so i would stop at that point i don't feel like it needs to continue i would honestly i would not stop because kylie rodney's mom told me to stop i i would not stop because anybody's family tells me to stop i don't that, that's not my that's not my line my my line is when the story is done the story is done well i think unsupervised maniacs kind of you know, hit it there with her mom asking that we should respect it. I could see where she's like, you know, respecting the case and not digging in further into conspiracies or misinformation or spreading. I'm oh like, gosh, like what uh, Upchurch just put out. Now he's back to her saying she's not dead and, or she's not real. It's all a cover up, blah, blah, blah. I understand that. But to continue to talk about her case in general and, when it was active, even though like now it's closed, but say when it was active and I don't see where that was an issue. I think she was more so speaking to those that were flat out lying about it, you know? Well, I, yeah. And I think that's why I'm like, that's why I, I didn't mm -hmm. go that far into it. But Kylie Rodney's case became a very different um, being mm -hmm. on social media than most other cases do. I mean, there was this whole, like she wasn't real and that yeah. none of this ever happened. And he was, was just crazy. saying that like two days ago. I know. Like, it's I, insane. Like, I'm like, I, don't know. I was like, wait a minute, is this old? Like what? He's still on this. And he connected <laughs> it could melt to P Diddy I to saw Kylie yeah, Rod. Saw. Like, what yeah. the and I like, it, like no. come on. And that's where that's where I feel like she was speaking to those individuals specifically, like stop but the whole reason i i felt like this and i and i've been thinking about this is watching that alex jones documentary uh, from the parents with the parents at sandy hook it's brand new on max and hearing how they felt with him saying these things like the you know saying that one parent didn't hug his child like Alex Jones was so adamant that he didn't hug his child. Another parent tells a story where someone, a complete stranger walked up to him in a city on the other side of the country and told him his child was fake and it was a false flag and all of that. Like his baby, his six year old baby that he had to bury. You've got a complete stranger walking up to you to your face and telling you your child wasn't real. That was a hoax. Like that's how far spread that conspiracy and that misinformation went and to attack those parents over and over and over again. Are we seeing that now with YouTube, TikTok, Facebook on smaller levels and it's just building and building and building. I think sometimes people don't understand that the sleuthing that's completely fine, but maybe like, you know, do it in private. And only put forth what you've been able to sh to prove yes. along with your speculation. You know, if you want to say speculate, this is speculation or based off of this, I feel like this. That's fine, too. But people do it real time. See, and uh, that's like, where I'm on the same. On a, I think I think I'm with you on that. But I, I go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go, go ahead. 
And I was going to say, I think that's where the, the we come into those three levels. And it, to me, it sounds like you're with me on that level. Um, but I know that T has talked about, like, she enjoys that part of it. She likes that. And that's why I said, I think there, it's can run a risk. But I guess it's up to the creator or the person putting out the information if they, they even think it is a risk or if it's worth and okay with with putting it out because it's a low percentage maybe that one person listening might be a little a little off the rocker and decide to take things really into the public or go to the families or what have you but um yeah i, 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 I think guess maybe i'm sorry no i didn't mean to interrupt you i i, I just wanted to, like as as far as t is concerned i haven't i've seen her come with whatever she wants to go over and it be you know stuff that she's she's vetted or court documents so maybe i'm missing something i'm not like talking bad, trying to talk bad about anybody but I, I i've seen that and then i've seen people interrupt her for whatever and then they go look and and that's a different right they'll say oh did you hear about this and she'll be like no i haven't heard about that and then she'll go look so maybe i'm misunderstanding i, I don't I, I just, the stuff that I've seen this past week is it, it, sick. Absolutely sick. And there's no, I mean, they have convicted this guy in Sebastian's because they have absolutely convicted him. And you can hear him say something, and you can hear Seth, the biological father, say the exact same thing. They jump all over the stepdad. And say nothing about the dad when neither thing was a problem. Is the stepdad the one that went and talked that Nancy Grace, he was with the mom and Nancy Grace they, talked to them? He, yeah, that was that's the stepdad. Mm -hmm. now, the, so I think that probably didn't Nancy help Grace. folks. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Mm -hmm. we, we were going in order, so I haven't seen that yet. Oh, that's but, the only like, thing I've seen. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> well, where we are, my arch nemesis, now, Nancy. But you understand the <laughs> questions that she asked him when she said his daughter's name on there, you could see his face and he didn't want to be like combative because he's caught all of this crap all this time on YouTube and you can see it in his face. He did not want to talk about that, but if he doesn't, then that's a problem too. So the questions that she asked him directly correlated to his answers Right. But, but I haven't, I, I mean, I haven't seen that mm -hmm. one yet. I say she, so I don't know, but it, up until that point, that's been the case. And I know that she said his daughter's name. Cause I was like, what the, <laughs> why would you do that? That's a child. Nobody protects what's, the, the what's, children. That, uh -uh. What's the stepdad's last name? But it's something proud proud foot proud, proud foot. foot yeah when mm -hmm. she you got to watch it cuz she she asked something about her him spanking Sebastian at some point and mm -hmm. the mom I don't even know her name but she um Katie. she started to answer and <laughs> Nancy said, Mr. Proudfoot Mr. Proudfoot Mr. Proudfoot over and over again cuz she wanted him to answer and I just thought it almost seems like many people are uh okay with the way that that interview went but had it been an interview that was had on youtube all hell would break loose for the way that they were spoken to mm. so yeah. again like where's the line and does it matter it's, if if it's you doing it deets or it's a reporter yeah, it that's doing him. it or you know what i mean is it yeah the, I, is it the action or no, is it because the I, I, i'm not a it? nancy grace fan at all she's not a fan and, of and, and it's because of stuff like that I, mm -hmm. i've watched other I, there's no like um interviews or reporters that i'm actually really big fans of necessarily that i, I like to watch yeah. them interview I, I, it always feels lacking it always feels staged to me um even when they're like interviewing someone famous it's like the, those questions are already vetted why do i even care so i, you know, I those so, oh i thought you were done no, jenny go ahead 
I was just going to say that the question in earlier in chat, like, were there, are there any cases that YouTubers help solve? And I don't know about YouTubers specifically. Um, there is the case of uh, Mostly Harmless. That was the hiker that was helped found by a Facebook group. I think of Noah's Claire, Noah Claire's case as social media, Twitter people helped, helped, found, you know, find that little boy. Right. Uh, and then people always turn to, uh, Luca, but I can never say his last name right, but the don't fuck with cats case. And unsupervised maniac said the sleuths and don't f with cats are amazing. And they kept it just in their group and contacted law enforcement. It was done the right way, in my opinion. However, yeah, but somebody killed themselves. There's that's what I'm getting to. Uh, Bowdy, she's she's around, she's on social media, she's been in here a few times. Like, she will tell you we did a lot wrong in that case. That was an amazing a show. A lot of people were hurt. And so I, haven't seen it. I think that that's kind of why, you know, some people can interpret it as that's the way to do it, where she herself will tell you, you know, there's regrets from all involved. And so it's back to being things being open to interpretation, right? Even though yeah. they had a good outcome. Yep. It, I mean, it, I, I don't know about how many others, but I, do, I mm -hmm. mean, I, I personally do know of one um, directly because like within the hour of hanging up the phone, see, because so let's just say, for instance, that someone takes someone or like a teenager willingly goes with someone and then decides, holy shit, this was a bad idea. Um, unless, unless the police have some type of proof, they could suspect that they're somewhere. Um, <clears throat> but let's say they're being, they're being held somewhere like against their will and the police can't put eyes on them. If they can't put eyes on them and they don't have any proof of life, like they can't just go busting down doors to get these kids. Okay. But if you can get them proof of life, then they can. And so I've seen, I have seen it directly happen, like within the hour of them, of hanging up the phone with U.S. Marshals and them saying, now we have like a reason to go in without the homeowner being there. And, and then like they went in and got her. So, so yeah, like sometimes I'm not saying they solve murder cases, um, but missing people cases. Yeah. 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 It's possible. I'm trying I was trying to think of some more. There's got to be more, but maybe maybe there truly isn't. I know everybody points to Gabby Petito, but I don't think that social media solved Gabby Petito's well, case at all. Gray helped. Gray hey, helped Gray. solve. Yeah. I think exposure, like the ex yeah. like the exposure helps visibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think that I think with Gabby Petito's, I mean, they did help find her. Yes. That well, they her, video, find her video was the location of that, you know, of where she was found. That was yeah, YouTube, it was YouTube, YouTube true crime's greatest moment. It, it wasn't true. They're not even true creators, crime. They're, though, right? They were vloggers. <laughs> they just yeah. happened to be yep. happened to be going through there. And so yeah. they look through, yeah, like they did what law enforcement was asking them to do. Anybody in that area, could you check your cameras and check your stuff? And they happened to catch it there. So they helped. They did. But I watched a thing that they had, like a podcast that they had put out afterwards where they talked about how um, law enforcement were closing in on that area anyway. But they, they helped them get to the goal faster, for sure. Yeah. Well, um, with the uh, Raleigh Strain case, there were um, TikTokers out there that found his credit card. Right? That may yeah. have helped. We don't know if it did or not. Yeah, Riley Lively. The specifics. But, huh? Riley Lively. Oh, that was the, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. I was like, Raleigh Strain. No, mm -hmm. you're talking about the TikToker. I'm sorry. The TikToker, yeah. But, I, I mean, I think that, that there are cases where, where, the, the YouTubers or, or us, the public, we don't even know that something might have helped. Yeah. So there's that too. I mean, the law enforcement knows so much more <laughs> than we do. 
<laughs> and uh, the 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 idea that people can say someone is guilty or or, or say like oh where is Sebastian I've seen that a lot right which is an an accusation um, when they're saying it directly to the person right like where are they where are they um, that's not helpful in any way and I think they feel like they're putting pressure on the person that probably did it but that it's not your job. You're right. Um, sometimes, though, also, and I can't, I certainly can't speak for everybody. Um, but like how we were talking earlier about the interrogation and stuff and like how police can lie to you in order to get more information. <clears throat> like sometimes um, there's been times where Law enforcement has directed for certain things to be said in order to get more information, if that makes any sense at all, without me really like, like sometimes that is directed by people looking for additional information. Oh my God. It is weird. People in the chat didn't like that the TikTokers <clears throat> were credited with finding the card for some reason. Oh, hi. I don't know. They're not true crime. It's not a true crime win. We're, we're not saying it's a win or mm. anything for anybody. We're saying we don't know if that helped them mm -hmm. find it. They they found something of his that had been overlooked or had not been seen or they weren't right. searching in, in that same place. We have, we so have we're no just saying clue. that, yeah. yeah, it was his. So it, it's positive. What's not what was said? You said two things were wrong. It wasn't Riley that found I it. it. I, th I, I know it was Riley and some other person she was with on TikTok. I don't know the other person's name, so that's why I stated hers. Yeah. That's okay it if it wasn't her. Yeah, I don't understand. Hmm. Okay. Can you pull up a good Nanya's question? Yes, I can. Where is the good Nanya? Page? No, no, she hopped down. Where's your question? I missed it. Why am I not seeing it? I think my like chat messed up. Because it like froze for a second and then it jumped really quick. So, well, I'll, I'll read it then. This so, one. There we go. That one. You got it. Since yep. there is some helping that happened, you know, some help, since there is some that help and it happens, is harming just lay for the course? Um, so for, for me, mm. I, 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 I firmly believe that the more people who watch, even by quote unquote hate watching or anything along those lines, it, it gives them the fuel to continue to do what they do. And I, so I don't, I just, my personal opinion, I just don't watch. I won't give them the view then. So I, I, and I know that I'm only one person, but I'm the only one that I can mm -hmm. stop from watching it. So I, I do think that there's so much that harms true crime cases, but I mean, that's, I, I can't control what anybody else does. And that's why I said, I think that they're like the comedy analogy that I tried to use earlier. When those jokes are what bring people in, that's what the comedians use. And when these guys are out there and we watch them, you know, out there screaming at people or whatever, then that's, that's what they continue to do because they're like, look, I got, you know, I made, you know, $500 on this video versus, you know, the $30 I made on that video. I'm going to go out and start screaming at people more because that's what people want to see. And that's what brings me the money. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. They're going to keep giving their audience what their audience wants. Right. Right. And I'll tell you guys, if you guys aren't aware, if you want to watch something and not give them the views, turn on incognito. <laughs> I think that's so, I don't know. I've heard that still gives them the view, but I'm not sure if it does or not. Oh, I was under the impression it didn't. But like it I said, I, just, yeah. I, yeah, I don't, I just won't watch it then. I think mm -hmm. that with Quentin Simon was probably where I was like, I'm, I'm hurting because I'm watching this. Like I'm, I, I'm not helping to stop this from happening, I'm hurting it because I'm continuing to watch it. Well, I think that there are some things you can do that you can avoid a lot of, of, of content if, if you don't want to and, you know, ingest it. But there's some things like if you're 
if you want to dig in on the case and like see the interviews and stuff, they, they seem to happen on a lot of those panels. So you still have to watch that if, if, you, if you're all about watching the interviews and that sort of thing. But I think just the conversation and the speculation, I agree with you. You can just completely avoid it. Do I think calling it out is counterproductive? Mm -hmm. um, my, my honest opinion on that is I think calling out anything that is like that is counterproductive because what happens is that people want to um, go see what I'm talking about. They mm -hmm. want to know like, okay, I'll go make my, I'll go make my opinion. So like, for instance, like I have a group of people who love to harass the shit out of me online. Mm -hmm. I won't talk about them. I don't go and give them any names. I don't say anything about them because then people are going to want to know who they are and why they're talking and what are they saying? Yeah. I won't give them the time of day. That's a hard lesson to learn though. Honestly, it really is. I'm going to um, hop down. Um, thank you guys. I'm sorry. Thank I just wanted you. to originally make sure you guys knew that I, mean, I don't consider you what the problem. So. Oh, Jenny, thank you so much. Gavel geeks. I appreciate we that. Love you. Gavel. <laughs> love, love. <laughs> Bye. Have a good night. Have a good Easter. You too. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Hun. Bye. I, I, I get what you're saying that, you know, sometimes, I don't know. I feel like, uh, can, Nanya wants to do another dang poll. Look at her. She's so bossy. That <laughs> Nanya. I tell you what, just calling it out, bring more views to them or less. I think it brings more. That's just my opinion, but I will definitely, um, do that. Let me find my own dang. I think people also here. really like the back and forth. They I like to see what the person's response is going to be to whatever you said. So then they go and they go and watch what that person's going to say. Yeah, and, and they said right up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just mm -hmm. don't. Yeah, I don't. I, that's my opinion. What was her question now? I already forgot. You wanted, she wanted a poll. There it is. Does calling it out bring more views to them? I'm just going to put, I got to do more views. Mm -hmm. so then but then so here's the flip side of that so then what everybody just stays silent and it continues to get worse and worse or that's a great question that's a great question because i mean, how do you how do you reach the viewers that are engaging in that how do you how do you who tells the story of the other of the other side then who do you how do you yeah how do you fix it? How do you stop people from, from listening to it? How do you stop people from giving them the views? Especially when I, if, if so many people, you were talking about like the lines earlier, if all those people don't have a line mm -hmm. and they don't care, and this is what they want to watch, then the, the smaller parts aren't going to stop it from happening. Well, and I don't think that I've never been of the opinion that, you know, calling it out could stop the views from happening or stop the spread of the misinformation or whatnot from happening. But I feel like if some people learn the truth, then it's worth it. Because even if just, you know, 10% of those that hear the lies and the misinformation, then hear the truth, I, I think that's worth it. Yeah, I, I I like the debunking part of it, I suppose. True. And it's black and white, it's not probably to the debunk something. Of yeah, you know, and it makes it something, I think, serious issues. But see, Sarah Fender, like you were saying earlier, who determines what the serious issues are? I think the, the Idaho 4 thing is for some reason has such a it's just such a, there's such as, you know, the, you got the pretty girls and all that sort of stuff and the pretty mm -hmm. boy and all that sort of stuff. And it's so people just get so drawn into it. They want to hear about it every day. And even if they're being lied to, they still want to hear about it. And, and what Shady's saying here is true. I still, under my JLR video, that's, oh, I might be over a year old now. I get comments every week 
um, more so this week than in the past. But even prior to this week, every week I get at least two or three comments stating like, oh my gosh, and, and saying that very thing. So I, I, I do think that it, it, it does help in some situation. I don't know if that helps though, because obviously he's still growing, but at least some people have heard the truth, I suppose. JLR's record should be enough. If any decent person looked into it, they should look at anything he reports on with, with uh, disdain. And, you know, when he goes and hides in people's bushes and takes mm -hmm. photographs of, 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 a, of a survivor of a, of a quadruple unaliving, and then, you know, says and, and takes photographs of the sister and calls it the girl and stuff like that. I mean, it's just it's disgusting. But mm -hmm. some people are very hungry for that. Since Jerry Springer passed away, there's a great hunger for YouTube true crime on, on YouTube. Yeah. In a bad way. Sleuthy, I don't think it does. I don't think it stops them from gaining followers at all. Um, at so all. I guess maybe there's a difference between bringing awareness to it and then engaging in the fight. That's true. That's true. Because we don't because have to do that. Like back and forth, like, oh, this person did this live, and so now mm -hmm. I did this live, and this person did this live, so now mm -hmm. I'm going to go do this live. Right. I guess. Yeah. I agree with that. Because, I mean, I, I still talk with people that I've debunked before. I mean, there's a couple, obviously, that don't care for me. But I, I you know, just because I debunk something doesn't mean I that, that we hate each other, that we're in a battle. It's just debunking facts. So... But I do think I agree with what you're saying, the back and forth. It, it gets to the point where you become the thing that you hate, right? The thing you're calling out, so to speak. Well, what, what happens, it, it becomes almost addictive. And mm -hmm. some, some of these people's cases, it's addictive financially. So if they're, if they're creating a certain, certain amount of revenue every month, Telling lies about the victims or the victims' families of the Idaho Four massacre or whatever, whatever, ever th other thing you're onto, it's it's addictive. They got to pay their bills. They have to come up with different crazy ideas to feed all their crazy subscribers every month, and and that's where it's a, it's sort of like an illness or an addiction. Mm -hmm. But um, to them, it it's either it's either being on camera, or it's just the money they're taking. It's one of the two because. What they're doing is completely morally wrong, and their behavior is something you'd see from a drug addict or, or someone like that who's, whose morals are gone. They just want to they just want to get clicks, views, um, or make the money. In yeah. my opinion. Well, and I, I think that like like Gavel said here, another issue with debunking is people then accuse you of defending something when it's not. It's just looking at the facts, and I I agree with that. Um. I think if it's just solely about calling them out, that's why, you know, if you're a channel that just covers one person and you're constantly calling that out over and over and over, like that's the bulk of your content. I'm not talking about, you know, a few days in a row, but like the bulk of your content, then yeah, you're just engaged in a back and forth with that person. See, for me, I've always felt like watching your channel, it's about trying to get to the the truth of the matter, trying to get down to the heart of what actually is really going on. I've never felt like it was a, let's just blast this person and just talk <laughs> shit about them. I've never felt that way. I've always, it's always been like, okay, like there's this part of it. And then there's this part of it. And now if mm -hmm. we dig in here and dig in there, we end up, you know, kind of uncovering the truth. I've, I've, I've I guess it would be in that whole line of calling it out versus contributing to it. Right. And I, that's what I've tried to do. But obviously, I know that obviously there are people that don't feel, you know, that feel that it is called, you know, right. Just the back that's and a, forth. That's but the that's their line. Is. Everybody's line is different on what they think is okay. Yeah. And so like, you're, you're at a place where you're, you, you meet my line. Now there's mm -hmm. other channels that just, you know, they do, they engage in that fight and it's just a constant battle mm -hmm. between the two. And, I mean, back in the day, yeah, I mean, I was, I watched that kind of stuff. So I watch, you watch this person go live and then they talk all this shit. And then mm -hmm. you watch this person go live and they talk all this shit. And you're like, Ooh, what's that person going to say? And it is, it's like a Jerry Springer, like Tony's saying, like it does, it becomes, you want to just see the outcome of it. Um, it's like reality television, you know? 
But it's never ending. It is never ending. How do you get off that right. ride? That's the question. How do you get off that ride? You I've just... been on a couple of those rides. I just got bored. Like <laughs> that's pretty much how. That's pretty much what happens. Is you just get bored with it. That's right. Yeah, it's the mm -hmm. same. Like these people, they wake up in the morning, think how they're gonna d disparage the other person from the day, day before. So they end up doing a reaction channel to the other person reacting to them. I don't know how many layers deep it goes sometimes, but it's just bagging the other person's clip about bagging them. And it's like, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And they call themselves true crime creators. Mm -hmm. Unsupervised nailed it again, but that's drama. That's different. And the back and forth, that's not debunking or awareness. It's very, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that completely. See, but having these types of conversations that like I, now I understand those different like categories of things. So we get to the bottom of it. We Which is why I love having these conversations. And I honestly, when I, the freaking thumbnail and title don't even reflect what the conversation ended up being. I didn't even know we were, we were going to end up here. And I love it when we start to ha talk like this. And I know we don't all have to agree on it. And that's the thing. It's an open conversation to hear all sides of things. I truly appreciate it. Because I've I've definitely learned some things about myself tonight. So you focus on the gross stuff that others do. You get you will get discouraged. Oh yeah, absolutely. Do it the way you want to see it done. That's a very good point. That's a very very good point. I had a question that just totally flew out of my head though. Two and a half. But that's, I think, Evil Queen, that's the part that breaks my heart is that Rhea, I know a lot of people hate the word trauma, but it it is so uh, adequate, in my opinion, mixing, you know, the, the drama that is surrounding these true crime cases and wanting to talk about them is something separate from just discussing true crime. But um, one of the things that bugs me is it does turn into reality tv type of description and i hate that for the for the victims and their families i absolutely hate it but it is a very adequate adequate description i think that's that's like the summer wells community yeah. in its entirety almost at this point do you think though um and t and burden and tony maybe even you do you think all communities on youtube become that like they end up imploding. No, is there is there one that doesn't, or is it just the longer cases that end up implode? Like, what do you think it is? I think it's. I think it has to do with a lot of secrecy. I think that people become emotionally invested in cases when it comes to missing loved ones. I think that people, the victims' families, are asking for help, or law enforcement does these you know, press conferences where they're asking the public for help and everybody thinks, okay, like this, I can contribute, I can do this and that be my part. And now we're invested. And so when, mm -hmm. when the information stops flowing, we're already invested. You can't just be like, sorry, we're not going to give you any more information. Then expect everybody to just stop talking about it. People are, we're, we're in it now. So now we, we want a resolution and we can't let it go until there is one. So I think that that's a, I think that's part of it. I think that law enforcement asking communities or asking the public for help creates this atmosphere, this, this atmosphere. And then the longer that they don't give information, expect like, so Summer Wells, we'll go back to that. For example, the beginning of this, they're doing press conferences, asking the public for help, posting you know, but we want to put our flyer out there. The family comes out They're you know, saying that they want help. And then all of a sudden law enforcement just stops. There's nothing else there. So then it turns into people finding their own sources or creating their own sources. <laughs> Don't let those knitters fool you. I actually, you want to know what's so funny about that is tonight I didn't have a, a topic when I came on here. I have a freaking knitting drama live pulled up that I was going to share with people, but we, we ended up going down this avenue. So I think that's hilarious that that's what you. 
Well, there was a, if you get, I don't know if you guys remember, there's a channel that covered the Watts case pretty, pretty intensely almost every day. And they did arts and crafts while they were covering. There was like true crime and crafts. No. Oh gosh. Yes. Oh gosh. I mean, yes. And it was drama. It was lots and lots of drama. I need to know this channel. You don't have to say it out loud, but like, I just I'm need sure to somebody know. Somebody in chat will know exactly who I'm talking about. That's but yeah, they would do arts and crafts and talk about the case and how everybody else was wrong and how they were right. And so it was a mix of the two. You get a little crafting and some true crime. Oh my gosh, that's too funny. I have a question just to backtrack a little bit. The, um, like the law enforcement asking for help and then uh, eventually they stop giving information and they get sealed. It's quiet. No, no word. At what point does that then cross over into like, uh, like a form of entitlement Rather than just letting them do their jobs behind closed doors, maybe there's a reason that they don't want any other information being released. Because, again, they don't tell the public because they're like, oh, we know you guys are really curious about this. Let us tell you some info. They do it for two, one of two reasons. Either one, to warn the public, give a heads up. There's someone dangerous out there. Keep an eye out for them. Or this community may, you know, stay in lockdown, etc. And then the other is a tool that them giving information to the media, to the public is only for a tool for them. So hopefully somebody gives tips that gives them answers for them to continue with their investigation. And so that's it. So if they've asked for help where's, and then where's the update when, when they, whenever they end up making an arrest or finding the individual or, or whatever the, the case happens to be, Okay, that would be so the update. Go back to like Summer Wells. Mm -hmm. They they ask for help. They get their tips, and then they tell nobody anything, and the case isn't solved. So because I'm still active, though. Is it? That's, yeah, it's still active, and I think that that's think the that problem. Out there actively looking for Summer Wells. I do. I mean, they, I, I, I'm not like actively searching, but I think that they're still actively sipping, sifting through their. T well, I know they're actively. Uh, working on their tips and stuff. But my, my, I think the issue comes is I wish they would give an update. Like it was so disheartening to see them not give an update on when she, you know, on June 15th of 23 and, and like nothing it's when you create this huge vacuum of nothingness, people will fill it. And I think that is the problem. People will fill it with whatever they want to fill it with. And yeah, I think that there needs to be once you reach out to the public and you include them, I think that yep. you have to give them updates. Mm -hmm. I think once otherwise you end up with what you're going to get, not to mention mm -hmm. how many tips do you think get turned in because of the crazy social media so many. dramatics that would have been stopped had they come out and said, Hey, you know, this is, this is done. Like we know, Okay, so Idaho 4, I have my issues with some of that stuff too, but Idaho 4, they had a working list of we've cleared this person, we've cleared this person, this person has been cleared, this person has been cleared as they did it. They didn't have to do like a press conference every single time, but they they were consistently putting out like this person is cleared. Did that stop everybody in the world from speculating no. about them? Absolutely not. But what it did was cut down on those people becoming, you know, primary social media suspects where now everything they do in the world is tipped in. Um, you know, let's take the, you know, hoodie guy from the food truck and people were talking about who he was and, you know, how he'd gone to Africa and so on and so forth. You know what I mean? Like it was, it, it how many people tipped that in? So how much more work does law enforcement give themselves in these quote unquote tips because they refuse to give any type of update of, Hey, this is where we're at. This is, they don't have to give us all the details. I don't expect to get all, and I don't, and I no. don't mean we, we should get all the details, but updates on where they're at in the investigation, what they've done so far, mm -hmm. how many people are still working on the case, how many hours a week are being invested in the case, anything to Something. put like, yeah, because like, as of right now, in my opinion, I think that there's one guy who probably works on the Summer Wells case, maybe a couple hours a week, if even mm -hmm. there's not a team of people. No, I don't think I, could be wrong. I I do think it's still active though, but I I am curious in my I think that a lot of the activity that continues in Summer's case is like you said, because of these bogus tips from, you know, social media, from 
psychics, things like that, that continue. And I don't know if that's good or bad, if it keeps it still going, but I, I do think it is still ongoing. Was mommy, was mommy ramblings the, the yeah. who you were talking? Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> Sorry. And serial offender has a good point too. If it's in your community, I mean, we could talk mm -hmm. like the Delphi case, for example. That community had a random ass person that mm -hmm. went and killed two of their, their their children, and they had to live like that for five and a half years with no updates. Yeah, with nothing. no. This is what we're doing. You know, this whole we've gone back to the beginning. We've gone back to the beginning. And then all of a sudden we find out the person that they arrest was actually somebody who came forward within the first couple of days of the investigation. I mean, it, people, I, for me, like if that was my law enforcement, agent, you lose faith in them. So I, 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 th I just think that once you're out there and you're asking the public to be involved, you've got to keep them clued in until the case is solved. You don't and have to on everything, but I, I think that you got to give them something. You got to well, give them something and say, this is where we're at. This is what we've done. And I mean, I would love an update on Summer Wells' case. And I and I agree with you update. wholeheartedly. I think that we are seeing some law enforcement agencies handle it that way. Um, I know I was speaking in private with I don't remember if it was Nanny or someone else, but about like my son just you know got his master or son-in-law got his master's a couple of years ago in, in uh, criminal justice, and one of the courses that he went through was on. Um, social media awareness. And I, I can't remember the title of it, but how to engage currently. And it's something that they're implementing in some places where, you know, uh, not just the, the officer that speaks out, whatever, I can't remember what his name is, but, but several of them have to, you know, recertify with this, these classes and updates throughout, because it is a very quickly fast paced changing environment with social media. And most uh, departments are not up to date on that. They don't know how to handle the onslaught of, of social media. If they get a case that goes viral, they don't know what to do with it. So I do think that there are some things changing, but I agree with you that when you open it up to the public like that, or it becomes a viral case and they give absolutely nothing, it creates, like I said, that, that huge empty void that people then fill with whatever. But then on the flip side of that, you I'm not, I wasn't part of Watts Island or know how that all went down on online, but then look, he was like arrested almost immediately. And yet it still went hay haywire online. So that's because of the mistress. And then I guess I would ask, where's the line? Like, is it only the ones that get really big? What's considered really big? Because if, if they're giving updates on every single miss, we'll just go with missing, not even crimes, um, but just missing cases. If they were to give an update on every missing case, I mean, there's currently over 700, 750,000 missing active right now that are missing. And at the end of the flyer, it always says, if you have information, um, please contact us. So they're they're asking for the public's help. So what cases don't the get public. updates and what, what do? What public are they asking? Mm -hmm. What Because I mean, if I go on a local news station and I ask for help, then I then I... Yeah, I'm going to say that they still need to provide updates and they don't, it doesn't need to be every day or anything crazy. No. But I mean, just I, I, I think timeline is going to be open for interpretation, but there's got to be something. We're talking years and we've heard nothing no. on, you know, on certain cases. And I think that's problematic, um, even if it is the anniversary of the person missing or something like that. If you start with, I'm, you know, I go to my local news station and this is who I'm asking to help get to get tips. Yeah. I owe my local community an update on what I'm doing. If I go public and I have major news networks that are at my press conferences, then I owe the, the major public an update. I think it depends. So no, do I think they need to give updates to everybody in the whole world for 700,000 missing persons cases? Mm -hmm. um, well, we're we're going to take it to a whole nother level because I think <laughs> that we're, we're in a different issue of why we have that many people missing and yeah. we don't get updates, but <clears throat> I think it really comes down to who you're asking for help. If you're, if you're putting it out globally, then you owe the update globally. If you're putting it out locally, then you owe the update locally. If, if you, if you aren't putting it out, then, then you're not asking for that, then you, then you don't have to. 
I, I think that, that, that that's me. Like if you, if you want people to get invested and you want people to be involved where they start paying attention and now they're paying attention and then you just go, oops, sorry, I'm not going to tell you anything else. Guess those people are still going to be paying attention to the last bit of information you gave them. Right. Or focusing on something that's completely irrelevant. Um, I used to be, um, hmm, I'm still pretty, I'm like, if it was on a scale, I'm still pretty seat, seated on the side of don't update us, you know, keep things close to the vest. And Jenny can tell you how like adamant I was about that two years ago. But now, you know, that meter's starting to point towards, you know, what she's been preaching, what you're preaching here, that like, if you're going to address it, like you said, on a, a lo national news and things like that, then if we don't have anything at all, even something as um, we're still working and we're still digging in daily, just something like that, I do think that it, it can be dangerous. I've seen it become dangerous now in a case. So that's, that's a concern, that's for sure. Uh, question <laughs> 5,323,458, do cases... <laughs> With that Please vacuum. Good not still up here. Just come she, back up and talk. She said she was eating. I know. Get back up. Do cases with that vacuum always go viral? What makes a case go viral? That's a question I have been asking myself for a long time. Because if I could figure out what makes a case go viral, there's some cases I'd like to make go viral. So I, I wish think we knew. for me, it's always the, the statistical anomalies and the ones that the people involved in the case. The, I, feel like I'm more, I don't want to say attracted, it's not the right word, but I'm more like drawn to cases. Drawn to it. Yeah, like where the, the initial interviews are like, what? You know, what's going on? Like Madeline Soto, the, that those interviews were way off. Something was wrong. Um, it, it, you know, California, the, the you know, the West Boys in California, the, the adopted parents came out and did a really weird interview and you're just like, what? And you just kind of get sucked in like, okay, where are we at now? Like what's, what's actually happening with that? Um, you know, ones that people can relate to. I think that's, you know, that's true too. Like Sluthi said, when you can, it kind of reminds you of you or your, mm -hmm. or your situations. I don't know. I, I, for me, it's always like, why didn't Daniel Robinson's case go viral? I think social media could have helped there. I share anything I possibly can on Twitter or X or whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, and it's such an interesting case. It has everything that you would think that's why I'm like, I don't know what makes them go viral because it has the mystery. It has the intrigue. It has, you know, this, all of these things and it, it hasn't gone viral. It has a dad out there begging and begging for help. Well, that, so, that one's pretty much a dead end, isn't it? Is that the boy in the desert and his, his truck that turned over? Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty much a dead end. Um, so you're saying there's nothing for people to, well, there's a few little leads that go off, the, you know, the well, girlfriend or the girl that rejected him or whatever, but um, there's not that many angles to it to make a conspiracy. And, and the other thing, I think people don't really care. Do you think that it is – do you think it's the I, – I've said before they that, like – a case, they create a villain. Like when, when a case becomes viral, there's always a hero and always a villain. That's how I view things. Like, and sometimes those roles change throughout the case on online, not the actual case, of course, but like how the, how the case is displayed online. I, I see people instantly, no matter what, whether these people are guilty or not, like they'll create a hero in this in the case and a villain in the case and so yeah, maybe yeah, there's no one in daniel's one. there's no villain in daniel's case because there's yeah, just exactly. nothing the surprising thing is no one actually came out and accused that the father of being the guy who knocked him off mm -hmm. maybe if someone had it'd be it'd, it'd be doing the streets on youtube now we played too much clue at a young age it's possible <laughs> Yeah, Sleuthy. See, I yeah, I had heard that, knew that, and it's that's the thing. Like, so many people don't look into his case, or and I feel like a lot of people have actually heard about his case, but then they just don't really care to look into it to help to continue to spread information at all on it. But yeah, one of the most recent updates that had been put out was about his father running for Congress. But I yeah, I'm sure probably many people haven't heard that. I hadn't. Yeah. And I thought I yeah. followed it pretty closely. I mean, I follow him. I must have just missed that. So his father's running for Congress. So the conspiracy would be that his son was a, sec a, 
a sacrifice, a what do they call it, a ritual sacrifice for the elites. I was looking oh. at Yabs. What did Yab say? Oh, there's some research on this text of kind of pressing what they find in regards to what makes the case take off. I am curious. Like, yep, if you know what they found, I might look that up. There's so many, so many factors I think that goes into it, but I, I do think it's because they, they don't have a villain. But then some cases, I don't know. I think it's just like the oh, the weird anomaly things that just kind of take off. That's kind of where I'm at with it. Like things that just don't, you know, things don't really make sense. And then it catches, it catches the eye of a couple people and that's really where it's at. And we want to, we're pro I think as a whole, we're problem solvers. Right. And we love to fix a puzzle. I was just going to say, we're pu yeah, we're, pu we're, we're mm -hmm. puzzlers or whatever you call those people. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, I want yeah, to put together a puzzle. A puzzle. <laughs> I do. And, and that's why so, I get like stuck in like cases and I don't necessarily mean to, but you get stuck and you just can't because you're just waiting for the next piece of the puzzle to mm -hmm. try to make it make sense. Like for, for me to like walk away from a case, whether active or solved or however, whatever you want to look at it. Like I have mm -hmm. to have something inside of me that feels like I have the answer. Like I have to feel like I've not like I've solved the case, but like that I that I understand it more. That like you're I okay with the conclusion that you've come to on it. Correct. Like yeah, I think that has that's a lot to do with it. So like let's take like Idaho for example. Like for Idaho, I, I am of the belief that they have the right guy and that they're on the right path. So I right. pay attention to like the updates. I watch the court. I watch the court hearings and things. But like I I'm. I don't want to say I'm comfortable with the conclusion because obviously the whole thing is horrendous and I, I mean I still feel terrible for everybody involved in that situation, but I do I feel like okay this is this has a, a resolution that's happening and I don't need to I, I don't I my brain doesn't need to continue to go through all the pieces right but like, like so then for instance like like with Delphi like I feel like there's I try to put this puzzle together and it, it, like, okay, it fits. And then it's like, wait a minute. Then this other piece comes and I'm like, well, where the hell's that go? Cause this was already done. And now this one doesn't fit in here. So now I have to like expand the puzzle and try to redo it. And so I get I, stuck in like this pit of like, I can't get out of it. Cause I'm just waiting for the next piece. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Does that mean that you, you don't think they have the right guy in Delphi? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sold on that. I'm not sold that they don't have the right guy. I actually, so, mm -hmm. you know, that's just two things. I have two working mm -hmm. theories and I think there's a good chance that they actually have the right guy. Um, there's just things that when, like I said, when I put that puzzle together, then something else comes in and I'm like, Oh yeah, that doesn't, the, maybe the puzzle's bigger and there's these pieces that are still missing that are going to make it. So he's still the right guy. Mm -hmm. I don't feel, I don't feel a conclusion one way or the other. So I can't let it go. I, I think that, and this is going to lead into what you're saying, I think that another thing that can make a case go viral is the stuff. Like the amount of things that you can sleuth through, sift it, sift through, look at documents, videos, I, stuff like that. Like Gabby Petito, I think it went extremely big because of all the content that was available for people to pick through and look at. Um, like Delphi right now, I just my personal opinion, like I'm, I'm two hours from Delphi and I've known of the case ever since it happened, but it wasn't one I actively followed. I know that there is a big community of it online, but I don't think it was national and viral until all of the stuff with Richard Allen started going down. And that's because oh, now honey, you have no, it was big all, that. all oh, it was huge. things to pick through. I, I know, was it, it was huge it was online, huge. but was it huge to the degree that it is right now, it has just exploded. And you have, you maybe it's because I can't keep up with Delphi. Like every day you guys are going live and talking about a new piece of it. And I'm like, wait, I'm still on season one, episode 10. And you guys are on like <laughs> season 10, episode four. I'm so lost on it. It's one of those cases that are really hard for me to, to, to just click and and completely get it and understand and 
I don't know why, because I don't have that issue with other cases. Like Murdoch, at first, like when Jenny was like grilling us about Mur Murdoch, I was like, yeah, it's boring, it's boring, it's boring. And then one day I was just like, oh, let me dig in. And then it all clicked and I knew all the things. And like Delphi. Well, that's what happened with Murdoch with me too. <sighs> Delphi you... is tougher only because, like I said, I mean, the, because of all the things that are happening so mm -hmm. quickly in the case currently, I think it's become a little bit bigger. Um, but it's always been huge. It's always been a, a, a very big who done it. It's like, I mean, it's probably a true crime channel's dream, to be honest with you, at the That's beginning. True. Of this, I, I mean, I, I guess you're right. Really if you're fair. It did build a lot of channels, didn't it? It does. Yeah. And I mean, look, Gabby Petito did too. Yeah. Because it was like, it's like those, those are the ones that kind of do. And I mean, at the beginning of the case, I don't mean now, because now it is, it's too complex. Um, but like with Delphi, it, so many things happened along the way with the changes. Like, mm -hmm. so for me personally, like I knew of the case when it happened, it was, you know, I knew that they were looking for somebody and then they do that 2019, like big change of how everything, you know, who they were looking for and what they were looking for. And then it's like, okay, this makes no sense. And so then you have like a whole new slew of people that come in, you know, and it's like craziness because now we're looking at two different people or potentially one person, depending on which way you go with it. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. And so, so then you have that whole thing take off. And then after that, you get like the whole Keegan Klein situation that comes in. So that whole thing takes off. People built their channels and podcasts off of Keegan Klein. Mm -hmm. So that became like a huge thing. So I think there's like the, um, like different, almost like, ebbs and flows or, or like valleys that have hit. There's like, so many rabbit holes just from listening to you cover it since August is when I started listening to you cover it. August, no, September, sorry, September. I listened, started listening to you cover Delphi and it just, there's so many different rabbit holes and side venues that you can go down with this case. And I don't know how some creators keep it all straight. You've got to have like a massive database to be able to keep it all straight. But I, mean, I just made a Prezi. <laughs> I, and I'm so jealous of that. I like try to figure out Prezi. I'm like, no, this ain't for me. I still got to figure out. I'm just it's pen and paper now. Deep. So I, but, but so here I am now I get stuck, but there's other cases like Sebastian's case. Like I'm listening to people talk about it. I've like mm -hmm. Sleuth Bomb has been going over the interviews. You guys went over the interviews here. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to it. But because I I don't have all the time in the world, I end up not being able to cover all the things that I want to cover. You know, we got, um, you know, Chad Daybell's trial starting on Monday. Like, I want to cover that. And yeah. so, like, in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to cover Chad Daybell's trial because that was a huge case for me. I followed it from the time that they were, that anybody knew they were missing. And I covered Lori Vallow's case and so on. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to cover it. But then I'm so stuck in this place with Delphi that I can't wrap my mind around it, that my mind just drifts back over there constantly. It becomes all consuming. It has, I don't like it. I see that it becomes all consuming for you guys. And I guess that makes sense as to Thanks, Tony. Have a good one, love. Um, and that's why maybe channels, a lot of the other channels that I watch that cover Delphi are solely Delphi. Like that's all they cover is Delphi. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't, I, but it's like, I, you get stuck, like I said, and then there's another document that comes out tomorrow. Honestly, you know, the last few days I've really been down the, the P Diddy rabbit hole. Like that's where I've actually kind of lived, you know, for a few I, days. Now. I'm like, what in the world? How is all this happening? And I didn't, I mean, I knew some bad stuff, but I didn't know, I didn't know how deep that went. I didn't even, I haven't even began to look at the P Diddy rabbit hole. I see all the lives on it and I'm like, I want to, but with, with Karen, uh, with John O'Keefe's case, with the coverage I do watch of Delphi and now with Sebastian Rogers, I'm just like, I don't have time. So like, I do give mad props to those channels that are able to cover all the things. I'm like, I don't know how you do it and how they do it and know what they know. Oh. I, I, well, I mean, I think that if it's your full time job of, you know, you can do this in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening, and you can just do it whenever. I think that it's probably easier to to cover. If I had time to sit down and go live a couple times a day, mm -hmm. then you know, or three times a day, I could probably cover more cases. But you don't. I mean, I'm a mom of three. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. there's other shit happening in life. 
<laughs> you've got you've got a full time gig. I'm so glad you're up here, T, for this question because I was trying to explain it and there's no way I could. But she said revisiting an earlier question so it doesn't count. Ha ha ha. Have so it's internet five hundred and sixty seven thousand eight hundred and twenty. Okay. I know, right? Have internet sleuths ever harmed or stopped justice in a case, not to a family, but to the case? Would you please? briefly touch on what happened in Delphi with the YouTubers being in court and the fight and all of that. Like, I, I don't think they stopped the case, but they definitely no. harmed it. Oh, that just definitely goes to Delphi too. I know, I know. that's uh, Delphi. Delphi is um, the creators for Delphi, social media for Delphi, I would say as of recently has become a very big hindrance I mean, when we're when we're calling social media personalities to the stand at the last hearing, I think it's a uh, it kind of goes to show, and it's not. And I know people think like that the lawyers are doing it kind of for show, but I think it actually has to do with how deeply embedded social media has become into that case. Yeah. Um, on on every side, because there, even though the the last hearing was contempt for like the defense attorneys. They're calling out people who are in contact with the prosecution and people who are in contact with law enforcement. Uh, and it's just, and they're putting them on the stand to testify about who's actually talking to who and where were leaks of information. But this, this goes back to that too. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to mute real quick. I had to call. Who got what? Uh, yeah, it's a lot. It goes back to the the lack of information flowing to the public and once again people don't need to know about all the details of the things they were trying to keep close to the vest for you know to identify the perpetrator i'm a hundred percent agree in uh, agreement on all of that i think the issue comes to i'll give you an example so um people may if anybody doesn't follow delphi you may not even know who any of these people are but there's a, a, a journalist named Barbara McDonald. She was actually in charge of one of the biggest podcasts and then documentaries on the Delphi case. She goes on court TV and actually is holding a document um, that is not released to the public. Mm -hmm. So she's got it on the desk on court TV saying like, Hey, what? And like, so then the defense team is like, wait a minute. Like we couldn't even get our hands on this document. How the heck does this journalist have, this document sitting on court TV. And you can see it. Yes. I you remember. can see it. You can, yeah, you can. So how does she have it? And we don't have it. So obviously she got it from somebody that, you know, she shouldn't have. So my point to that would be, if you're going to give it to this journalist, Barbara McDonald, why aren't you just holding a press conference and talking about what this document holds? Obviously you're okay with it being released. Or is this somebody that's, you know, a quote unquote whistleblower who's like, Hey, we want this information out because they're not talking about it. Ah, it's like, is it this one right here? Right. Oh, it is. Yeah, it is that yeah. one. I think uh, it is. Yeah. So right she's there. like, cool. oh, she's no, like oh, this might not be it. Cause it's yeah. like, a, um, it's like six or seven pages that are put together. Yeah, you're right. To get through a so we can get our shit together and do it. I you know, know what I've had, you're not the only one who's asked for that. Other people have been asking like, Hey, if we don't know anything about Delphi, how do we even get involved at this point to even understand it? Um, but I think that the lack of information is, 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 is problematic. So if people are feeding this info to social media, it almost becomes like, um, politics. Like, you know, you, politicians pay groups of people to go out and create, you know, and put out an agenda and put out a narrative on their behalf. And that's the truth. I mean, I, I'm not, I don't want to get too far into politics. It's just the truth. All sides do it, not one side, but both sides. And that's almost what it has become in the Delphi cases. You have these sets of people who are working alongside are one she side. Are you for you, Bob? What? She's roboting for me, but I don't know if it's just. No, her. I could hear her. I can. Okay, hear her. it's me. Let me refresh. You okay. keep talking. Okay. So I I think that that comes to that there's people that are purposely putting out their their narratives with their you know, sources and saying that these are the things that are true. And then all of a sudden you find out that they're either not true or that they are true. And they were, you know, fed to these people based on the prosecution or the defense team. And now you have the two specific camps on social media who are just, there's a lot of infighting. So 
it's tough. Do I think that that causes problems? I do. I think it causes problems. I also think it causes problems to talk, to talk or to become too close to family members in a case. Uh, I, I think that you become, you be, people become part of a case versus covering a case. Yes. And I, and I, that causes a lot of complications. If you, if you are too, fr not to say not to interview them, not to say not to let them get their stories out, but when you become intertwined in their story or in their life, you become a shill almost. You become a person who's pushing the narrative for the family members. And this is what I was, we were talking about this earlier with Sebastian's case. So how many people will go and apologize if they find out that they had nothing to do with it? But what happens when all these people who got so close to the family and are advocating for them find out that they actually did have something to do with it? I do think there's a way to be close to the family. Well, you know what I mean? Like um, having communication with them or perhaps even going out and helping them search. And so in that way, being close or perhaps right. say emotionally close without being a part of it, because that is what a lot of the creators do, whether it's because they want to feel important or they want to get the views because, hey, look, at I'm with the family and I know this info and that info. And so I, I think that there is that line too, even with that, where some of these creators make themselves a part of a part of this case or of these me. cases unnecessarily versus I guess we would go with maybe the advocates that are working with the families, but they aren't inserting themselves out into the story or the case. But I, I do agree that once they get involved, it does add a whole nother layer of them. I mean, Goodness, we could go back to Summer Wells. Look at how many people are characters in this whole case, but you shouldn't be. Why are, why are all of these people involved? And uh, yeah, I think that that is too far, way, way, way too far. But as a whole layer of, of extra confusion as well. I agree. Are you up here, hey, Nanya? Nanya? Oh, she was just, yes. She, we just, know it. she typed in the back chat. It's me. Sorry. I was, I was, <laughs> this little, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I figured since I'm, I've reached my limit of questions in the chat and I'm done with dinner, I could come back up. Oh, you may. Uh, I'll allow it. Grandma Sherry had a really good question in the chat. Oh, okay. Was I refreshing? Where's she at? Oh, Where is no. Grandma freaking Sherry? Uh, I'm looking for it. There so it I, I was going to say, if you can't find it, I'll paraphrase it. Okay. Interviews with everybody and their dog, the waitress that serves someone. Hmm. So the creators encourage the interviews with everybody and their dog, the waitress that serves someone. So like, oh, should we, like she means like yeah. interview any and everybody who has something to say about a case. Like in, for example, like in Delphi, should, should they be encouraging an interview with, you know, the girl's third cousin once removed on her mother's, you know what I mean? Like just so far removed from the case. Is that basically what you're saying, grandma? Like maybe uh, the waitress saw them um, earlier in the day. Should those interviews be? I was going to say like, when did this waitress serve them? Cause that's a pretty, the waitress for Gabby Petito. Mm -hmm. That became a very, you know, big part of that case. Mm -hmm. Should she be interviewed? Or she should be interviewed by law enforcement, number law one. Enforcement. You know, should she be out on social media? I think that's her choice. I don't I mean, should I think we do we need to go chase her down? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that there's also that's my line. If somebody is like, you know, wanting to advocate and put their story out there, I think it's very much different than I'm like, hey, hey, come on my channel. Come on my channel. Come on, right. And that's what, like, that's why, like, I'm not upset at all that Trev did that interview. I like Trev um, because he didn't go seek that person, woman out and beg her to come up and do this interview. She sought him out and wanted to share her story. And I, um, I don't do interviews because I feel like I'd suck at them, but I would have a hard time turning down someone who wanted to, you know, have a platform and speak out. But I'm right. of the same mindset as T is like, no, I'm not going to go hunt down these people. I, I think that it's sometimes that goes too far. Channel like Trev though, he takes call-ins. Mm. So I mean, no, um, you're thinking of a different one. Trev time oh, is a summer Wells creator. You're thinking of T-Rev. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. oh, I am thinking of T-Rev. Thank you. Yep. Yep. No problem. 
Because I'm like, those are tough. Like, you have these random ass people that just call into your show and they just tell you these stories. I don't know. You it, you have no control. Like, it's almost like a. Uh, you oh, hang up. They start to say I mean, something crazy and you hang up. That's about all you can yeah, do on that's that. All you can do. So, that's, that's who I was thinking of. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. People expect those people to go to the creator. They bash nonstop for the family and defense of the family. That's why I say staying in your lane is the best. And and I do think that once it's all out there, though, it becomes open for discussion, conversation, and whatnot. And then, unfortunately, we go back to the where your morals lie in that discussion and conversation. I I think to me it it really is. Um, yeah, I think I think for me, like what I came into this conversation with tonight. Oh, chicken and dumplings on Super Friday. <laughs> oh, delicious. Yum. Um, you eat chicken and dumplings? I'm so jealous. I actually made two dinners tonight so I don't have to cook tomorrow night. I, get, I, can't, so, I struggle with making one dinner. My family know, has right? a choice of <laughs> sausage and cabbage or chicken and dumplings. I would have gone chicken and dumplings too. Oh yeah, I vote That's chicken and dumplings. That's what I went with too. Um, but I, I think from the conversation, what I, I, I think it's been very like thoughtful. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely brought just some, like it really does show like the, the people who I see kind of the most outraged um, with some of the behaviors that we see online from creators. When you're, when you put them like in those categories we were talking about, right? In those tiers of people that we were talking about, a lot of the people who get the most outrage are the more empathetic ones or the more empath is empaths. They're more empath. There you go. Um, and it makes more sense in my head why they do get so discouraged is because when they're seeing it and their line looks different than somebody who is more of that. Um, I can go into this without, you know, not without any emotion, but like with the less emotion in it. That mm -hmm. definitely makes a difference. So hearing you uh, explain, you know, I can go into a case, I can go over the whole case, I can dig into that case. And it's like, it's not that it's nothing to you, but like, it's a story to you. And then I think there's other people who are like, this is a person to me. Like yeah. they see, they, they only see one or the other, not both at the same time kind of a thing. And I think that really is what drives the difference. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And and just to, to add on at the back end there would just be that um, it's a person. But I, I think that there is still that ability to tell the story. I just think it's a time and a place. And because I mean, uh, there's no confusion that I'm in. I'm in that lower tier of the the um, like em empathic and More. The empath, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't think that's... like the term lower tier because it makes yeah, I don't know what like to call it. Just you're you're one. in a different you're tier, a separate you're tier. Yeah. You're one. Yeah, you're over there. Maybe. Uh, I do. I mean, but I, I, that's why I said like I will. I struggle like when I I had to read like Harmony Montgomery's um mm -hmm. what, what Adam Montgomery's charges against Harmony and and like that PCA. I struggled with that. Like I struggled. Uh, like, and I went into tears. I struggled so bad. I was choked yeah, up. My throat I, I was like, it's going to close. Yeah. It, ugh, it was awful. So, I mean, it's, I mean, I, I get that. I definitely understand like that they're, I understand that they're people. I mean, I don't want to be like, yeah, they're just, they're just a story. Like that, yeah, I definitely, yeah. there are right, people, no. especially the tiny ones. Mm -hmm. I, str I struggle with, with reading that, but I also know, and like, I'll say this, like Madeline Soto's case, like I wasn't even going to cover the case. And because I was so upset, um, with Audrey Cunningham's case that I had just got done covering. And I was just so distraught over everything that I believe happened in that case that I was like, I can't do another one right now. Like, I just can't like emotionally, I just can't do it. But then I was like, but then her story doesn't get told. And and then that isn't fair. Like, I, I can't say like, you know, Audrey, Audrey's case is worth covering and then Madeline Soto's case is not worth covering. Like I just, mm -hmm. something in me was like, no, I have to, I have to tell her story. Even though it's a, it's a yeah, horrendous, I get that too. I it. So it is. Yeah, I mean, I, it is about the story, but it's all, and it is still about the person. I I don't, but I just think that there's more of a, I don't want to a draw to certain ones, maybe. No, like a like for me personally, like I have more of a where I know I can't do it. Any, so I'll I'll give you an example. 
Cash Gurnan's case. I don't know if you guys are familiar mm -hmm. with like Cash Gurnan. I could not cover his case. I just, I physically could not cover it. I could not look at it. Really? I, couldn't it. I could not. I just couldn't. Wait, he was the same age as my son. If you saw a picture of my son, he looks almost identical to my I son. I see. Yeah. I could not do it. People, mm -hmm. I could not watch other streams on it. I, I literally couldn't. But then there's uh, Letitia Stauk. I have like a like a visceral hatred for that woman. Like, oh my I, God, I, I think everybody does. Audience, but I am, it's like almost an unhealthy hatred for somebody that I don't actually know personally mm -hmm. because of what I know that she did to that poor baby. So, I mean, like there's like still that empath part there, but it's just, I don't think it's, I don't, I don't feel like I'm an advocate. I don't feel like I'm advocating. I don't either. I, 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 like I, their story needs to be told. And if I right. can tell it, I want to tell it. If I also I'm, don't, I don't consider myself an advocate either. I've said that I'm, I'm only here to bring awareness. That was it mm -hmm. just to put out the awareness. And so I make people aware of the case. I speak. Yeah, the the right word. I, yeah. yeah. I keep my, I keep my opinions out of it as much as I possibly can. If it is an opinion, I make sure I say it's an opinion. Um, if, if I think some based off facts of evidence, something is leaning in a certain direction, I'll say perhaps maybe they're um, going about it this way because of, but that's just mm -hmm. my own thought. That's my own. And, and so I'm very clear on all of that, but um, yeah, I've never, I don't, I don't think that I'm an advocate. I think that that's a whole nother category that I, sh you know, would need to get into, but yeah, the, I am more on that awareness portion of it. And I'm, I'm not with the, uh, like investigating and behind the scenes. I'll look into stuff and go over things and, and just look like further. Publicly. But I always make a line instead of coming to the public and saying, so I found this or I found that I try to not do any of that. Of course, if the case was solved, that would be different. If it's a cold case and there's information that's out there, that I think for me, that's a bit different than the current active cases. And I agree with that. I think if I'm an advocate for anything, I don't believe I'm an advocate for missing people or for cases at all. But I do think I'm an advocate for the truth. Like I'm, I, I love finding the truth. I love timelines and all of that stuff because it's about getting down to the truth of it. Whether we're talking about people, um, uh, cases, other content creators, I, I just, I have always really enjoyed getting to the truth of the matter. And so that's what I advocate for. I think it's just the truth. But Ava says, and I, I want to remind people of this because I feel like so many people forget it. And that's what creates these online um, sides or teams. And it, it is so bizarre because I'm like, just wait, once we get to trial, you're probably not going to hear half the shit that you're out, <laughs> that we're, you know, alleging is fact or we think matters. Um, because most of the time, once it gets to trial, you're right. The evidence and the facts are uh, maybe not different, but a smaller version. It can be a smaller version of what we think is going to end up in the trial. So by the logic of the tears, right? The tears. Of the tears. Um, when you assign somebody as a bad actor, tragedy pimp, tragedy leech, whatever you want to call them, right? Yeah, that's what I'm curious when somebody gets put into that category. I know what puts them into the category is subjective based off of the person you're talking to. Mm -hmm. But what if right don't come for me, but what if what they're doing is no different than what the rest of us are doing? It just mm -hmm. looks different. Yeah. And that's, that's something I've discussed before when I did that tragedy pimp question mark live, because at the time, at that time in when I did that live and, and the only one reason this is fresh in my mind is none of you and I just talked about it today, but at the time of when I did that live, it was the beginning of Layla Santanello's case and people were just going at Bullhorn Betty calling her a tragedy pimp. And in that moment, she wasn't. She wasn't doing any anything wrong besides, you know, discussing, going down, doing boots on the ground, or she was getting ready to go down, do boots on the ground stuff. Um, and she just wasn't, she's done a few things since, but like at that point she wasn't. And so it's like, wait, why are we attacking someone before they even do the thing wrong? Like if we're not willing to to give grace and see what happens, 
then aren't we just as bad if we're going to like attack them for something they haven't even done yet? For, well, for me, on when we go to like the that tier of, of mm -hmm. people, I think it's their motive. It's what I or what I see their motive being is what I because if people are doing things that they actually that they personally believe that their own line, mm -hmm. even if it's past my line, if they personally believe that what they're doing is 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 helping versus like I'm going to do this because it does bring me more views. I, I, that's where I'm like, oh, that, that's a tough one for me because I'm like, what if like, that's what they think is actually changing things. What if they mm -hmm. think being there actually changes things? I don't know. Oh, just like boots on the, I don't have a problem with boots on the ground, just showing things and stuff like that. I think it's when you, um, I, just when you go too far in this situation, you know, you're standing outside the suspect's home screaming at other random people and causing a scene and getting arrested that I think, I think like, Oh wait, you're just making it muddy and me messy, but I don't see an issue. And like with the unit going back to the United Cajun Navy, where they're like, we're not telling you, you can't, you know, take your videos and maybe go back and edit it. We just don't want you live streaming because what if, what if you're out here searching and live streaming and, and we, you stumble across the person we're searching for that could be, Right. That just could be so bad. And I, I'm i not against, like I said, boots on the ground, active involvement. I just think that sometimes uh, in the situation, it can become very messy and it, it can slip over into that quote unquote tragedy pimp tier. So the comment that you have on the screen, you know what that actually makes me think of? I can't even remember the page, but recently with the whole Stacey Wander interviews, Mm -hmm. And the one gal who it came out that like they're discussing their her marital issues or whatever the case may be, it came out later on. Like to me, that's where you may hold some things back because of that connection with the person. Mm -hmm. Like you, you, you've gone too far. You know what I mean? Like you just like you've gone no. too far. Like you are too connected. Okay. If you can't sit and hear an opposite opinion than yours and you're doing coverage, like to me, you've gone, you're, you're too close to it. Hmm. And that's, just, that, that, that's what that comment made me think of was those interviews. And when you found out later on that, like, there was just some really, in my opinion, inappropriate conversations happening. It's like, okay. Okay. Yeah. Now I know what you're saying. Yeah. Like when you're trying to manipulate, whether it be a suspect or, mm -hmm. or not, and you're trying to manipulate them in, in your conversations with them to get the scoop, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, 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 you know, and, and, or you're talking to a family of a suspect and the family is allegedly giving you questions to go ask the suspect. Uh, my concern, though, with that is, and I'm not saying it's wrong. My question is with it, though, is can it then become, uh, can it affect the investigation? If those, like, I don't know how that works in the court. Would anything you found even, say, say you did, you connected with, a content creator to go elicit uh, certain questions from the suspect and they were able to gather something that might be used in court. A, a good defense attorney, in my opinion, would be able to get that information impeached because it was uh, gathered under certain circumstances. That becomes a concern for me because then you, it is, is an actual active, um, interference with the investigation. Hey, Salt DC. Right. I think is that if you're going to, if you're going to have this person that's in contact with a potential suspect and you're, you're doing it from law enforcement and, and doing it intentionally, well, that mm -hmm. person's going to end up most likely taking the stand. And oh, I think the bigger issue is going to be the type of people that are being or would be used. It would law enforcement actually want to use that type of person and put them on the stand and would that person actually be able to, you know, to 
hold their own against a defense attorney who's digging into anything and everything they've done wrong in their life. So uh, that's also like, I don't necessarily think that they are actually out there going like, okay, you're going to go ask this person this question. I mean, they do it, but I just, that person's going to be, I don't think they know what they're getting themselves into. I'll just say yeah. that. They hold themselves up on the stand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know. I and agree. Terry Dean says the thirst for the scoop knows no boundaries. Well, and it goes back to oh, yeah. a, a question that uh, Saluthi had in the chat earlier and I didn't get to, sorry, we got derailed was like, are we, how do we feel about reporters trying to go and get the interviews and do these exact same things that YouTubers are doing is I Why don't think that I say and one doesn't. Yeah, I don't think I mind the interviews. <clears throat> I think that the interviews should not be so. For example, I'm just going to use T as an example. She's covering a case, right? And she reaches out to the family, and the family is like, "Yes, we would like to come on." So mom comes on, right? Mom and dad aren't together. Mom comes on and talks about a missing child, and Sleuthy's excuse me, I'm sorry, these questions all are about like, tell me about your relationship with dad. Tell me what dad is like. You know, like just dad, 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 right? Like there's, there's sometimes, and actually we were just watching in one of the interviews that you went over, I think in part two or part one, it was, they're very leading questions to put this speculation and shadow on the opposite side of the parenting. Those are the only interviews I really have a problem with. Of course, like I want to hear what the, the family has to say. Like, I don't think anybody doesn't, but it's like being responsible with, you know, like I know everybody may not like Nancy, but like I actually appreciated some of Nancy's questions because like she wasn't directing them at one side versus the other in the parenting situation she was asking them questions about the home and about, you know, the, that night and that kind of stuff, which mind you, I'll, I'll put the disclaimer. That was the very first Nancy Grace interview I'd ever watched. Very aggressive, but it was the first one. Um, but I, I, that's, I don't know. I guess, like you said, it's, it's that personal line of, you know, some people I know are very bothered when people reach out and do those interviews. Yeah, I well, I'd seen on uh, in chat that uh, talking about like if you people get information from an individual and then withhold that and and not bring it forward, that also can be an issue uh, with the investigation or mess things up. Um, but uh, then that goes in line with this: what about the media going and getting interviews? it's known that media has withheld some of portions of the interview information from the interview and not put it out to the public. And for me, I don't feel like that is messing stuff up. I think it comes to a, I guess, an ethical or a responsibility that if it's something, does the public need to know that information or does do the law enforcement need to know? And so I think with social media, uh, many, I won't say all, quite a few, though, will give interviews and they think that it all has to be put out every little detail when I feel like some of that should be reserved. And if it's that serious and you think that it affects the investigation, that should be told to law enforcement. Confidential. It doesn't need to come to the public. If law enforcement says that, it's, it's no big deal. Yeah, sure. It's no big deal. You could talk on this. Okay, good put it out to the public. But um, I do think so. I, th I think I, that's the, the tears again, though, honestly, Bob, because yeah. to me, you know, tier one may say, I want to respect again, their, their priority is that family, that victim, that person. Right. So when that's their that's in the forefront of their mind, I do understand why if the family has said, you know, Hey, please don't talk about this. I'll share it with you. I trust you to tell you this, but please don't share this. And it's not something law enforcement needs to know, right? Or may already know and gives permission to share. And they choose not to, right? But then in tier two, you may have it to where, no, this is a detail of the case that needs to be put out there. Hey, family member, I'm going to put that out there now that you told me that. I think that it's important for people to know this and to have that information. I think that's where like the two tiers they're, they're not, one is not wrong or right. I just think that those two are very different.
Well, I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> I think that is a, a, a I think that is a, a very big difference. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I, I do agree with that. So the, if you're getting information from a family member and sure. they're letting you know that law enforcement doesn't know this detail. So, for example, I, I didn't tell them that, like, I did hear the door open and I didn't check it, let's just say. Right. But but I don't want the police to know that because I don't want them to suspect me or whatever. And they're telling you that as a as a creator who is speaking with the family hell yeah, I think you should tell law enforcement. Like, that's putting the victim or the missing person, like, at the forefront of... that. That puts justice before your personal relationship with them. And I think there's a difference, too, like, about being compassionate to people uh, that, you know, are obviously, you know, victims. Like, I, I've never talked to Brandy Neal personally. I have talked to her on social media. I care that her son is missing. You know, so I think that there's a difference between having like the compassion for these people versus getting a, into a very personal relationship with them where they are telling you things. Yeah. And if they are, then I, yeah, you're not, you're part of the investigation. <laughs> I mean, that's just really well, what's going to happen because they're, those people are being, anybody who's talking to Sebastian's parents on a personal mm -hmm. level or any other case like that, those those messages are being monitored. There's no doubt about it. So if something comes up in the, those messages or those conversations, you're part of it. You're part of that investigation, whether you want to be or not. Well, and not even just that, but on a, uh, a moral level, I would think like you are, I, I, this is going to go off topic a little bit, but what frustrates me the most is when people betray that trust. Like you are being entrusted with this relationship and this connection and this share of information with person who has an active case open for a loved one. And the betray of that can feel like, are, are we, you know, causing more damage if, if that happens? Like I've seen it happen all the time when um, people got close to Candace Wells and recorded her or, you know, tried to pass off that she was, they were working for the FBI and then leak out all those recordings and stuff. And I just feel like oh, it becomes so heartbreaking, whether you believe the people are innocent or guilty or not, it, it, it can become very messy. <laughs> but I was thinking earlier when you guys were talking about the reporter about like investigative journalism and, you know, there is a whole sector that does dig into and, you know, actively seek out, investigate and, and try to do a decent job with it. And I would say that it's no different than some of these YouTubers or podcasters or whatnot. I think it goes I back to, I think that there's an, there's a lack of that now. Uh, mm -hmm. We have very few people who are out there as a investigative journalist that is doing these. Like Nate Eaton is like who comes to mind when I think of like an investigative journalist. Like he's out there, he's walking yeah. up, he's just like, "Hey, you know, answer the questions. I have a few questions for you." They're mm -hmm. they're few and far between nowadays, and I think that's also why social media or YouTube or podcasts are becoming such a a bigger thing. Is that the yearning for that because that media covers so much shit up and they don't tell the truth or they just act like it's not happening. They just act like it's like, it's not real. So they don't even cover it. I, I think if we went back to having actual investigative journalists who are, who do have degrees, like somebody earlier in the chat was talking about like having a journalism degree or criminal, you know, criminal justice degree and things like that. If we actually had people who were investigative journalists, I mean, I can only probably name four off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. And even so, though, but I, they're still with their their investigative investigative journalism. But I, they're still, again, not putting out certain information to the public if it may interfere in some way with the investigation. At least that's how I perceive it. And um, again, I guess it goes back to those tiers, but the tier that it we've at least been running on prior to social media jumping in on this. The majority of it with, um, who was it? Ali had said um, ethics and journalism. And and I've been hearing some of that, I don't know, within the past couple of weeks about uh, them 
I guess, being trained or taught that there is a line that they don't put out certain information. So perhaps part of it could be, at least for me, part of it is a, I, maybe that mindset of that there's a line. But I mean, there's no doubt with me, obviously, it's just in my DNA. Um, but I, I, I think that what I've seen leading up prior to the social media stuff was that there was a line that wasn't being crossed over with information being put out, even though they were still investigative journalism. Don't don't journalists have an actual like code that they have to follow? Or am I crazy? Yeah, they have a code of ethics, but I don't know that they all stand to it. Okay. okay. I mean, I think that the problem is, is like who we're considering a journalist. We're talking about like investigative journalists. Like, yeah, but like no, 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 no. I mean, like, well, I don't, I don't know. To me, it like a journalist, journalist. I don't. Uh -huh. You don't like, mean to boy? Or <laughs> no, 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 no. Not like that. Like no shade. Just no shade. I'm sorry. Yeah, like somebody who does not print out their own, you know, media pass or press pass, like somebody who legit had an agency maybe issue it to them. I don't know. Not but actually, well you can. That. I mean, you don't. Uh, never mind. Is that is that kind of like that. touching into like freedom of speech? Like anybody can be the well, media anybody can thing. print out their own press pass or media pass though that doesn't make you a credentialed journalist no but right. you can actually do that if you wanted to which is what is so bizarre in our country but so can. credential just means what you've got a degree in it um no that you're backed by a um a company you know the newspaper the the media outlet that you're working oh. for would be okay perfect and, and there are like um what are the what's it called the um society of professional journalists that's why like they there are groups that you can be a part of and whatnot but and i'm sure those they groups have to, some type of like, yeah rules and ethics to it that they have to follow right mm -hmm. okay oh yeah i would think yeah, that's that's yeah, that's what I was trying to say is is, is like they had a, a standard that they weren't crossing over. And and like I said, perhaps part of that is because that's what I had seen that I feel like that's the more appropriate way or more responsible way. But I could still separate myself from that. And ethically, morally, for me, I also have my own stance on that being in the first year and so i don't know i mean i don't just because that was their standard does that make that be the way that it should be or do we feel like that's preventing it's kind of um why am i drawing a blank right now <sighs> censorship with the media and not being able to put out all the information or what's really going on, only what their boss is allowing them to put out. I mean, does it run run into that? Well, then we go into the whole category of like fake news and ethics and journalism. <laughs> right. Uh, well, I was going to point out, so Leon said it's down to editors on final say if it's newspapers or magazines, what's too far they decide. So mm -hmm. maybe that's what it is, like whether it be new, you know, TV or, you know, or print, somebody else is editing your words. Somebody else is making sure you haven't crossed a line, which mm -hmm. in my opinion, if in that, in that particular genre of work, right, if there is a line that has been drawn, I do feel like that same line should be applied that's i don't know what the line is i would have to do some research on that <laughs> she doesn't know where it is or what it is but she wants to apply it you like, know i will i will make you a chalkboard of that line Deez, but, is there any way if i look it up i, I don't know it. if you have it okay the society of yeah i ha actually i was pulling that up after you guys were mentioning it i saw someone there in chat so there are four principles hang on let me screen share this oh four principles love that yeah bullet so. points i think the biggest issue is like when it comes to like mainstream media is the amount of politics that is now backing mainstream media That's you don't true. get any of the facts so you have to go 
you have to be on the offshoot channels or the offshoot news places to actually mm -hmm. get an unbiased opinion. Yeah. And, and, and independent journalism. Um, and it, thank you. I'm a little right. tired. And, and that's what's so strange. There is the censorship. If you go too far on that side and then there's, um, I just forgot what you just called it, but, um, independent. That, yes, thank you. Independent. And I have actually watched really good independent journalism that I feel is very unbiased. Then you've got like news nation that had claimed that they, they were, were unbiased, but stuff has shifted. In my opinion, I feel things have shifted. Yeah. And, and then you've got turtle boy that is it just an example as someone that's also he's independent. Like a, he's a citizen journalist. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I would put him. I would put so him that's in another a, tier, right? I would put him okay. in a citizen journalism category, um, which would be what we are technically as content creators on social media. It's more of like a a citizen type thing. I that's just the area I would put him in. Um, so the four. Oh, that's ethics, so good. Code of ethics. Um, the preamble is members of the Society of Professional Journalists believe that public enlightenment is the forerunner of justice and the foundation of democracy. Ethical journalism strives to ensure the free exchange of information that is accurate, fair, and thorough. An ethical journalist acts with integrity. The society declares these four principles as the foundation of ethical journalism and encourages their use in its practice by all people in all media. Seek truth and report it. Ethical journalism should be accurate and fair. Journalists should be honest and courageous in gathering, reporting, and interpreting information. Journalists should take responsibility for the accuracy of their work, verify information before releasing it, and use original sources whenever possible. Remember that neither speed nor format excuses inaccuracy. Mm. Provide context. Take special care not to misinterpret or oversimplify in promoting, previewing, or summarizing a story. You know that's right. <laughs> Gather, update, and correct information throughout the life of a new story. Amen. Be cautious when making promises. Ooh, that's big. But keep the promises that they make. Identify mm. sources clearly. The public is entitled to as much information as possible to judge the reliability and motivation of sources. Mm, the motivation. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Consider sources' motives before promising. I struggle with anonymity. Oh, I got it. Anonymity. Reserve anonymity. <laughs> No. There's always a we have words every every lie. There's always a word that I just cannot do. No, reserve anonymity for sources who may uh, face danger, retribution, or other harm, and have information that cannot be obtained elsewhere. Explain mm. why anonymity was granted. Mm -hmm. um, diligently seek subjects of news coverage to allow them to respond to criticism or allegations of wrongdoing. Avoid, Diligent. look at this one, avoid undercover or other surreptitious. I can't do that one. Oh my gosh. Surreptitious. There you go. Thank you. Methods of gathering information and less traditional. Open methods will not yield information vital to the public. Mm, mm -hmm. Vital. Be vigilant and courageous. I see, I see her like highlighting these words in her brain right now. She's like, ooh, that's a good one. I highlight that one. <laughs> that one. Check. <laughs> Wrote that one on the chalkboard and that one. <laughs> Too funny. Hang on one second. I need a drink. Oh, you didn't have to be quiet. Okay, where was I? Um... We were Be back diligent and courageous, withholding those with power accountable. Give voice to the voiceless. Ah, uh, the voiceless. <laughs> <laughs> Not the great. Support the open and civil exchange of views. Even views they find repugnant. Repugnant. Yeah. Mm, open to okay. views. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
recognize a special oh, object. Like, hallelujah after one of these. I know. <laughs> like, I'm going to hear some clapping soon. Recognize a special obligation to serve as watchdogs over public affairs and government. Seek to ensure that the public's business is conducted in the open and that public records are open to all. That's one I struggle with, but I agree with it. Say it again. Um, Provide access to source materials when it is relevant, when it is relevant and appropriate. Boldly tell the story of diversity and magnitude of the human experience. Seek sources whose voices we seldom hear. Oh, I like that one a lot. Avoid stereotyping. Journalists should examine the ways their values and experiences may shape their reporting. Mm. Label advocacy and commentary. Ah, uh, advocacy. I like that <laughs> a lot. Hallelujah. That was a good one. Okay. Never deliberately distort facts or context, including visual information. Clearly label illustrations and reenactments. Ooh, this one's going to get some people. Never mm -hmm. plagiarize. <laughs> Always a tribute. Hallelujah. So that is the first... There's what was there four foundations that or four principles that was the first principle. Second one is minimize harm. Ethical journalism treats sources, subjects, colleagues, and members of the public as human beings deserving of respect. Journalists should balance the public's need for information against potential harm or discomfort. Pursuit of the news is not a license, or pursuit of the news is not a license for arrogance or undue intrusiveness. <laughs> Intrusive, yeah. intrusive <laughs> and uh, arrogance. Show compassion for those who may be affected by news coverage. Ooh, this is kind of what we're talking a lot about tonight. Use heightened sensitivity when dealing with juveniles, victims of sex crimes, and sources or subjects who are inexperienced or unable to give consent. Consider cultural differences in approach and treatment. Ah, they're mm. putting their proof right there. That's where she's like, I, yeah, I know. Right and everyone's like, like Hallelujah. yeah, I know. And I got so many people that are on me, like talking about me being oversensitive and whatever. I'm like, Man, just <laughs> you just need to like highlight this and put this yeah. as the cover yeah. page. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, I'm following this. Recognize that legal access to information differs from an ethical justification to publish or broadcast. Mm. Just because you can get it doesn't mean you have to show it. Amen. That's exactly what I was talking about. Yes, that's it. That Burton's over there heard. standing up with their hallelujah hands, doing the little per church praise. Dance. I know. I stayed quiet, but yes, yeah, so <laughs> I get it. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> Realize that private people have a greater right to control information about themselves than public figures and others who seek power influence or attention weigh the consequences of publishing or broadcasting personal That's information what i've been mm. saying <laughs> avoid Burn, pandering are you, a, are you part of this journalist society here I feel no like but are. that's <laughs> She's like, this is what I've been saying. Yes. <laughs> <For> my people. <laughs> Avoid pandering to lurid curiosity, even if others do. Damn. Balance a suspect's yeah. right to a fair trial with the public's right to know. Consider the implications of identifying criminal suspects before they face legal charges. Oh, oh. don't identify them. Charges. That, okay. Um, consider the long-term implications of the extended reach and... Permanence of publication. Per oh, permanence of publication. Got it. Provide updated and more complete information as appropriate. I feel like burden you are definitely the minimize harm. The minimize harm is like, all you. It's all you. Yeah. It, it, literally, it's like what she's been yeah. saying this like entire word time. Word for word, two, three, yeah. three hours summed up mm -hmm. in five bullet points. Yeah. She's like, I should have just brought <laughs> and I would have done in the first five minutes. She's like, I feel good about my ethics now. Like, there is a handbook, and that one's all me. Well, yeah, it just makes me feel a little like, like people. Uh, I was Less categorized crazy. as being um, hypersensitive. And it's like, okay, yeah, you can label me whatever you want. That's okay. That's okay. But, you no, know, so you, it does you feel. Tell them, I'm not hypersensitive. I try to minimize harm. Minimize <laughs> harm. Oh, exactly. I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. We got. 
act independently. The highest and primary obligation of ethical journalism is to serve the public. Journalists mm. should avoid conflicts of interest, real or perceived. Disclose unavoidable conflicts. They should refuse gifts, favors, fees, free travel, and special treatment, and avoid political and other outside activities that may compromise integrity <laughs> or impartiality or may damage credibility. I think some people in the chat could definitely find a journalist with the pe a press pass that didn't meet that requirement. <laughs> I, I feel like, okay, but they're also still getting paid. And I hear that argument so often. And that's why for me, I've never um, pointed out people making money on this platform. If you are here, you're putting in your time, the work, all of that. Absolutely. You should be, you know, able to take in your form of payment that this platform offers. But it doesn't say don't get paid. It yes. says don't get paid if it may compromise your mm -hmm. integrity. Yep, that's what I was going to touch or on. Or damage later. your credibility. It doesn't say don't get paid. It's like get your money, boo, but be careful who you're getting it from. Yep. Be wary of sources offering information for favors or money. Do not pay <laughs> for access to news. Identify oh. content provided by outside sources, whether paid or not. I feel like some people may be feeling attacked right now, and this isn't an attack. We're just reading some bullet We're points. We're just reading ethics, y'all. <laughs> it's not an attack. Deny favored treatment to advisors, donors, or any other special interests, and resist internal and external pressure to influence coverage. Distinguish news from advertising and shun hybrids that blur the lines between the two. Potent or prominently label sponsored content. Eh, I think everybody does a good job at that. I do too. Be accountable and transparent. Ethical mm. journalism means taking responsibility for one's work and explaining one's decision to the public. Journalists should explain ethical choices and processes to audiences. Encourage a civil dialogue with the public about journalistic practices, coverage, and news content. Okay. They should respond quickly to questions about accuracy, clarity, and fairness. Mm. They should be answering to their public. <laughs> To their, to their people. Uh, acknowledge mistakes and correct them properly and prominently. It, which that one bugs me because, you know, what is that saying? Like, they never remember the re retraction. There's a first part to it. I always forget. Like, they always remember the accusation and never the retraction or whatever. Something. Because the retraction is always put on, like, page six at the bottom. Yeah. But... Acknowledge mistakes and correct them prom promptly and prominently. Explain corrections and clarifications carefully and clearly. Expose unethical conduct in journalism, including within their organizations. That's mm. all we're doing is exposing unethical conduct. <laughs> um, abide by the same high standards they expect of others. There you go. I like to be accountable and transparent. That's my favorite. <laughs> what was she saying? She she was telling unsupervised media yeah, she would, but she likes to minimize harm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she Just said saying. that um she said that she I got to find it again. Um, I agree a lot with Bob and I'm not hypersensitive. Tell him to kiss off Bob. And I said I would, but I tend to try to minimize harm. Minimize. That's your new motto right now. Seriously. So I, and it should be because literally every single one of those points is like, that's exactly like, that's all you. Uh -huh. It is. That's I think good. a lot of them are like that. I mean, I feel like that's a really good lines. Not that everybody follows it. I understand no, that. But I, I do think it's a good compass for us to mm -hmm. uh, at least try to point in that direction. I, I know we've been talking about all night, like, whose lines, whose goals, blah, blah, blah. These are kind of some good, um, a good uh, outline of what to Now we got to ask, T, are there anything, is there anything on here that you've seen that you feel like, meh, no, I don't think that one would work? 
No, I, I mean, I think I guess it depends on if you consider YouTube as a journalist. Mm. And I think that if you ask Judge Gall, <laughs> <laughs> right. she'd, say, she'd say that we're not. So uh, I mean, no, I no, I agree with I, I agree with that. I th this actually is so fitting to burden of proof. I just I can't. I, I really have tears in my eyes from laughing so hard at like the commentary. So no, I don't. There's nothing I really disagree with here. I know. That's some good stuff. There really is. I I don't think that there is, you know, there's obviously not a, a standard to follow for what we do here on YouTube. But I think those are good things to keep in mind. And one thing I wonder is, w will there become a standard that we have to follow with, when covering uh, true crime on YouTube? I know the, you know, the terms of service are constantly changing. They've got that whole um, AI pertaining to minors of true crime now. I'm, I'm curious as if to, we'll see more updates in the future of what we can talk about and what we can't talk about on this platform. I think that comes to YouTube itself, too, what it allows. Mm hmm The Gonzo journalist. I know what this is, but I got to look it up. Is like, it? is isn't it just like a citizen? Uh, gonzo journalism is a style of journalism that is written without claims of, of, of without claims of objectivity, often including the reporter as part of the story using a first person narrative. Was it right um, without claims of objectivity? Yeah, so you're base basically your bias, and you might even be involved in the story. So, like, if a journalist or a podcaster is talking and gets information from law enforcement on a case and that's what they're yeah putting out yeah it's an unconventional style of journalism that relies on the reporter's personal involvement in the story while traditional reporting relies on hard facts gonzo journalism takes readers a step inside the mind and feelings of the writer as the story unfolds um, it features the author as the protagonist simultaneously experiencing and reporting on a story from a first person point of view. The writer becomes a part of the story, portraying events through their own experience, which often offers readers their version of the truth. Gonzo journalism stories are often presented through the lens of social and self critique. So kind of like, um, uh, was like that one kid that like drives around the country showing different parts of it. You know who I'm thinking of? He's a YouTuber. It's kind of like Gonzo journalism. He just did a piece on the soft wide underbelly dude. I don't know if anybody saw, uh, sorry, it's off topic actually. You're fine, honey. Uh, just the, this talking about like, I don't even know if I'd say it's for me. It's beyond just ethics. It's wrong. I mean, ugh, what what Softwide Underbelly did with um, that young girl and showing too much of her body, yeah. and that whole situation. And then after after that, I did end up seeing uh, Los Angeles Police Department did have a flyer put out for her that she was missing because I had been curious about that during that whole conversation about him interviewing her and her mother saying she had run away and um i won't get too deep into it because some people may not know what i'm talking about but i did see a flyer it just happened to be right as i was deciding to not put out anything new mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah so something is out for her or was I, I oh interesting now. interesting so i was sent these like four hours ago i don't know if you all want to stay up here or not but um, so JLR is, oh Lord. Oh wait here. No, I got the, I got the redacted versions. I don't have to share what's on his, I forgot they sent me the, re like they redacted some actual names cause that can get, so this here is he, so actually I need to start here. The United Cajun Navy put this out earlier today where they said, good morning, everyone. We're going to start our expose with the guy everyone has been warning us about. Jonathan Lee Riches investigates. He goes by JLR, which apparently stands for just lies repeatedly. Okay. I read this this morning and that part uh -huh. I was like, okay, Shady, come on through with it. 
<laughs> That's a little salty there. JLR is a convicted felon who spent multiple stretches of hard time in prison, one of which the charges were attempted kidnapping of a kid who JLR claimed to be their own. What? So, yeah. So there's I'm some aware stuff of that. here I was kind of disappointed in because, like, there's so much stuff you could say that's factual about him. Yeah. But some of the stuff they put in here, I actually went looking and asking around, like, have you ever heard of this? Have you ever no. heard of this? Couldn't find anybody who had heard some of this stuff they put in. No, here. I've never heard of that one. I wonder. I wonder if they got like a hold of one of his lawsuits and misinterpreted what it was or I've something. Never, I've never. I've known. Of, I've known JLR or known of JLR. I, I should say I don't know him personally for many years. I've mm -hmm. never heard this one. Mm -hmm. Of all the things I have heard, <laughs> this is not I one know. of them. I don't know I if know. it's factual or not. I can't say that, but I've never heard this. I I haven't either. I have not heard that one at all. Um, he showed up to one of our early searches for Sebastian, not to assist, but to live stream it for his YouTube channel. He didn't have any interest in helping. He was just trying to get views and make money off of a missing child. When he was asked to either help or leave, he became very combative and threatened one of our volunteers. So our incident commander informed him that he either had to vacate the search or law enforcement would be called. After digging into his background, we determined that someone with his past and with the current medications he is on. Oh, my goodness. So he, that I felt like was wrong, too. How in the oh, world, with HIPAA being existent in the U.S., how um, in the world would you have access to that? I don't know. Well, actually, there's uh, a recent court uh not recent. I want to. Uh, I want to say it's like five years old. I don't remember how old it is, but it's a couple years old. Where it does the ruling does up. talk about his medication, so maybe okay. that's where they're taking it from. I would say. Otherwise, how would they know? Yeah. Um, uh, they're, they're saying that this is like essentially information from law enforcement when they're like law enforcement's been watching him and he's not allowed to be within hundred yards of a school. Because of yeah. this attempted kidnapping of a kid that he claimed to be their uncle. Yeah. 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 There's a uh, lot in here that it's like, ugh. We determined it's that like, some... Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. You're still reading. I'm like getting ahead of you. I'm like, this no, is No, no, just, no. You're fine. I was just thinking about this the medication. This is a professional organization that put this out? Yeah. yeah. This is the United yeah. Cajun Navy. And we no longer would tolerate him at any of our events. Law enforcement has been watching him for a while, and they told us to immediately alert them if JLR was seen within 100 yards of a school. Um, I mean, I have to believe them if they're putting that out publicly, but oof. After that, he went on several psychotropic-induced rants about UCN spreading demonstrably false information about our organization leaders and volunteers. He did spit spread some misinformation. Um, we know that he also had help and was fed some of this false information from some rival organizations who try to fundraise using names similar to ours. We will deal with those groups later. JLR spent a couple of weeks terrorizing the people of Sumner County. I don't think it was a couple of weeks, but he has now fled to another location because he found out law enforcement was looking for him. We know where he is currently, but will not share his location because we do not wish to be responsible for his personal safety. He's enough of a danger to himself. Oh, JLR suffers from severe mental issues and has not been in touch with reality for quite some time. If any wow. of our followers encounter JLR, do not approach him in any way. He is armed and dangerous with an extremely violent criminal history. He will be dealt with legally and sent either back to prison or to a mental health facility where he can hopefully get the help he needs, whichever the judge determines. Okay. But he, he didn't have a, uh, that I knew of, again, that's the other question I asked today is, I, that I know of, he didn't have a violent criminal history. Uh, well, yes, he has. Actually, it's not oh, one okay. that, it's not one that I shared in my video. Uh, but he does have some viol uh, some violent uh, crimes okay. in his past. That one is way back in his past, but he does have on his record a um, a violent situ situation. Okay, okay. Uh, I felt um, like like a lot of that was just like super unprofessional, and I feel like they could have said ninety percent of that just in a different way but i i mean i don't know i just 
there, he does enough to, you know, expose no need to add extras onto it personally. But and why did that need to be? Why would that even need to be a public statement? Is what I'm also trying to I figure know. out. Like if there, which I know, I okay, I kind of get it because that he came at them publicly and really started a um, a really big shit storm with everything that went down. But I feel like this was a lot. This was a lot. Um, I have his rebuttal and he posted this on his community page, but he said, re defamation of character with malicious intent. Dear United Cajun Navy, David Flagg, Todd Terrell, Brian Thrasher, John Doe, AKA Skip Parker, AKA Skip Butler, and then AKA Riley Lively. I am writing to address the defamatory statements and actions taken by each of you as named defendants against me, Jonathan Lee Riches, an investigative journalist and creator of the YouTube channel J JLR Investigates. Under the laws of the state of Florida, where Mr. Riches resides and the state of Louisiana, where the United Cajun Navy is registered as a 501c3. Okay, it's kind of funny that he puts that in there now, considering he was maligning them earlier in the week, claiming they were a 501c3, but I digress. And where Brian Trasher and Todd Terrell reside and the state of Alabama, where David Flagg and Riley Lively reside, it is unlawful for an individual to make a deliberate statement that intends to harm the reputation of another party without factual evidence or based on hearsay. Without factual evidence, or, okay, or based on hearsay. The knowingly, I'm gonna have to pull this up on my phone. I'm trying to read it off of the stream yard and I'm straining my eyes. Let me pull the document up. So is is he filing? Did he file a, a defamation lawsuit? I it's what it's looking like here. Um, a knowingly defamatory Facebook post authored by United Cajun Navy on March thirtieth, twenty twenty four, and subsequent comments made by senior officers such as David Flagg contain numerous false and malicious statements about my character and conduct. These include baseless allegations of criminal behavior, mental health issues, and threats to public safety. Such unfounded accusations not only damage my professional standing as a journalist, but also pose a serious threat to my personal safety. My question is, did you think about that when you were doing it to them? Like, uh, not like at he all, was ever. making a lot of accusations and yeah. there was a lot of crap flying. Okay. And it was found to not be factual. Yeah, well, a lot of it was. That's true. Um, specifically, the post falsely alleges that I am a violent criminal who has spent time in prison for attempted kidnapping of a child. See, that one, I, I, I will say, I do know his record. You know, when I did that deep dive video, I, I know what is on his record. There is a, and I didn't put this in there because it didn't, it, I don't know, it just didn't feel like it needed to with what I was sharing on him. But um, he does have a, a, a violent crimes case. Uh, like I said, way back. It claims that I spent a couple of weeks terrorizing the people of Sumner County and that I am to be considered armed and dangerous, that law enforcement has been watching me for a while. They also falsely claim that law enforcement told us to immediately alert them if JLR was seen within 100 yards of a school. Incredibly, the defamation continues in the comment section by United Cajun Navy senior officers, including David Flagg, who maliciously lies and characterizes me as a danger to volunteers and searchers and makes an analogy of his warnings about me, stating that it's the same as warnings they would give about deadly snakes, such as rattlesnakes and copperheads. <laughs> um it is outrageously defamatory to claim on a public Facebook page that I am a risk to the lives and safety of others. JLR, you've been out here accusing the, the Wells parents of being a danger. I've seen him accuse so many people who are not named suspects of these very things. But I guess all they need to do is send him a cease and desist, maybe. Um... The defamatory post repeats the knowingly false statement that I am armed and dangerous, dangerous with extreme violent criminal history and goes on to state that I suffer from severe mental health issues and am currently on medication. These statements are entirely false and without any merit. 
Not only are these accusations completely unfounded, but they are also pose a serious threat to my professional or personal and professional well-being. Falsely accusing someone of crimes constitutes um, defamation per se due to the egregious and heinous implications of those allegations. As a result of these defamatory statements, I have experienced significant distress and fear for my safety. Additionally, on 3.30.24, Riley Lively posted a TikTok video in which she fabricated an entire story about witnessing me behaving suspiciously, including claims of me lurking in bushes and sending spies to eavesdrop. I must clarify that I was not even present in the area during the time period in question. This false narrative has damaged my reputation and caused undue distress. I demand that the United Cajun Navy and Riley Lively immediately remove the defamatory posts from all of their social media platforms and cease making any further false statements about me. Failure to do so will leave me with no choice but to pursue legal action for defamation. Please be advised that I am prepared to take any and all necessary steps to protect my reputation and seek appropriate remedies for the harm caused by these defamatory statements. This includes pursuing damages for any loss of income, emotional distress, and damage to my reputation. I expect a prompt response to this letter confirming that the defamatory posts have been removed and that the United Cajun Navy and Riley Lively will, refer will refrain from making any further false statements about me. If I do not receive a satisfactory response and compliance with this cease and desist letter within seven days, I will have no choice but to initiate federal lit litigation in the Southern District of Alabama against the United Cajun Navy and its associates, including but not limited to Riley Lively, as the discovery process may reveal additional co-defendants. Be advised, this shall serve as a pre-suit letter demanding that you provide me with written assurance by April 6, 2024, that you will cease and desist from making further factually untrue statements. Sincerely, Jonathan Lee Riches, JLR Investigates. Attached is Exhibit A, the Facebook post and comments made by, which is what I showed you earlier, and the TikTok URL. Holy crap. Isn't that the girl, the allegedly girl from the Cyber Sleuth Paramount yep. Plus show? Yep. Yep. <laughs> She's the troll hunter. I'm, I'm going to look up and see what her TikTok was, if it's still there. <laughs> oh, that is interesting. Man, this is interesting because, like I said, you know, he kind of came out sw swinging on them. Yeah, I mean, honestly, they swung on him too. So, yeah, I don't it just know. Got, it just kind of, it just like it, it escalated so quickly. <laughs> like, yeah, like I he was video where he was like talking about them and was like, "Who are these people?" and like, "Who do they think they are?" And then all of a sudden, now like a couple I, was that I swear it was just like yesterday. <laughs> Maybe it was a couple days ago, and now we're like in a lawsuit and. Riley Lively's involved. Like I know wow. it happened so fast. I I agree. Um, let's see. Is it this one? Interesting. So did he put that out himself, or did somebody go and uncover that he filed a lawsuit? Did he? Did he? he put, it he put it out. It's on his Twitter community Twitter. page. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, you know, and I think put that. Was in, uh, I think he was. Like in like the Guinness Book of World Records at one point for yeah. the amount of lawsuits that he's filed, and he's currently in a defamation lawsuit with another YouTuber right now that's ongoing. So oh, yeah, really? he's oh not, yeah, he's did, yeah. did he start it or did they? He did. No, he started it. Huh. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um. Yeah, she has been lost in Delphi. So here's this. I don't know what this is, but this was a day ago. I don't. Maybe she took down the original one. Let's see what this is. Yeah, may I help you? Hello. Who's this? Who is this? Um, who is this, Richard? Who are you? Well, my name is Brent. I own Broken Spur Ranch. You called me yesterday. Okay. So is that your name? What do you, why are you calling me? 
Why? Well, we're letting the community know about you. So we wanted to put it. We what about the me? Yesterday. So we talked to the sheriff's office yesterday. We called him out because soon after you were sitting at the end of my driveway, we had I... you on video. There, that gentleman came down the driveway. So you guys are just out of control, and we as a community are going to make sure you guys get out of here. Okay, number one, that that man is local. He lives there in your community. Did you know that? Number, number two, yeah. You did? Yeah, the sheriff So you want to drive out, out your locals. Out yeah, the sheriff yeah, also absolutely. told him that they've had issues with you. I, everyone's had issues with me. It seems like it. Oh, my goodness. Okay. And if you want to threaten me and intimidate me, I'll let the whole social media and internet know about you. I just want to make sure that you guys are doing legal stuff. What's wrong with that? Hey, Deets. Okay, and that's why I was trying to make sure we don't park anywhere where we're not you allowed to. Can you pause it real quick? Um, uh, mm -hmm. Chat's not sure what's who. Yeah, okay. You're yeah. starting to write it. Yeah. I, right. Yeah, I was. I came back over to the screen and saw it. Yes, this is Riley Lively. She was, like Nanya mentioned earlier, she was on that Cyber Sleuth docuseries. Um, the blonde who uh, called herself the troll hunter. She outed who Dot was. And she, but she's now teamed up with the United Cajun Navy. I've seen that. So she's like a, I think she's the head of like their social media on what like missing, yeah like on the missing group on facebook the oh that's a terrible idea yeah here's, that here's new? this screenshot she's one of the admins and see i think uh, she teamed up with them during um riley strain's case and i don't ooh. know i don't know if she went with them to nashville or if she connected with them there but i did notice this a few days ago so, oh, yeah. that's 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 super unfortunate, truly, because mm -hmm. she's the one who said you could say anything you want as long as you throw an allegedly behind it. Is she? Yeah, and then you don't get sued. Mm -hmm. She's talking to a local near Sebastian's home from the Broken Spur Ranch. I I was trying to find what she posted about JLR, but maybe it's down. Um, yes, yeah, she, well, I don't know. We got corrected on that earlier, Eve. I'm not going to say she did. I thought she was part of it, but maybe not. So I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I called you out of respect for you. I wasn't well, doing anything. come down the driveway? As soon as you called and I said no, then he came He down was the trying to turn around, okay? That's no, it. No, but no, ma'am, that's a lie. It had nothing to do Please with your lie. property. It was the creek. I'm not lying. I don't he lie. Passed. He didn't. He turned around in Listen, the driveway and then came down. I don't know what he was doing. Listen, I have only recently come on with the UCN. Okay, I'm right. Oh. Listen, I help with missing persons. I've helped lots of families, lots of things. I don't know what you think of me and what assumptions you have of me, but they are incorrect. Oh, we pause real quick. I think of you. Yep. Hang on, give me one. So you know. The page that, that you just read that posted all that about JLR, mm -hmm. is that what she's an admin of? Yeah. Yep. My guess would be it's her who wrote it. Yep. That would I'm, be Well, guess. I don't know if it was her who wrote it, but she is a part of that. Oh. Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. It's just a guess of mine. That's all. Yeah. I'm not saying she did, but that's that's why I said just a guess. You would be it would make it would be It would make more sense in my brain. Then looking at their earlier posts, they're not like that. Oh, it's not blurry when I transfer it over, but hang on, I'll show you guys real quick. Uh oh. It's that just is a problematic. That's what I'm wondering here. Um... And so this so she called this gentleman, it sounds like on the video that we're looking at now, this ranch guy. She calls him the day before. He's returning her call, but he obviously knows who she is because he's talking about her being in the driveway. Mm -hmm. So here is, this is her with yeah, the that's right. Cajun Navy volunteer search for Sebastian Rogers. I think the other one is a Cajun Navy person as well. Okay, dokie, let's go back to this, I suppose. This could be, I don't know, this could be something. It's almost done. And, and we as a community, not just me.
Okay. So you saw how many people were standing around my facility? No, I didn't. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't. Okay. We drove by and we kept driving by across the no, street and no, kept going. No, ma'am. You sat at the end. No, you sat at the end we were the in a blue. I was in a blue vehicle with another local person, actually. I was in the passenger what? front passenger side of another per local person's car. Yeah, may I help you? Okay. So there was that. Uh, maybe this one. Do we have an estimated time of start for the search process? Call came in at 6.33 this morning. Great, thank you. Heading this in juvenile. Okay, now that's just initial radio communications. And with you? I don't believe even a little bit. I live in this community. Nobody's giving these people death threats. You're entitled to your opinion. I just find it odd they'd give me, you know, a case number and all of that for no reason. So, anyways. And with you, I don't believe. Yeah, I'm not seeing. Oh, wait, maybe it's this one. Ah. Uh... No, this is just about searching for Sebastian. Okay, I'm not seeing the one he mentioned, so maybe she did take it down. Yeah, I don't know enough about this situation to say anything, really. I This is all new mm -hmm. to me. I think that's just the search. Profit Nashville that helps parents. So... Huh. That's crazy. Ooh, that's like another thing though. Like so now all of this it's gonna get super, super messy. Let me see. Let me go to his to JLR's YouTube and see what he posted. I know him and Dolly were both going really hard on on the United Cajun Navy. Like really hard. I wonder if he took his videos down. Um, it kind of looks like he did. Yeah, I don't, unless he did a live on it. Let me see. Oh yeah, he did a live yesterday saying the United Cajun Navy gives up. Um. And then he did one calling them scammers, and that's still up as well. Let me see what his community post has. He's got that. I'm going to check their Facebook real quick and see if there's any updates from them. I just feel like what this ends up doing, though, is just kind of makes it about this instead of about Sebastian. Right. And it just feels heartbreaking. I think it's the missing page. Does anybody think, like, the Sebastian case has turned into like chaos much faster than other cases we've covered in the past. Yeah. And why, it, why do you think it is? I feel like it's the tolerance thing that I was talking about. That it's like when, I don't know, we build up this tolerance of behavior that it, this is acceptable. This is approved of, this gets the clicks, the views, the whatnot. And then the next creator next door is like, Oh, well they're doing it. And they reached a hundred, Okay, so I'm gonna do that too. And then you're getting more that are doing that same kind of behavior. And that's just how I've seen it. Is it I just feel like it's a a tolerance of what is acceptable or desired for content. And then it I guess it it just feels like it goes more rapidly once it's something that's already been been done, been there, and it's been accepted. Yeah. 
So they posted yesterday, anyone who deliberately impedes the investigation or search for Sebastian Rogers will automatically be considered a person of interest. As, well, who are they to determine if that person's going to be a person of interest? But okay. Um, especially when we know those individuals have extensive criminal records. We are finalizing some intel that we will be turning over to law enforcement, and then we will begin the process of exposing those who actively tried to stop this search. These people are dangerous criminals, and the good people in and around Sumner County have a right to know about the evil embedded in their community. This is far from our first rodeo. We are honored to have been embraced by prominent members of this community, law enforcement, and elected officials. Just because a handful of mentally ill people with too much free time get emboldened by online keyboard warriors does not mean we will ever stray from our mission. We cannot be scared. We cannot be intimidated and we cannot be told where to go or when to leave. We have had plenty of these violent types slapped with restraining orders, thrown in jail, fired from their jobs and many other consequences to those who threaten attack or threatened to attack. We have your voices recorded we have you on surveillance video we have your vehicle information and we have your full arrest records you will soon learn what happens when attacking the real cajun navy becomes more important to you than finding a missing child that is just uncomfortable it is especially so, that whole um mentally ill people uh, well i mean since you're calling out people for taking the time to make these comments you're calling them mentally ill while you take the time to make these comments yeah do you know what i mean like it's just like so one is who which one's professional here which is the actual organization versus the the guy on youtube because i'm not sure anybody could tell at this well point. and and i do agree with like i know shady had posted this and dolly did wish that their boats sink i mean could that be perceived as a threat? It could. Mm, maybe a dog whistle for, you know, for harming yeah. them. Yeah. Um, I wanted to make a correction. I was thinking that was Jenna, which is oh. the girl who said the allegedly, you could say anything you want except for just throw allegedly behind it. Oh. Um, so they were two, it was two different people in the video. So I had. Oh, in the cyber sleuth. Yeah. Yeah. I just remembered her as the troll hunter. So Snoopy um, says, I, I suggest that anybody research UCN before making a decision because these are issues that uh, with the group and not taking it for jail or just speaking the facts that they know. Um, I have deep, I have dove into I UCN. Um, there are several Cajun navies. Um, and then there's the United Cajun Navy. And so I did see where like the, the, the Cajun Navy, the, the original one was like, no, they're not part of us. I saw that whole mm -hmm. statement. There is, I think actually these guys are the original one. Um, but the I, one, I guess whatever it is, I was like, I just yeah. know that they're two separate entities. That, that's just like. I think there's actually three. But if you look up the United, United Cajun Navy, and this one's specifically based off of their 501c3, there's only one issue with them out there, and it's a lawsuit that um, they're deeply uh, entrenched in, and I think it was actually just kind of dismissed. Other than that, it's all positive. Yeah, they are the OG group. Yeah, they are. I that's how that's, yeah. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I should. I'm not going to speak on it because I honestly don't know any. I don't know enough about it to have any insight. Just that I can tell you that post is cringy. That's my insight. That, to that whole I give you that. Yeah. That post is cringy. And like I understand maybe their need for that post, but maybe it should have been worded differently. <laughs> like, um, yeah, their professionalism definitely missed the mark. Yeah. <laughs> they should take up. The it should take up with burden to proof. The OG group is now called <laughs> Cajun Navy Ground. Take on You're like, we're trying to minimize harm around here. We're minimizing right. harm. Right. I missed I missed that connection there. I was reading chat, so I'm not sure what who 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 is taking they, what they, up with me? They should have had you written write the statement. Oh yeah, it would, yeah. It would have minimized the harm being put out. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hop down, but I, I want to know because, I, like I said, I, I listened to the stuff about the case, but I'm not like I'm not entrenched in it. What mm -hmm. do you? Where do you guys think Sebastian is? This is the weirdest missing persons case I've encountered in a long time. 
honestly, um, because it's so obviously people don't just disappear, right? But they've got nothing based on if we are to believe the information that all of the parents have put out there and what TBI has shared, they, they have no information, like none whatsoever. And so I know his dad still thinks that he's out there alive and he could be with someone playing video games. And I, and I love that he's holding out that hope and I'm glad that he's holding out that hope, but um, I don't know. I don't know. It's almost as if, yeah, they're still telling people to check their property every day, twice a day. It's like they think he is hiding and lurking. They say that there, uh, one at first the father said that there was a scent trail. Now we're being told there was not a scent trail. Um, they have absolutely nothing. They have, uh, they showed uh bio dad proof of life so he was alive that evening and they did that was one of yes. my big questions was who actually saw him last besides the people that are potential persons of interest just mom i think and they say that they're not but and they said you know that he said that he saw the video specifically and this was just yesterday or the day before because he, he kept asking TBI for proof of life, proof of life. And they finally showed him a video of her and Sebastian at a steakhouse. And then they say that there's a video of them coming home and it's just her and Sebastian. I don't know if, it, if they've seen that video or not or if that's just what they were told. And then there's just nothing from there. There's no, no capture of him leaving that we are know, know of, that we know of. But that he left his house with no shoes on, and they say that that was a very peculiar thing because of yeah, a situation he ants. had with the fire ants. And the restaurant is the last public known place. Yes, that's what the, time was that? I don't remember off the top of my head, okay. honestly. I have a whole notebook upstairs, but yeah, it's. You have to get the notebook for that. I would have to, but <laughs> yeah, it was in it's, the evening. Well, it would be before six, I think, but um, I'm honestly don't remember off the top of my head. You thought I hadn't heard that if that is, but I haven't finished going through the interviews. They were they all three of them have been pretty adamant that he that all of his shoes are still at home and accounted for. My question is, is like, dang. When my sons were 15 years old, there's no way I'd know how many shoes they had owned. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, between. Kind of boys. My, my 15 year old is my daughter, on the other hand, is very different. But my 15 year old boy. No, I know. I, I could tell you how many shoes he owns. Oh, between basketball and and all the track and all their sports mm -hmm. and just they're they're both sneaker heads. So, no, there's no way I could tell. Yeah how many shoes they own but she's very adamant that he had three pairs of shoes so and they're all at home so oh she did finally say how many because last i knew she was like not she gonna did. say how many yeah. she was like not gonna say how many shoes he had which i thought was a very weird thing to keep secret i was like okay <laughs> yes they are separate and there's a there's lot of like peculiar things they came out originally saying like there's no access to the internet for him and then later on in the interviews, you hear that like he FaceTimed and he, mm -hmm. he like he, there was other, a little bit more access. So then it's like, okay, well, is it possible he had a Gmail? So it's kind of like, okay, well, there's a little bit more access to the internet than you originally thought. It sounds so, like, yeah, he would definitely had more freedoms to do, to get online and have internet access at dad's house than he did at mom's house. But I don't know if that still put him in, in contact with anyone nefarious. Um, this is a head scratcher. This case is, it, yeah. it truly is like the, is the general consensus that he just walked away. Well, the general consensus on social media is that stepdad and mom have some sort of involvement. Yeah. Left and that's alone. strictly based right now from what, mm -hmm. what I can see. Um, is that that's based just off of how they interact and how they answer mm -hmm. questions. 
yeah, yeah. I could absolutely and, see that. That's and it. the stepdad if, uh, if, if, if we're him. thinking they're not involved is he is anybody actually thinking he was lured that he is with somebody or so, is this a, like he wandered away and I don't see the wandered away as much as I could see lured. Lured, yeah. Like I've got a cool Minecraft game. I'll come over and show you, or Minecraft toy. I'll come over and show you. And so he goes outside real quick just to see the toy and snatch. Mm -hmm. Like uh, that, I that is a more like of a probable thing in my head than like taken. And, mm -hmm. and I feel like, I feel like that's what what Seth, his dad, thinks is that he went with somebody, and he claims that the only way he'd go with somebody is if he knew them. So they they do say there's no scent outside the house. Um, Nicole B says, you know, like her opinion is that he walked away, and that's completely plausible too. They had several dogs there, and there was no dog, like several dogs, and they did not find a scent, but. I mean, well, well. To be fair, Deese is still at part two of interviews. I so right. further on in interviews, there is some confirmation from one side of the family of sense. Mm. Um, but again, nothing from law enforcement, just from what the family has told us so far. Yeah. And where was the where was the scent found? The one that they talked about, they said was on their property in the like in the back of the house. And okay. down the trail to a, a retention about, uh, pond, I think, is what it's called. Yeah. A retention pond, maybe? Oh, into the, the retention. Yeah, the retention pond's only, like, knee deep. And I think they ended up draining it, yeah, too. Yeah, they did drain it. Yeah. Lured or ran away from all parents, in Nicole's opinion. He could have used a classmate's device on the bus. That's possible. He did ride the bus. The police would be able to. Yes. And, and law enforcement has this. And so this is the part that I struggle with of him uh, being lured away is because he left his phone. He left his wallet, his key, like all of his things that, you know, he might typically have on him. He left them at home. They also found in his room later, like this uh, bank that he had made, I think out of Legos that he had all of his extra cash stored in. So he didn't take any cash with him. He didn't take any clothes, any belongings. The only thing mom said that she can't find and therefore he might have with him is a flashlight keychain and so mm. i don't i don't know yeah there was a trail that led to the pond is what the dispatch audio said but i didn't know if there was confirmation that it was actually his scent that led them there or whatnot But man, it is leaving. If Nina isn't lying, Chris is dangerous. Yeah. I think with the Nina situation, and this is just my opinion, you have to take into consideration, and I'm not calling her a liar at all, but you have to take into consideration that she is an ex. And so obviously exes are going to be speaking very favorable of one another. She's also an ex in, in the midst of a long custody battle. and. I think that I don't know if she realizes the it, the the backlash that could come from this. I think it's more of like, ooh, let me go on and say all these things, and it could harm his case, but then it could also harm hers too. So, I, I just think that that's something you have to take into consideration when listening to her. Um, I don't want to call it a story, but like in, in in listening to her interview of what she shared. I what happened? I always think of uh athena strand yeah oh, yeah. i think that that particular case made me very hyper vigilant for myself to not immediately go i know what the statistics say about parents mm -hmm. and i get that but even the statistics have a percentage where it's not the parents yeah so i try and like be very mindful to not directly go there first thing or to put out you know anything that is going to go after them in any way even if I have those you know thoughts myself at times I always yeah. think of her because like the stepmom was number one suspect in everybody's book and and you know look what happened just in a matter of minutes you know so for me it's Cleo Smith and 
the fact again you could still do the statistics on it but then you also add this with that one it was the interviews with the mother and the stepfather and everybody was sure that at least the stepfather had something to do with that they were positive and he, he i don't a lot of people just thought he was strange he behaved strange and he it had to be him and then also the fact that it was in the middle of the night they were camping in a tent how do you not hear a tent be open yeah. and get unzipped and take her and her sleeping bag and so yeah a lot of people were accusing and it was terrible and come to find out no in fact a man absolutely unzipped the parent side of the tent first oh wrong side and then went over and unzipped the so that all happened and the parents did not hear it because people weren't accounting for the wind which they said it was windy and so the tent was flapping anyway that night but um yeah this man absolutely went and pulled her right out and and drove and it they found him actually living pretty close to where they were and he was actually following the mother on social media and seeing her like begging and pleading for whoever had her to return uh -huh. her back and and it was like sick too it's his weird doll wanting a real life doll and uh but yeah people were all over the parents on that and just off their behavior of interviews just similar to this one so i've always been pretty careful but with theirs that really um even further enforced with me that you cannot just go off of their interview what they say or how they're behaving but yeah her case really taught a lot yeah i feel really bad uh, when i look into the updates on her too the fact uh, yeah. that she's she still has night terrors and mm -hmm. oh, it's heartbreaking. That's wild. Kelly Dimes said it's only, I, I, again, I don't know what the source of it is, but she said it's only 4% of children are abducted by a stranger. That's super duper small. That's I know it's a very tiny percentage, um, a very small percentage, but the, but the big percentage of, well, she said abducted. I thought she meant missing. Um, yeah, I know it's a very small percentage. Um, like Leo, Leon said, it, Leon, yeah, Leon said here he can't even tell the time, but or army organized too. They did bring in the national guard. And that's the thing with like the TBI newsroom. They they even talk on there about um, when it comes to like analyzing the data and stuff. It's TBI, FBI, and even the Secret Service. And so I feel like. They're doing all the things. I just can't. It's not producing anything that I'm aware of. There was one of the search teams. I caught the end of an interview with one of the search teams. And I don't remember which one it was, if it was the Navy, Cajun Navy one or EquiSearch, but where they said that they really think law enforcement is going to have something soon. But I, I kind of like what I put in the back. I don't know if there's any stock in that at all, you know? Yeah. And I'm kind of with moderator. It's been a month. You would think they would have some by now, but but there have been missing cases where you know they find people months and years later. But this one's peculiar. Curious. Does that percent, uh, if Kelly, if you know, because I I haven't looked into it myself personally. Uh, do you know if that number is adding in because? It's abduction, but does that also add in those that are considered the runaways, but they end up actually, in fact, being picked up by a predator? Or is that a whole separate class with percentage of runaways that, I mean, I don't know what, I don't know what class I would actually put that in at that point. Runaways that are. Later abducted? <laughs> I, yeah, I don't really know how else how you would divide that that. Yeah, from yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I agree with you, Eve. It's very strange that in some cases, if a parent is cooperating, they're assumed cleared, like with Michael's case. But in like Sebastian's, it was completely different. You have these parents who have been assumed cleared, and people are still like guilty, guilty, guilty. It, it's it's wild watching this stuff unfold online. It truly but, is. But I think isn't the difference, and I could be wrong, but isn't Behaviors. the difference? that um 
that law enforcement actually made a public statement that that in Michael's case they were cleared and law enforcement has not made a statement in this one. We just heard it from the family. So law enforcement in like these cases, they'll never come out and officially clear anyone. It just, oh, it's okay. just not going to happen, but it, they did later, but not in the beginning like this. It was, Oh my gosh, it was over a year afterwards. They said that, um, the family is not the focus of our investigation at this time. And they continue to work very closely with law enforcement. Um, mm -hmm. That was in Michael's case, not Sebastian's, but yeah. Yeah, okay. they don't clear him out loud and publicly. Mm -hmm. Well, they could clear stepdad, right? I mean, if, if he actually was out of state and he, his alibi he, is checked out, he could technically be cleared as, and they have last proof of life. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what, that's what bio data said is that, you know, they were, they have all been cleared. They have said that, but they, I've never seen a case where they have came and cleared them publicly in a missing child's case. I, I just haven't seen it. It doesn't mean they won't, but I have not seen it. Yeah. So, I mean, cause there's always still that chance of involvement. Right. And I guess that's what people hang on to. Um, well, the possibility that they're second. sold. I mean, shoot. Yeah. Look at Kamari Holland. Her own mom, her own mom went public oh saying, my hey, please, please help me find my daughter. I don't know where she is yet. She'd sold her to some creep in another state for 2,500 bucks to do sexual favors. So that's, oh, oh, that's and one case. That is one case. I absolutely did say mm -hmm. publicly that something is not right there. And I'm not saying for a fact, but I'm telling you my opinion is something is very wrong here. And I just, yeah. I got the gut. Oh, ugh, it was my goodness. And then when it came out, it was even worse than I expected it to be. Oh, mm -hmm. my gosh. And when, and didn't she just get sentenced and, and it's not very much? Yeah, she did. Yeah, she doesn't give. She didn't give very much. He's still got to he's still got to go to trial, though, because they want to give him the death penalty. So they still have to go to trial to prove his guilt, even though he's admitted guilt because he just horrendous. wants it to be over. He did horrendous wow. things to that baby. Oh, horrendous. it was horrible. It, it's horrible. Mm. Um, I, I th she should have got a lot longer in my opinion. <coughs> I, I am curious how, how many times mm -hmm. have you followed a case from like start to finish from the moment the person goes missing or is found um, deceased all the way up to the person is sentenced? Uh, I, yeah. I, well, I'm not sure who you're asking. Not, 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 not numeric, not a number of times, but just like, oh, I do it all the time or, Oh, yeah, it, depending lot. on the case. That's a always lot. been once I follow yeah. it, I'm in. I'm in it for the long haul. Okay. So uh, I mean Malia Davis, Kamari Holland. Well, I also keep a running list of any cases just so I can always check for updates on them. Like I have an actual yeah. list. Yeah. Um so I can check and I like check for hearing dates and trial dates and things like that. Um oh did Malia Davis, Davis did they get a conviction? He he pled. Yeah. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah, that dude was a piece of shit too. Um, I, like, I remember when like True Crime Daily was like on TV, and he went and did his first interview where he was like, "The Hispanics came and stole her, and they dumped me out in the desert." And I was like, "Uh, nah, -uh, nah, -uh, that did not happen." And then it came to where like he was like dropped off at the hospital, like in his car, like what an idiot. But at that point, and that poor baby. Oh, that's a whole other thing. Um, no, it's most cases if I if once mm -hmm. I'm in it, once I'm in it, I'm I'm in it. Um, but from like start, those would be the ones that I could say. Chris Watts. I mean, shoot, I was in that one for even longer after that guy was even sentenced. Um, mm -hmm. Even when I was young, even when I was young, like I remember watching like everything that was going on with like Nicole Brown when when she was killed up to the arrest. I I literally was standing on the side of the freeway when OJ was driving by, and then I watched that entire yeah. He drove right by us, <laughs> like five miles an hour. Well, he didn't drive, but you know he was yeah. in the car. Um, and I, I watched that entire trial. It was I, I recorded it on VHS just so I could watch it. Um, Kaylee Anthony, that was another big case oh, for me. On VHS, I'm sorry, we need to pause there <laughs> on VHS. We, I we recorded just, it on VHS. We, we, can't VHS. we can't just bypass that like you didn't just say VHS. I did it. Uh huh. <laughs> I did it myself, and I did. I recorded that shit on VHS, and I I watched every bit of it. Um. Scott Peterson, another one. I, I watched that from start to finish. So I was going to ask you, I'm glad you brought that up. What do you think? Scott Peterson, guilty or deserves oh, no, a new I, shot? 
I don't know if he's guilty. I think that he. Ha- I don't think he had a fair trial. Okay. I think that there was some issues with the jury, and I would not be surprised to see him back in court. Same, same. So, but I don't. I'm, I'm not going to go with. Do I think that he actually didn't do it? I think there's mm-hmm. a lot of flawed things that happened in that investigation that could have gone either way. So I, I'm. I, but I don't know. I'm not going to say I, don't, I think he's innocent because I'm not there. But I also, you know, I think that they screwed up a lot of stuff. So, yeah, Casey Anthony, that was start to finish. That was probably one of the first ones I was like, I had just had my oldest son and I was watching like all every, because Florida like lets all everything out. They don't give a shit. Yeah. They're, you know, they're like, here's all the prison interviews and prison conversations and all that. I watched everything I could on that case, watched it when she was found, named my daughter Kaylee. I, I just felt like that was like really? when I just fell in love with that little girl. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow. When I went to Florida for work, I went out and visited the site where she was found. Um, yeah, it was, that was, that was deep. That was, and that was an emotional time for me to stand in there where she was found and realizing how close she was to the road that entire time. That was tough. That was a tough I went, one. I stopped where Gannon was found and it, it, it that was emotional. Just like, that would be tough for me too. That would Ooh, be a tough one. I don't know how would. I don't know if I could do that. I went, like where, um, I went to Chad Dorman's house mm-hmm. and I just stood there and cried. I was going to go live and like show people the area and like how close everything was. And I couldn't, I just stood there. I just stood there and cried. You could, you, the feeling of sadness was, and I was alone. There wasn't anybody else there, but it was just so palpable, like what should be there and what wasn't there anymore. Like I just stood there and cried. Um, I'd like to know Burns' answer too, but um, can you repeat the case where you said the mother um, uh, sold the daughter? They were wondering what the name of that case was again. Kamari Holland. Kamari. There you go. Okay. Mm-hmm. Bob, yeah, how about you? Oh, sorry. No, you're good. Yeah, I was just saying, yeah, Kamari, I just posted on uh, my community wall a few days ago about the updates on her case. Did you all pull that up while Bob's telling us hers? It's it's tough though. It's a tough read, and it's only um, and that's only a, that's only a very minimal part of what happened with her. That's terrible. Burton, how about you? Do you follow him start to finish? Yeah, I, um, I, well, yeah, because I normally am starting right at the jump, like as soon as something gets put out that somebody's missing or whatever the crime is and so i mean some like the i've talked to deets about this Mm -hmm. and nicole actually too about me starting cases right at the um, the, as soon as it comes out to the public and then i stay following it giving updates and then and then later other people start to realize and pick up on it and cover it and and then it you know it's so i've I've talked uh, about that a little bit too, but um, yeah, so I do. I start at the beginning and recently with my thoughts on am I harming by my involvement at all, I have obviously been in a rut. I say it frequently when I'm ending my streams that I have updates on X, Y, and Z cases and just haven't um, put them out because I, but I never expressed what what my thoughts were and why I was having a hard time. But um, so yeah, not as much lately since since my mindset was kind of shifting. But yes, I I've always started from the beginning and then followed it through. And I'll I'll even follow if they give updates later about how someone's doing after the fact. Um, I will. I'll never dig into someone's life though. Go hunting down, looking and digging. Yeah. Like, where are they now? And no, if they want their privacy, that is exact. That is all there is. And I will always respect that. Uh, but if they have come out and it shared how they're doing, however long after, I'll give the update on that too. Mm-hmm. But I don't like to start something, tell people about a case and then leave them hanging, not knowing. A lot of people kind of like why some look really deep into the cases they want to know the completion they want to know the full story of what happened and what the outcome is so um yeah i like to follow them all the way through especially uh those that are for justice if it comes down to 
charges and a conviction. It's seeing through the, the justice of whatever crime has been committed. Oh my goodness. No, I agree. Hang on, I'll pull up. I, you know, I, I honestly, none of yeah, So people can see her little face. Oh yeah, sorry, hang on, I'm on the wrong side. Here we go. Okay. Look at this sweet baby girl. Uh, She's oh, so beautiful. Oh my God. She's the first case that mm. I got emotional. Thankfully, it was the press conference and I was muted. Uh, but yeah, she's the first one. I was in utter shock. My mouth hit the floor. I, I could not believe what I was hearing. I was so angry. And that's where I started. I was so angry at what was done to her. And the mother infuriated. But since I, I'm not a, a breaker, I don't like smash my own stuff. And I don't flip out on stream and swear. I try not to anyway. I it turned into tears and I started crying. It, like, yeah. oh my gosh, they're they're horrific individuals. That poor baby. Gosh. So, I and I would be considered like a baby when it comes to true crime because a lot of like the missing cases that I followed um, haven't even. Most of them haven't been found yet, but. Um, I'm the same way, but any case that I pour my time and just my time and heart into, yeah, I follow to completion. That was tough at the uh, beginning of last year. Three cases went to trial at the same time. Yeah. Uh, like, Gannon, how am I, how am I going to do this? <laughs> Gannon's Murdoch and no, uh, was, the boy, the Cal city boy. Yeah. That no, was uh, Ballo. Vallow and oh, Vallow. Yeah, I think Murdoch was right after. And so th and, and here's the thing is like I didn't oh, really right. I knew about Murdoch, but I didn't like I didn't want it was one of those cases like I just paid attention to. I didn't dig into it because it all was kind of uh, like unfolding at the same time that a lot of the Lori Vallow stuff was, and it was two two very deep cases to try to mm -hmm. get too far into. And I remember like I was just live one time and people started talking about Murdoch and I'm like, all right, let's just talk about it. And then all of a sudden I was just in it. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I need to know anything and everything I can. I but like, okay. was like crazy because the West trial was only audio. You could not replay it. You could not stream it. You could not record it. So you had to listen to it mm -hmm. live. Lori Vallow, they were releasing the audio at night. At night. Yeah. Yeah. And then Letitia Stauk, I was watching it live while it was happening. And then yeah. also trying to keep up on what was going on with the with the, the West boys. I was just like, this is it was a it, lot. I was live trying to cover all three cases. Like, oh man, I was like, why, why can't you guys just come on? Mm -hmm. And I was bouncing around through creators, listening to all of them. And and I would and so what I would do is I would have one creator playing uh Gannon's trial on yeah on my TV and then I would have the uh, classic and sincere case in my ear because like you said, we had to listen to that in real time. And then after all that was done later that night, we'd go, I listen to the Vala one. And I think I went over to hidden true crime and listened to it there, the Vala one there, but that was, that was an intense while with all that. And then you're right. Murdoch did come right at the end of it. They think they overlapped a tiny bit, but um so Sleuthy sent me this and asked what we all thought of it. So oh, Jennifer Koffendoffer writes, hashtag okay. Sebastian Roberts. All the parents hurt that child. Wait and see. Are they lying to cover their abuse or did they kill him? Or is this why Sebastian ran? I am praying he ran and will be found. But all of this information indicates why he may have left. The question is not whether there are contradictions or inaccuracies. The question is why. What are they covering? We need to find Sebastian. He has disappeared without a trace, but the traces of possible abuse have been exposed. There will be more. Oh, gosh. That's pretty bold to say all the parents are Dutch. I don't, I don't know. Coffin Daffer does whatever Coffin Daffer wants to do. She don't she give a shit. She sure does. She, I she think she's it. trying to monopol monopolize off of this whole tragedy pent movement, if you want to call it that. Like, she's perfectly. Yeah, she started her own YouTube channel. Shut up. Yes, yeah, she did. Uh -huh. I'm totally looking that up. Are you? I did. What's yeah. it called? Jen, I think it's just Jennifer Coffin Daffer. Jennifer Coffin Daffer? I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, she does some podcast 
whatever. I don't know if it's connected the same thing or not, but yeah, podcast. So she's like on there like fixing her hair because she's like already live and doesn't know she's live. So she's like fixing her hair and her lipstick and stuff. And then she starts talking. I'm like, Shut the front that? door. Break the case yeah. with like, Jen Poppendoffer. Holy cow. I did not know she had a YouTube channel. I'm going to subscribe so I can debunk her. <laughs> You think I'm joking, but I'm not. I know you're not. That's why I'm laughing. Hold on. Go go to the go to one of the lives real quick. Let me see if I can pinpoint which one she was doing that. Um, I think it's this 11 minute the Delphi update one, the 11:24 one. I think it's that one. Start with that one. Let me see. Yeah. Oh. Sure. Yeah. True crime. <laughs> That's totally me, Jen. Don't worry. That's me. Like, oh crap! I was trying to like, clean my hair. My, my hair and mixture. I'm like, oh god, you're disgusting. <laughs> she's so. I'm sorry. She's so much fun to debunk, though. She really is. Oh good. And I think what makes debunking her extra fun is the fact that she was in the FBI. And I'm like, mm. but she gets a lot wrong. True crimers, <laughs> welcome <laughs> to break the case. I'm going live again because the Delphi case is really um, so important. Uh, this is a case that two girls were viciously. Oh my goodness! I'm not gonna. Keep Are going we allowed to say that it's possible she may have found somebody else's blinks? Yes, she found the blinks. She found the missing blinks. You're right. Break the I, case. Is Oh my goodness! So, did she retire from the FBI? What What is her story? I don't, I don't know. even know. I don't I've even know. But things. I've I'm, never looked myself, but I've heard some different things about her. I, I think that so is what makes stuff it tough, wrong though, and it has a very <laughs> biased opinion instantly on cases. That I just would worry if you know, like if she had reinstatement rights. In my opinion, I, that'd be worrying. I it's concerning and like this is what this is the FBI like she was she's from the FBI I mean like and then we go we're we go oh look we have all this faith in our law enforcement and <laughs> and then this is like what you ah I struggle the fact, the fact that she was the one that was so wrong talking about uh Amber Alert here in New York and she decided that she wanted to be angry at the police department. New York State Police and they screwed up. They should have put out that Amber Alert sooner. But, but like getting her and all of her audience enraged with them when it's like you of all people should know that there's a criteria that needs to be met and it wasn't met. But law enforcement was still able to push for the Amber Alert and get it. So in fact, they would deserve credit for doing that instead of bashing and ripping them down. And of all people, she should know that. I was so I was not pleased with her. At all during that case. Mm -mm. I love I've already. Paused that, though. Yeah, hang on, listen to this. The facts of this particular evening. This particular night ended up being one of the worst blizzards ever to hit Canton. They had over 20 oh inches God. of snow. Over 20 After inches of snow. After he was found, they did that not happened. have it that night. Yep. Oh, like, oh, God. I'm like, I've already got one. <laughs> That's just yeah, you're gonna have fun with this one. You're gonna. Have, I, I don't know. I don't know. Oh my I so glad, I'm so glad I turned this on for you, or told you to turn this on. Oh my god! Dietz's inner tier one is acting up right now. I know. Yeah, it is. I got. What is this? I got the minimize harm, Jennifer. <laughs> Minimize harm. That's right. Minimize now I'm gonna be looking up like what is the FBI's like code of ethics. I want to know that. Um, I don't know. People are asking like, was she? I don't know what she was. I don't know. I really don't. Um, Penny, yes, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna cover Scott Peterson. Um, hopefully getting his uh his actual day in court. Absolutely, they're in they're in uh court hearings through 715 um, not consistently though i think they're just, they're all scheduled out but i'll have to double check on that as many have said i've i've lived too much in delphi i've got to get out i got to get out of indiana 
<laughs> yeah, you need to branch out a little bit, but it's coming to head, right? Like when's when's their trial? May thirteenth is uh, May thirteenth is set for jury selection currently. So you think they'll stick but, with that date? Uh, right now, it's looking like they are, but uh, you know, you, things can always change. Things can always change. But as of right now, she's already sent out the jury, the jury questionnaires, and oh, she's cool. got her docket put aside for it. So that's where we're at. We'll see what happens. I am. Um, I've been deep in uh, Karen Reed too. So that's, what oh I my want. gosh, that, that's my, that's the one that I want to go. That's the one I want to be like covering. And it's like, ah, there's uh -huh. just not enough time in my days. I swear I need more time. I am obsessed with, with that case. I'm, I'm so I'm in it to win it with that one. I feel like there's, it's my Delphi for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like your Delphi. just so passionate about that case. There's, it's a lot. All there. Right, so I I'll do Which a one? Delphi for dummies. You do a Karen Reed for dummies. Karen Reed for dummies. Yeah. I know. Oh yeah. She does that for me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> hey, big Al. Hey Matt. Um, yeah, that's a disappointing sure. post right there. Just saying. Oh, I didn't even read it. Yeah. That. So Shady sent me this and says, she was like, oh my gosh. Um, SF investigates. So another, he says, if you are someone that supports United Cajun Navy, please comment. I support UCN in my comments so we can mutually block each other. We have different values. I don't have any interest in knowing anything more about you, about what you do, considering you support an organized crime group that operates under the cover of a public safety organization. Like, holy shit, everybody's just out here slinging mud. Um, a criminal group that continues to make threats against people. A group that is running, ruining goodwill between search and rescue and law enforcement that took years upon years to build. You are harming missing persons cases. You are blinded by your hate for certain YouTubers and failing to see the damage they did and continue to do long before and after those YouTubers are gone. UCN is not public safety. They are public nuisance. Um... You are free to support who you want, but there is no reason for us to follow each other. Another another person who built their following off of Kylie Rodney. Kylie Rodney, that's what I was gonna say. Like, dang. It really is unfortunate that again, like it's just like it almost feels like I didn't get enough attention here, so I'm gonna like go cry to my mom. Mm. And really, you aren't even supposed to be there to get attention anyways. It's a shame what they are doing. Well, yeah, but you were like publicly denouncing them. Like, oh. oh. oh no. All right. Well, uh, we got anything else? If not, I think I'm going to hop off here. We got Easter. Yeah, no, I'm done. Out. I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm sleepy. You get, you get, you've been going five hours. I know. I'm, I this know. Is a really I was a good conversation. It was a really good conversation. I'm always here for the good ones. And hey, at least it's not 14. I did a 14 hour stream the other night. Oh, God. I know you do. I don't know how you do those. That's crazy. Because I, I, don't... Tell you, I, I I'm going to walk away from this stream. And when I go live, I'm going to be thinking about minimizing harm. Minimizing so, harm. That's what I'm taking away. That's my takeaway from all of this. Oh, See, God. and I'm, I'm taking away. Let me tell you my takeaway. My takeaway is. Just because I may see the family or the person, I need to also be willing to see it as the story. Yeah. Like you need to to balance both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. I take right, away Burden. that I am very strongly still in tier one. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried so hard to see, but anytime it gets to tier two and three, I'm like, oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> so I it love that about you, Bird. You're like, I know who that. I am. Sorry, yeah. I'm tier one. Yeah, it I was am. a great, it was a great talk, but I, I, yeah, I am so firmly stuck in that. Uh, I, oh yeah, but it, it was I mean, a good talk. I think it's great to know who you are and what you're about. I know who I am. So. Oh. Good. Which yeah. which tier were you, Deets? I don't even. All I remember is tier one because we talked about it so much. I don't remember <laughs> what the other two tiers like. I don't remember which one was which. Well, we know you're not three. I I think I'm somewhere in between the two because I can see things like oh three's the stories, tragedy. Okay. Like like Karen Reed, I could talk mm -hmm. it all all day every day without mm -hmm. the emotional connect. It's probably just kids. Kids yeah. is probably more of a 
like emotional area for me. Mm -hmm. um, probably kids and self harm. Those probably be the two yeah. emotional ones for me. But like like the Karen Reed case, I could talk about it all day with, you know, I mean, obviously compassion, but with taking mm -hmm. all the emotions out of it. Yeah. Okay. Wait, real quick question. What, what did you think, or all of you really, what did you think about the coverage on the three men in Kansas city that were frozen, that were outside? Did, and they, in regards, I guess we could go with the tier three, but even though they weren't going there, mm -hmm. some of the theories that were being put out, yeah. the conversation, the the lighthearted discussions on it, um, was there any, did you feel anything was kind of crossed at all there or, or no? I See, think I... Oh, oh sorry. I was just going to say, like, I watched a few of the beginning news coverage of it, but then it just mm -hmm. went crazy in tier three and I back completely away. I can't even tell you what, what's going on in it. Yeah, it I think for me, I watched, I watched the beginning of it, but once I kind of had made up in my mind, like something obviously happened, which, you know, toxicology later on, um, I, I was like, there's nothing else to watch. Like, the family mm -hmm. needs to just go grieve. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Is, is that still, like, a topic out there? I don't know. Yeah. I watched the initial news coverage. I watched mm -hmm. up until um, the toxicology came out, which was pretty much, I think, what a lot of us were assuming happened. And it yeah. just kind of yeah. confirmed it. Um, And then, I yeah, that was it for me. Yeah, I'd assume we don't. We haven't heard anything on it because those that were heavily covering it, to me, don't seem to be the ones that follow anything through. That they don't <laughs> seem to really start it, and they don't seem to ever truly finish it. That's, That's my true. opinion. Though. Not Nanya throwing shade. That's burden. That's not even or me. burden. Sorry, I meant burden. And not say, not go ahead. Not burden really. throwing shade. Nanya's <laughs> getting blamed. <laughs> um. Oh, I would say that it has to be none yet. Yeah, right. That's, I'm so used to saying none you sh throwing shade, and it, I couldn't even get burden out of my mouth. Um, but but yeah, no, that was ridiculous. I to me, I was so disgusted seeing like you got them doing spirit box garbage, and I'm like, what oh, are you? Choosing? I see. I didn't even know they did that. Yeah. Oh my gosh! They, yeah, I, yeah. I, didn't, I, didn't, I, I don't, I don't watch anybody who does spirit boxes. Just not my thing. Um, but, but I will say that once they, like, once the toxicology came out to me, it was like mm -hmm. on law enforcement from there, like wholeheartedly. And I think that, like, to me, anything, any coverage that would have been out there at that point would be. Like the conspiracy theories and they're covering this up and trying to let this person get away with something they did. Mm -hmm. Like it would be all the salacious, dramatic stuff. Kind of so, like, like how Kylie Rodney's case was once the. Um, yeah. Once she was found. Came out and spoke on it. Yeah. 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 Um, so to me, it's like, I don't. Yeah. I wouldn't follow it from there because, you know, it, even the news, I mean, honestly, even, even the media doesn't cover it from there i mean they they're they're gonna put out the toxicology came out they'll put out that they arrested somebody yeah you know there's something the crazy starts. happens like in the court case or something like where other people are you know involved or there's something like where that person you know that he might not he, you know he might not get charged i could see it coming really back up but other than that it's kind of just a most likely a case that will end up in a plea deal and be done yeah i agree I agree. I so. I think that I I easily reside or I can easily slip into both one and two and back and forth. And okay. I think that just with just always trying to keep the victims in mind. That's what I always do is that yeah. no matter what I'm covering, no matter what I'm talking about, whether it is, you know, debunking something or actually covering it, just I try to keep put myself in their shoes or if it was my loved one, what would yeah. I say? And I'm always, always trying to be mindful of what I say publicly on this platform, even if only, you know, 300 people are watching or 3000. Like I just I'm trying to be careful, especially when it comes to victims and their families of what I, 
what comes out of my mouth. So I'd but say I I'm, more, think. I'm more two, but I could eat, I, I do mm -hmm. in certain cases fall into more of a one. And I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know. It's a great point though. on what is the difference? Like Nanya says for her, it's like, like kids cases are different. Mine, I don't know what it is. I don't know yeah. what it is. Cause like, like I said, like there's some that like I have that Letitia Stouk, mm -hmm. I have like that hatred for like, I, and I know it's not the same as I feel for other people, but I don't I get, so I don't, but I don't know why. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I get what you're saying because like, I don't have like, you know, I read through Oakley Snow's uh, stuff. No, the affidavit, no problem. And the, um, uh, the Athena Brownfield one, like I, I, I didn't struggle with them at all, but then there are some cases that, that, that do just hit differently. And it's like, yeah. Oh, this one's hard, but I, I don't think it's necessarily a, a child's case. It might it's be weird. I don't know why some hit different than others do like that. They and it's, yeah, it's definitely not just kids because I'm thinking like with like Suzanne Morphew, like that case gets me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, Alyssa, so I'm, I don't know. Alyssa Taylor is an adult, and hers gets me too. Uh, yeah, Leela Cavett, that's another one. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't know what makes it. I don't know I don't why either. it goes from one to the other. I don't know what makes it change, or and I guess that's something else to probably keep in mind when we're watching other people's coverage is maybe like their yeah their in-depth feeling of that case isn't the same as ours. And then maybe Absolutely. they don't feel the same about the case that we're covering, you know, that Absolutely. we feel that way about, you know? Yeah. I agree with that wholeheartedly. It's, you know, we might just be in a different tier doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. It might be in a different tier just for that particular case for some reason. Like that, even that's Burton, one thing like I, Kamari had. Holland, I was a tier two. She was like, I'm a tier two for Kamari Holland. Mm-hmm. Well, and I feel like that's where, like, that's one thing I've taken away from listening to your channel, T, is that, and I like to repeat it, is that just because we don't agree on this case doesn't mean we're not going to agree on the next one. And it is so freaking true. So that's why I don't think it's worth getting into, like, hate over a case. Like, it's it's not our case. It's not... Yeah. We don't have ownership of it. And just because we, you know, I, I talk frequently with individuals who we see completely opposite sides of cases. And guess what? We can still talk like adults and have conversations. And it's wild when I see people getting into, you know, brawls outside of the courthouse over cases. It's right? so well, that actually that, that, that became like personal because they're like, they're actually going at each other on a personal level, but that's a whole nother story. I but know, it is, but that's where I'm at. Well, because, I did that in the Watts case. I was that person. So that was like a learning curve, you know, like, and I tell people like, you can go back, you'll find me fighting with all kinds of people and saying really not nice things because I was right and they were wrong. And that's just how, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm like, but that was a, like, then all of a sudden like that case was over and we're, we're talking about the next case. And I'm like, well, shit, I agree with that person on this case, but I already called them all kinds of names and got blocked from their Facebook group. So now what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> sorry y'all we're having a midwest goodbye here but um yeah, oh, sorry. Sorry. but i mean that's One like how it ends up and i was like why, why was i fighting with that person again because yeah exactly well, like, that that was one of the reasons like interpretation has been so heavy on my mind. And I, I took that from Bob at defense diaries, like him saying, you know, what, you know, they can't lie. Cause that was a big thing is everyone, you know, claims defense attorneys lie or the prosecution's lying. It's like, no, they're all officers of the court. They're not allowed to lie, but it, it's their interpretation of things. And so I try to also now keep that in mind for other things as well, even just those of us talking about true crime. Like just because I see, I have the document, I read the document and I interpret it this way and you interpret it that way. It doesn't mean we have to hate each other. Just be like, oh, well, I interpret it this way, you know? So yep. it's definitely something to keep in mind. And now people get mad. They're like, why aren't you blocking these people who are on their channels, like talking shit about you saying that? I'm like, because I don't care. Like, I just don't. They're mad about the case. They're mad that if I have a different opinion on a case, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to fight with them about it. Now, yeah, personal so attacks are different, but I'm not going to fight with them about the case. That's just, I learned my lesson. I need to clip it. I don't clip anymore, but I wish I did because <laughs> I want to go back and clip you yelling at that one guy in your chat that one. <laughs> He came in and called me stupid. I was like, I was, you. I was like, oh no. shit. Here we no, go. I, I, blocked I blocked him and unblocked him and he blocks me and unblocks me. I don't know. It's just one of those. It's just one of those. Oh, how it goes. Now, the riot act is my favorite. But, 
Is this yeah. the crafting drama page or is this the um, crafting and story time? It's the drama page. I was going to, mm. uh, if you, got, you guys don't have to stay up here, you can hop down if you want. I was going to play on the way out the Australian mug drama Breaking that got out of control. All right, <laughs> you do that. I'm going to, I'm going to go. I haven't even gotten ready for bed or anything. It's like 1.30 in the morning. It's later for you guys. I know. But. I know. It's three for me. 3.30. It's only one. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, it's like a Saturday night out with the girlfriends. I'm like, hey. Well, yeah, I appreciate <laughs> it. I'm so glad you came up, though. Thank you for letting me hang out with you for so long. Thank you for not yelling at us and blocking us. <laughs> <laughs> I know, especially with me and my hard line on tier one. Thank you. No, Good talking okay. with you. I love your tier one. I, I go to you for your tier one. So please yeah. don't change it. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. You know, and thank you guys for just like, like, just you know, being open and having conversations. That's like, it's so productive at the end of it. I'm like, I feel like I'm walking away like with a new awareness of certain things. So and that's what I, I appreciate love. it. If we can't do that, if we're all clones of each other, if we all have the exact same opinions and thoughts yeah. and theories, how are we going to grow and learn and change and do better and all that stuff? So yeah, yeah. I, I, I appreciate, I appreciate you though, for, um, you know, being accepting of, where I stand and that we can actually just be respectful with one another and mm -hmm. in conversation and getting understanding of where they stand. And for me with you personally, when you mentioned that you, you aren't as heavy into the bringing awareness, you're like, that's not the point of what I'm doing. I'm not here to put out the awareness, but I am here to, to really look into these cases and understand them. And that helps me have an understanding of your mindset perspective and, and purpose of your channel, rather than me sitting and questioning like why are you doing this how is that no why why would you right and then i'm sitting there like having my feelings her over and don't anybody take that like oh you're so hypersensitive it, I, it was just a no, way of wording it we're but. minimizing harm around here i don't know if anybody's caught on to that yet but that's what we're doing <laughs> minimizing yeah, so it just helps me to understand your mindset and and reason for your channel and, and, and your approach at things. So mm -hmm. um, I think it was a good discussion and uh, I appreciate it. Oh, I'll you. leave it on a, on a defense diaries note, like family hug. Group hug. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you guys later. Bye. 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 Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Yes. 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 Are you two going to stay up here for the bug drama? How, you how long is this? It, I'm not going to play the whole thing. It's 24 minutes. I'm not playing the whole thing. I'm just going to play a little bit of it. Okay. I'll stay up here. I think I can do one and a half speed too. It's just so funny. And I'll drop the link to this channel because it's just funny that I, I'm like, I found the, the craft drama. <laughs> like I found it. And this chick is hilarious. Look at she says, breaking news. TikTok, TikTok girls, girls are in some drama. drama. Okay. <laughs> News. The Australian TikTok girlies are in. Oh, that's a little too fast. Let me go to 1.25. She does talk fast. Drama. The face off today is between two Aussie creators, Shelby Sherritt and Sofa Dofa. I'm wearing a silly shirt today because this drama is a little bit silly and I wanted to keep the mood light, okay? First up, we have Shelby Sherritt. She has 2 million followers on TikTok and is a potter. No, not that potter. This potter. <sighs> and I guess technically, according to Google, she does use the term ceramist instead of potter, but I just, I had to throw that joke in there. I'm so sorry. Her TikTok has videos of her making mugs, dishes, and little trinkets using pottery molds. This is an important distinction to make now that will come up later. But basically, if you have no idea the way molds work is that you just pour liquid inside, liquid clay, I guess, into the mold, then you let it dry, then paint it, glaze it, fire it, and then she sells her pieces. And this is like, instead of like hand spinning at a wheel, or making pottery in some other way. Shelby then does drops of these products on her website and sells pieces in person at art markets. I would categorize her account as an art account. She primarily shares the process of creating art and her studio. Though of course she does also do brand partnerships and falls into kind of that like influencer category as well. Next up is Sofa Dofa. Sof is an Australian lifestyle influencer with 1.2 million followers on TikTok. She primarily makes content about her life, her outfits, daily vlogs, gym videos, etc. She also has a clothing brand all for Mimi with swimsuits and pajamas. Her TikTok, definitely not an art account. It is just like a the way she's like, she makes content about her life. Like, <laughs> it's just cracked her. Yeah. Oh, this girl, she's she gets there an influencer account. And the final character for today is the Strawberry Mug. This mug was created by Shelby Sherritt as a part of the Strawberry Shelby Collection. Strawberry she has two mug. handles. She's very cute, but her price is causing a big stink on TikTok. More on that later. But you know what's not what? causing a big stink? The sponsor of today's video, Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription that lets- Okay, I'm gonna skip through the sponsorship. Good for you for having one. But we're passing it.
So what happened? As is often the case in dramas like these, people are very quick to take sides. I'm Team Soph, I'm Team Shelby. So let's go through what happened, then I'll let you decide if you are Team Soph or Team Shelby. Or maybe a secret third option. The story begins at the Finders Keepers Market in Sydney, Australia, that took place from December 8th through 10th, 2023. This event had food, art, jewelry, accessories, candles, clothing, and of course, a lot of ceramics. Shelby was vending at this event. Tickets for entry to this event were $6, and it was a fairly popular event because it's happening before Christmas. People are going to buy their Christmas presents and support local businesses. Okay. So on one of the days, Sofa Dove went to the market. Shelby uh, says in one of her videos that the vendors and the organizers of the event were really excited when they heard that Soph was coming to the event because there was a possibility that she would shout out the market on TikTok or any of the vendors if she bought anything from them. So they knew she was coming, they recognized her, knew who she was, and they were like, this is great, maybe we'll get some exposure from this. We'll talk about what allegedly happened at the market in a moment, but that's all you need to know for now. At some point after the I love how she timelined the, the craft drama here, Nanya. I just... So uh, much yeah, respect. I'm liking it. I'm definitely going to have to sub up because I'm <laughs> liking it so far. This is cracking me up. Wait till we get into the actual drama. This is hilarious. Market. Soph posted an eight minute long Christmas present haul on TikTok talking about what she got while she was at the Finders Keepers Market. Basically, I was at this market, the Finder Ke Finders Keepers Market. I can't figure out what day she posted this on because it has since been deleted, but based on some comments and speculation, it seems like she posted it around the time of the market. This did happen sometime before Christmas because she mentions not being sure who she was going to give some of the pieces to. This, I actually have no idea how many to give this to. So she has since deleted this video, but she re-uploaded the portion where she was talking about the strawberry mug that I mentioned earlier. She doesn't name the business that she bought the mug from, but she does make some comments about the cup being tiny, a sippy cup, and her surprise at the price tag. How can you just cut right? It's actually like a kid sippy cup, which is silly because it's ceramic, so if they drop it, it's smashed. She says when she was looking at it, she didn't notice that the mug had two handles, and she certainly didn't know how much it cost until she was checking out and tapping her card. But I did say that. I thought it just had one handle. I was like, oh, that's such a cute mug. Like, I'm just going to get it. Like, I was like, whatever. Like, I'll just get it. Didn't ask how much it was. She's like, oh, no. She's like, it's all good. You can tap. Fucking look at the FBOS machine. $125. Look how small this mug is. Like, it's literally tiny. She, like, fully wrapped it and put it in a bag, and, like, I was about to tap. She's like, there's no way I can be like, no. I could have, but I would have felt really bad. It's so breakable. It's like hand ceramic. It's like hand ceramic. Hand ceramic, you know? Then at least a month, yeah. maybe up to yeah. two months later, depending on the timing of all of this. But like. Okay, so what was $125 in Australian to US yeah. dollars? I don't know. Somebody will Google it. Okay. I'll work on that too. But, but what is hand? So that was your question. My question is, what is hand syringed? I think she meant hand ceramic, like it was a hand. Oh, like made by hand? Yeah, made by hand. Hand oh, ceramic. Okay. I, I thought, wonder, maybe it sounded like shade for a second. And I was like, wait, is this, was that supposed to be? I wondered. Yeah, I don't know. She's hilarious, 8-6. Why did you not tell me about her sooner? She is so funny. I watched <laughs> all of her videos. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Time has passed. Shelby stitches Soph's Christmas haul video with her side of the story. In Shelby's video, she starts off by thanking Soph for supporting her business. I just wanted to say thank you so, so much for supporting my small business. It means so, so much. She says that she spends hours finessing the pieces and that it always means a lot when people support her. Shelby then accuses Soph of lying about their interaction. She says it's really disappointing that Soph would critique her prices because Soph also runs a small business, her clothing brand, and knows how much goes into it. It's also deeply upsetting to have someone not only question you as a business owner and lie about how I interacted with you, but to also have you question my pricing when you too also run a small business and you know how much goes into every single little thing that small business does. The thing that's also upsetting is that you came to the finest keepers market and do you know what? We were all so excited. When I spoke to you, I actually recognized you because you'd just been nominated for a TikTok award. And I said, hey, how awesome. Congratulations on your TikTok award. I then explained to you, like I explained to every single person that came to my store over that weekend, that all the prices were placed on the bottom and you can pick up, handle, you don't have to purchase anything. You can just enjoy my store because I get it. Times are tough right now. And this is where we start to see a little bit of confusion about like what. So there she's going to break down the confusion, but that translates into um, $81.50, which in my opinion, that's still pretty freaking high for a ceramic cup. I, I don't, I don't know. That seems like a lot. I've I mean, a lot here on pottery. YouTube, we've, we've seen candle wars, but I've never seen a ceramics <laughs> a price tag war. So I'm here for it. I should tell her about the Candle Wars. <laughs> oh, yes, that was a good one, too. The Wool and um, Folk Fiber Arts Festival scandal. That was so good. 
Okay, I know. I'm geeking out. Sorry. Actually happened at the market. So Shelby in her video says that Soph walked up to the booth and was picking up pieces, like picking up a bunch of pieces. Shelby told her that the prices were on the bottom of the mug. So she was picking them up, looking at the bottom of them, putting them down. Shelby says that her and Soph talked a lot about the strawberry collection. She was recommending different pieces that she might like. I watched you pick things up and look at the prices. You picked up a number of pieces of that strawberry collection because it's freaking cute. And then I showed you other pieces that I had left. After that, you handed me the mug that you were going to go. And I was like, awesome pick. And I asked you, like I asked everyone that weekend, whether you would like tissue paper or a bit more padding because I wanted to make sure that the piece was safe wherever they were traveling to that day. She says that if Soph is unhappy with her purchase, then she can email Shelby and she'll issue her a full refund. Shelby then says that that mug is very special. The reason it has two handles is because it's considered a dignity mug, which is basically an accessible option for people who need multiple handles to hold their cup for any variety of reasons. This is why this mug has an extra loop. Each is a functional, but they look and feel just like a regular mug. Most accessible cup designs look like bigger versions of kids' sippy cups, but the people using them are grown adults who deserve the dignity of comfortable and elevated drinkware. In particular, that mug is really special. So I've did never heard of just, that. Wait, did that lady just pull a mug out of a garbage can? No, it's like a kiln, I think. I think it was a kiln. Yeah. Okay. Adults who deserve the dignity okay. of comfortable and elevated yeah. Oh, well. Or something. Something okay. to do with it. It does kind of look like it came out. It looks like one of those ones you put your foot on the little pedal and it opens up the top. Yeah. But okay. Yeah, yeah I didn't know does. that either, but I think that's pretty cool. But I, I did. Yeah, I'd never heard of a dignity mug. It's wild. Elevated joint wear. In particular, that mug is really special because it may look like just a sippy cup to you, but it actually falls under the dignity mug category where it has a double handle to help people that have different needs and different disabilities that require two handle mugs. Anyway, thank you um, for supporting my business regardless. Uh, and thank you to anyone that's bought one of my pieces. It, um, it means a lot to me. So then a few days later, Soph responds to Shelby's video by stitching it. So they're doing like a little stitch chain. I am making this video because I am so confused. Soph's video now has 10.8 million views. In this video, she says, on my mom's life, I did not touch any of the items. On my mom's life, I did not touch any items. In Soph's video, she says that she actually never talked to Shelby. Instead, she spoke to someone with very long brunette hair. She says she has never seen Shelby in her life and isn't even sure if Shelby is the one who owns the business. This is my experience. I remember going to the Finders Keepers Market, looking at this store and being like, this is so cute. I walk up, there was like a little like, um, like barricade thing you had to like line up because the store was really popular. So I stood in the line, I waited, I waited, I waited, I waited a while, got to the front and I just wanted to have a look at some things. I looked at all the items and I remember talking to a girl who had long, dark brunette hair. When I looked at the mug, I couldn't see that it had two handles, but I wouldn't have bought it, but I thought it had one handle. Soph makes a fairly good point and says, why would I lie about this? Why would I say that I didn't know the price if I actually did know the price? Like that just doesn't really make any sense. Why would I lie about this? Why would I make a TikTok saying that I had no idea what the price was if I knew the price? I saw that it said $125 and I thought, in my personal opinion, I thought, well, I didn't expect it to be that much for a little mug. Not saying the price. I never said anything in the video that the price wasn't worth that, that it was not deserving of that price. In Shelby's video, Shelby had implied that Soph was saying that the mug was not worth the price. She says, I never said the mug wasn't worth that. I just said I was surprised when I tapped my card. But if we watch her video and how she talks about it, she does kind of imply that this mug isn't actually worth as much money as she spent on it. Like she does not say the word specifically, the mug is not worth that much money, but she does make a big deal about how it's such a small mug and it has two handles so she can't gift it to anyone. She is now making this video saying that I was picking it up. I looked at the price on the bottom. I looked at the price of a few things. She's telling me that she talked me through the price and that she talked me through the whole strawberry collection. This did not happen. Soph says that this story that Shelby said 100% didn't happen. People should take things they hear on the internet with a grain of salt. And even if it did happen, she didn't actually say anything bad in the video and she didn't mention the business's name. And to Soph's credit, she does actually repost the section of the video where she is talking about the mug a few days later. And I will say the video of her talking about the mug doesn't make her look completely blameless or like in the right in the situation she is like taking a certain tone of voice and obviously expecting that the person who made the mug will not be seeing the video especially when you know why the mug has two handles the way that she's talking about it does feel a lot more disrespectful implying who possibly could want a mug with two handles this is horrible i wish i'd only gotten one with one handle there's no reason <laughs> for anybody to have a mug with two handles so if ends the video like if this is their drama <laughs> Yeah, if this is the worst thing they've got going on, I'm here for I it. know, right? I'm so here for it. But like, you know what it reminded me of, as we were talking earlier, is the, about the perception, right? Yeah. So yeah. people watched her video and perceived that she was saying, you know, that the trash. mug wasn't worth it. And she was talking trash. And then, then she watches that lady's video and she perceives like, I never... 
you're saying I was there talking to you. I never talked to you. And like, <laughs> boy, I tell you. But I mean, she's not wrong. 8150, that's the US dollars, is pretty high for a mug, regardless of what it is. I'd be like, I mean, because I've done that before, you know. But I I go to vendor shows a lot and I've bought things at vendor shows where you get up there and to pay for it and it ends up being like double what you thought. And you're like, oh, okay, I still want it. And then you get home and you're like, why the hell did I just spend a hundred dollars on a reef? Like what? <laughs> but and it's kind of, I think that's what it is. Is She got some buyer's remorse. She got home. The, the mug was, had the two handles. She wasn't expected. And it was like, crap, I just spent $81 on this. <laughs> I guess to make the TikTok, I don't know, it just feels like it's kind of trashy, but uh, who was it that said it in here? 10 million views on these videos. Like, that's how serious it becomes insane. Holy cow. Oh, crap. Hang on, we'll, we'll go back. I was at the wrong spot. Or I hit the back. By the price, still paid for it because I was awkward and I wasn't going to be like, oh, I'm not going to get that. Like, I was awkward. I still want to support this small business. God forbid that I make a little comment on a TikTok. And very interestingly, all of this is coming out right around when Soph's PJ collection is supposed to drop. Her, the pre-orders for her Valentine's not Day PJ, PJ collection, collection opened on February 1st, which is right oh, around when God. Shelby posted that video months after the fact. Whenever things like this happen, there's always <gasps> people in the comments that are like, oh, it's just a PR stunt. People are just faking drama for PR. But I have to say, I don't think these people are good enough act. Like we hear that though with the upchurch stuff. Yeah, like, manufactured you know, drama just because it, it brings the views. Mm -hmm. Is it or isn't it? There's mm. to have faked all of this, and I don't mean just Soph and Shelby, but like people in general who are influencers don't have the level of like acting chops that it would take to pull off a stunt like that without anybody finding out. And that's not saying it's never happened, but I feel like when you do see something that is clearly a publicity stunt it comes off pretty like disingenuous and like kind of obvious. So if this was in fact a planned PR stunt, good for them because I'm buying it. So after Soph posts this video where she's defending herself, Shelby then deletes the video that she had made, presumably because the majority of people had switched teams at this point. It seems like Shelby's video when she posted it at first was getting mostly positive reactions. People were going to Soph's page and saying, why did you slam a small business? Why were you lying to harm them? When things like this happen, if people don't have more information, they're very likely to just believe the first person that they hear the story of and then go to the other person's page and start Start making comments. We've seen this happen all the time in so many things. And this is like what blows the drama up from just like a misunderstanding between two people or a conflict between two people and what escalates it to a public level when you have all these commenters expecting a response. But then right. after Soph posted her follow-up video, people switched up real quick. Most of the comments oh. on Soph's video now are uh -oh. positive saying like, yeah, girl, 125 for a mug is crazy. So sorry you're going through this, Team Soph, Team Soph. People are also, of course, <laughs> weighing in, making little TikToks here and there like, oh my God, I'm so invested in the mug drama. I just can't. The fact that so many people are so into the mug drama. <laughs> Listen, I'm not going to lie. I I love my For You page. And when things like this happen and I see a little stitch incoming or something, I'll go, you know, I'll go on YouTube like, okay, now or on TikTok and search for like, I need to see the original. How did this start? Where and how did we arrive here? And I will go through every single video mm -hmm. that I need to back and forth to figure it out from there before I make my decision on it from there. But now I'm not a commenter on it. I don't comment on it. I just watch it because I'm like, oh, this is good. I need to know all the deets. I know. I, I, that's why I love her channel. Um, She actually d also does like a fiber arts channel. I think she crochets on her other channel and she created this second channel it's it's actually pretty large um so emma in the moment she has over a hundred thousand subscribers just covering the drama in the craft world self-aware said if it was a magical mug maybe i mean can it turn water into wine <laughs> <laughs> that's a spiritual mug <laughs> Uh, it's a strawberry somebody i think liza uh, said that it's ugly i think it's cute but it's cute I'm but not an 81 dollars and 50 cents cute no definitely not i think it's cute for like a kid but i wouldn't buy a kid pottery either so that's kind of where i'm like so he said i think the name dignity mug is exploitive <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> i wonder if they call her out for that
drama. What's going on with the bug drama? What team are you on? What side are you on? Shelby is obviously filtering her comments now, probably with the words like mug, strawberry, so 125, because there is not a single comment, positive or negative, on any of the videos that I could find. And Soph still has a ton of comments talking about it, so she is not doing the same thing. Okay, so I do think that this back and forth of like stitching videos and telling their story in little parts is a bit confusing and I at least found it hard to like parse through who is saying what. So to get to the bottom of this, to figure out if we are Team Soph or Team Shelby, let's see how it went down from each of their perspectives. And nobody wants to hear my attempt at an Australian accent. So I've asked my Australian friend, Jamie. So wait, who who's, so are we Team Soph? If you're Team Soph, put in that you're Team Soph. If you're Team Shelby, put in that you're Team Shelby. I want to know what you think. Okay, wait, is it Soph or is it Soph? Soph, like Sophie, oh, okay. I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they will call us out. The root of marriage. And which is which? Which one is the mug maker? So, um, that was a good question. I thought I do. <laughs> I think uh, Sophie is the. Yeah, Sophie's the create. No. Shelby is the creator of the mug, and Sophie is the buyer of the mug. Okay. All right. There we go. I thought I had it right, but I had it backwards. So, thank you for asking. Me of Say the names one more time. Record a little voiceover for me. Huh? Say the names one more time. Um, Sophie is the buyer of the mug. So S O P H, Soph. Okay. And Shelby is the maker of the mug. Okay. Right. To really fill out this skit. Thank you very much, Jamie. So here's what happened from Shelby's point of view. What a lovely day to sell my wares. Look at all these happy customers. Whoa, Soph. Sofa Dover from TikTok. Congrats on your TikTok award nomination. Go ahead and look around my booth. All the prices are on the bottom of the cup. Don't feel like you have to buy anything. You can just enjoy my store and my pieces. I know times are tough and things are expensive. I like that strawberry mug. Can you show me? Yeah, so that one is $125. There are also some other pieces in the strawberry collection if you're interested in something different. There's the milkshake mug, which is $140. And then over here is the, nah, I'll take this one. Would you like tissue paper or more padding so the piece is protected? Yeah, that's cool. Thanks, girly. Okay, that will be $125. Go ahead and tap your card whenever you're ready. I just want to say thank you so, so much for supporting my small business. It means so, so much. I just wanted to say thank you so, so much for supporting my small business. It means so, so much. Oh, I can't wait to post a TikTok about this business and why that was horrible experience I had that no one ever orders from her ever again. What a rip off. And here's what happened from Soph's point of view. This is so cute. I'll just wait in this line here. Oh, everything looks so nice. I love your long, dark brunette hair. I don't want to take too much of your time and ask too many questions. Oh, that's such a cute mug over there with one handle on the shelf. I'll just get it, whatever. I'll just get it. Yeah, that's all good. You can tap right there. Tap really quick, please. <laughs> no going back now. Ooh, $125? I didn't expect it to be that much for a little mug. That's a little more than I was planning on spending, but it is really cute. And it would be super awkward to back out of the sale now that it's all wrapped up. So I guess I'll just get it. And it is like hand serrained. It's like hand serrained. Wait, this thing has two handles? What the fuck? I guess I really should have checked beforehand. Too bad the booth was so busy and I was so stressed about picking a piece. I guess I'll just film a quick little haul with all the things I got. And honestly, I don't really know where understanding their stories gets us. I don't think either of them really has a good reason to lie about what happened. Like, what would their motivation be? What would they possibly have to gain from lying about this pretty inane? Inane? Is that a word? Like, truly, what would either of them gain from lying about this? Okay, so one of the reasons I think this drama blew up the way it did is because everybody in the comments felt the need to weigh in about their opinion on the price of the mug. This mug was a huge ripoff. This was a big time ripoff. That's not actually that much for a thing. Do you know it's actually only $80 USD if you convert? I think there's two sides to this argument, and as an academic exercise, let's argue both of them. One side <laughs> is price is too high. This mug does not compare to the market rate of other mugs like this, and Shelby is overcharging. The other side is the price is fine. She's a small business, she can charge whatever she wants. And basically, if the mug is worth it to someone at that price and they buy it at that price, then it's a fair price. So I'm gonna start yeah. with defending the price is too high argument. Something a lot of people have been bringing up is that Shelby uses pottery molds to create her pieces. She doesn't like hand sculpt them, I'm not sure if that's the right word, or throw them on a wheel or anything like that. People seem to be pretty split on whether this counts as handmade or not. I'll talk more about this in a second, but I am inclined to say that if she's making it with her hands, then yes, it is handmade. Small I agree. Like if you're, I, I don't care if it's in a mold or not. You're like taking the time to yeah. put in the effort. That's handmade, bitch. Like it's handmade. And that's time. Like that's really yeah. what you're paying for. It's not really the product. It's the and time it's it a takes spiritual mug. That's right. Craft that and right and it's a spiritual mug. I didn't say it at any point during this drama decision of anybody making her buy that stupid thing. <laughs> I don't know if it's the fact that it's 4 a.m., but this is just extra funny to me. 
All business pricing is really hard. You don't want to undercharge and not be paid for your work and then undercut other people in the field. And you also don't want to overcharge and alienate customers so much that nobody buys your pieces. So I saw a lot of comments of people saying that $125 is a crazy price for a mug. So I went through all of the other pottery ceramic vendors that attended the Finders Keepers market and found each of their most expensive mugs slash most comparable mugs to the piece that shall be made. And what I found is that the other pottery at the market all sat in the $40 to $60 range. Oh. And I'm gonna show you some of them because they're really cool. So this mug from Authit is $45. They don't have any mugs, but this is just like a really cool tumbler. This mug from Baked Earth, $44. Samantha Robinson, $45. And this oh, one comes with tea. B. Bellingham sells this mug for $58. Pinched by Navina, $60. Public Holiday, $60. Air Made, $60. There were some slight outliers, of course. I found this mug from Menem Mug uh, for $88. It has boobs and a bird on it. Then this oh. mug that looks pretty big. Oh. I need to go back and see the boobs and the bird. Look at Yeah, there. hold on a second. I got to see. Boobs and a bird. Look at that. Not yet. Oh, yeah. There's bumps. <laughs> there are bumps. Oh, that's interesting. That bird's got boobs. <laughs> Why exactly would you want birds and a boobs? I don't know. I, I didn't even notice oh. it. Wow. Uh, it adds a touch of nature to your everyday sipping experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what I think I love the most about this video is the amount of effort and research she put in to yeah. this mug drama. Yeah. Video. <laughs> she I'm had here to know it. if it was, you know, a roundabout or above <laughs> going market rate. I respect that. Oh, the bird may be a blue tit. Is that really a bird? Huh. A blue tit? Is that really a bird? Yeah. I'm totally going to be looking that up. Huh. A spiritual $2.99. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> oh, my goodness. From Menem Mug uh, for $88. It has boobs and a bird on it. Then this mug that looks pretty big and has a handle that is shaped like a dog. This is the most expensive one that I could find. This is the Camtot Large Dog Handle Mug for $110. So while I do think small businesses should be able to charge what they charge, if you look at the market rates, Shelby's charging a lot more than other people. And then on the flip side, let's talk about the argument that the price is fine, she can charge what she wants. First, I wanna say, my experience with pottery is that I tried to do like wheel thrown pottery and I managed to create some pretty small, kind of messed up looking bowls. I'm really proud about how the bottom That's of this cute. turned out, but the outside color is not what I thought it was gonna be. So this is all my experience with pottery. The other experience I have with handmade ceramics is as a consumer, I went to an art market in Ann Arbor a while ago and I got this really sick dragon mug that I will not drop. And I like this a lot, it's huge. If it's like a lot of coffee in it, I think I paid $60 for this, which is kind of a lot for a mug, but it's really, it's a really mm -hmm. cool mug. And I would rather have one really, really sick mug than a bunch of less cool mugs. I'm one person, I don't need six $10 mugs. I need one $60 mug. Back to Shelby. Oh, okay. Regardless of the mugs yes. being created in molds, she still has to purchase supplies, pour the clay, wait for it to dry, fire it, paint it, glaze it, store it. Other related costs include, but are not limited to, possibly renting a studio space or renting a home that has a space she can use as a studio space, paying her employees, paying market booth fees. I found this great TikTok that explains a lot of what I'm thinking here really well. Althea in hell on TikTok says that things are worth what people will pay for them. They talk about how things may have value to you, but other people might look at it and go, that is a crazy amount of money to spend on that. One example for me is a mug. It is worth a lot of money to me to have a really nice mug that I can use every day for my coffee. Another example is yarn. To me, spending money on some fancy yarn every now and then is worth a lot to me, but someone who doesn't knit or crochet might look at that purchase as frivolous. And you can say the same for nearly any other hobby or anything else that people spend money on, like art, electronics, makeup, model railroading, <laughs> fishing supplies, knitting needles, furniture, you get, you get what I'm saying. Some people like spending a lot of money on pottery or they like spending a lot of money on a product that supports a person that they like. And the biggest argument for the price being fine is that people are buying them at this price. Mugs are not an essential item. She can market them as art and she can sell them at whatever price she wants or needs to make ends meet or God forbid, make some profit on something that she spends her entire life doing. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this as well. The reason that I wanted to argue from both sides is because I think that this is a complicated topic and it's one that comes up all of the time. I'm team Soph, I'm team Shelby. I need to know if we are team Soph or team Shelby. I think I like this <laughs> <laughs> so she's just gonna play through that. I'll probably get hit with that. Let's and what's the moral of this story? What can we take away from this? We Everybody go. just seriously needs to relax about things like this. The reason it got this far is because people took parts of a story that they heard, they didn't know what was going on, they didn't have the full context, and they just ran with it and started accusing people left and right of lying, of like doing this on purpose to hurt a small business, this and this and this, when like 
I think probably they're both a little wrong and they're both a little right. People are allowed to complain. Like, should Soph have posted that TikTok complaining about the price? Maybe not. Should Shelby have posted that TikTok talking about how Soph was like slandering her business? Maybe not. Should people defend themselves online? Maybe. Should both of them have just not talked about it at all? I don't know, maybe. At the end of the day, these are two people that are on TikTok, but they have full lives completely outside of their presence online. It can be super easy to make snap judgments and decide that someone is a villain and someone is a hero, but in real life, things just aren't that black and white. It'll be interesting to see what happens between these two, but I hope that things just kind of fade into the dark after this. That's all for now. Everybody relax, and I'll see you next time. Everybody relax. Everybody I like, relax, please. I like the end of it, though. Like, yeah, sometimes it's just interpretation, right? Look, I said I wasn't going to play the whole thing. We played the whole thing. Right. <laughs> I'm team don't be shady. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, that's all I got, y'all. It's Easter. Big Easter plans. I'd be all in the active chat because I pay whatever they say if I'm in love with the bird. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. No, I'm not, I don't have big Easter plans, but I do wish anybody that celebrates Easter a happy Easter. Yes, yes. I'm excited for crew to drool all over the gifts I got him because that's about all he's going to do. Oh do my you gosh. Have Can you tell Easter. the tackle box story? Oh my goodness. So today I was uh, during tummy time. I babysat him this morning and um, one of Morgan's best friends got him for Christmas, this like little fabric my first tackle box and it comes with like a little fabric uh like uh like a stuffed animal but it's like a fishing pole and it has a little string with like a velcro ball at the end of it to catch the three or four little fish that come with it right so he's on the floor playing with this it's so freaking cute and he had on like a knit beanie and i took a couple pictures of him i turned around to set like my phone down and I turned back around and he's he had put his head down and started rolling in the toys and the Velcro fishing pole got stuck to his baby. So he had like two fish and a fishing pole like bobbing around in his face. <laughs> he was losing his crap. It was so funny. Aw, how cute. That for him. It was adorable. He's so cute. He is. Does he have a cute little outfit that he's going to have for today? Yeah, mom got him something. Um, I think it's a cute little like bunny sleeper. Um, because she just, I mean, she's not, we're not going to church today. She doesn't want to, she's not ready to have him out in the world of germs yet. So I think it's just a chill, low key family at home day. It'll be great. Well, I want to see it if he is cute and a little. I will. Bunny. I will. <laughs> Well, or with his Easter basket. All right, everybody, have a good night. Thanks for having night. us. Eats. It was fun. Thanks, love. I'll talk to you later. Have a good night. Thanks for having us stream, Deets. Good talking with you, Nanya. Thanks talk for being here, bird. Have a good Easter. Thank you. You too. Have a good Easter, everyone. I will say 20, 120 is crazy. Yep. That much I agree with. Yeah, well, 120 Australian is what, 81 US, but I still agree. That's a lot. Um, but also be careful. I mean, dragging somebody else's business, you could hurt their livelihood. And so be careful with it, I guess, is the moral of that story. Anyway, I dropped the link. I'll drop it again. It's just some funny drama that's not, has nothing to do with any of us. And it's good to get a laugh out of from time to time. So. I'm um, not sure when I will go live next. Definitely spending all day with family and maybe a little bit into Monday. And But I know Jenny and I really, hey, Spudler, happy Easter. I know Jenny and I really want to finish the interview. So maybe Monday evening we'll do that. But everybody have a great holiday, however you celebrate it. And I'll see you on the next one. Love, love. <laughs>